All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the stream. It's going to be an FFA tournament tonight. I'll be casting two rounds, of course. We'll do one pod and then jump on over to the grand finals. So fasten them seatbelts. Hopefully you guys have a nice, uh, you know, some coffee, some tea, whatever you enjoy. And we can get this party started. How you guys doing? We're sort of on time. I think we were like one minute late. So, you know, just kind of doing a little bit of organizing here, getting things together. So um, once... The pods start, I will jump in. So I would imagine that, yeah, you're obviously probably your avidity's playing. Somebody in chat suggested watching Leto the Duke's pod, so we could do that tonight. We'll cast his pod, see what he's up to. So let me find him on my friends list here. And if I can't find him, then we'll obviously do another pod as well. Early part of the tournament, everyone's getting in their pods right now. Looks like he is ready and the game has started. So we'll check it out. Fun time, Stern, just so you know, I'm competing, but I have helpers. So, hey dude, no worries, man. Appreciate you. You're the man, Gunhound. Keep it up. And uh, let's load into our first pod, I guess. Or we could let it get a little bit of buffering so we can like kind of get through some of the slower parts while more people uh, join the stream. I actually didn't even announce that I was streaming, so I should probably do that real quick. So just give me a second. Such a technology boomer. Just look terrible. Yes, yes. Let the good times flow. All right, there we go. And uh, then we'll do a little something something in ye old Discord and we'll be getting started. We'll jump right into that first pod. All right, looks good. Boom, there we are. Let's do it. Let's cast that game. Okay, wow, no, why can I not spectate now? Kind of changed up on me. Okay, so let me zoom down. There we go. All right, so we can observe the match here. Hopefully you did the right one. You already did that? Thank you, Gunhound. Sorry, we got the double ping. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Don Artie here. I believe he's a pretty high-level player playing on the Abbasid Dynasty. Malians are going to be later the Duke. We have uh, Leisure Larry on the Holy Roman Empire. Eggnog on the Roost. Straight Nasty on the English. And Eonymist Q on the Mongols. Certainly some very strong players. The power dynamics of this game. How will they go? I would imagine Abbasid going to be looking for some fat, thick trade. Roos going to be looking for some tree lines. Holy Romans for those relics. English, just do whatever they want. Make some farms and they're good. And hey, we keep rolling, man. We keep rolling. Hey, Bradley, thank you for the donation. Stay classy. Hey, you too. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that, my friend. Hopefully you guys are ready for a night of some hot action. It's going to be great. So this is mega random. So let's reveal the map and see where they all settle. So you have a couple minutes to catch up. So we can do fast forwarding through the little villager scurrying about phase while people get their TC set up. And uh, then we can see where everybody gets established here as we do see a little bit of a cancel there. Town center coming up. Very nice town center start for uh, Eggnog here. Setting up near the deer camp, getting that immediate gold bounty without having to, you know, get out, go far away with scouts and whatnot. I do like that quite a bit. So, oh, can I go back to normal speed, please? There we go. So, up on the north side of the map, we have Eonimus Q, our resident Mongol player. Very, very strong on Mongols. I've seen countless games with Eonimus doing very, very well. Over to the west, it is going to be Leisure Larry. So Holy Romans and Mongols are going to be neighbors. Granted. Uh, we got to move the goal? Okay, let me find a spot for that. We can probably just uh, turn that off for now. It's fine. It's all good. So over to the west side, we have the Holy Roman Empire. They're going to be setting up next to this uh, gold vein. So that's a pretty good start for the HRE, aside from not having any food. Uh, I mean, they have they have quick access to like an Aachen right here, which could pretty much hit all their primary resources. But uh, without the food, it could be a little bit precarious here for Leisure Larry. Now, down to the south, we have Straight Nasty. English going to be setting up in the dead center of the map, which is very, very scary. I mean, I don't know. English are very good at enduring and holding, but even the dreaded English here, not going to be having the most amazing time. Over on the west side, we do have our Abbasid Dynasty, which is going to be Don Artie. If you guys haven't seen Don Artie, he's, um, I believe he play, has played in some major tournaments. He's a, he's a very, very strong player. If it's the same person and not somebody impersonating him, he is going to be uh, he's going to be a huge massive threat i would imagine over to the east side we have eggnog like i said this is our roost player immediately got a scout out looks like he's got the double scout did miss the one in his base here but is going to have some very easy bounty also has an, an okay hunting cabin not very big density of trees here so he's going to be paying the troll toll a little bit but obviously if you're playing roost in ffa games usually people will not deny uh, they're not going to be denying your your bounty and whatnot, right? So you usually just have free range to go around and max out your bounty. And, you know, sometimes people will, but typically you're going to have a pretty good run of it, especially when you get feudal because there's so many boars around. You just go find all the straw boars on the map and, uh, you know, take them down. And then you're basically going to be in good shape. Now, what's crazy is nobody's on the south side of the map. No smeagling this game. Um, we're not going to see Gollum moving his base down here and, you know, setting up uh, stuff all over the corners of the map. We're not seeing that so far. And yes, are we missing? Did somebody not set up? No, it looks like everybody set up. Yeah, so we have the Roos here, and directly to the north of them, we have the Malians. 
Malian's got Nexus and Berry Bushes and a tree line, and uh, they're going to have to find some ore pits. It looks like they did, so they found the double ore pits to the north. So that's pretty cost effective for them. They're going to be able to get those sweet, sweet houses up and hopefully live their best life. So this is going to be a wild one up here. I wonder if the Mongols are just going to try and kill the Holy Romans or if they're going to try and move. It looks like the HRE was able to bring some uh, old sheep back to the base, but I think there was a bit of a delay because he didn't have any food there, right? And then he had to build scout a scout, which takes some time, and then bring the sheep back after he finds them. So HRE here could be really, really behind. And I think that homeboy here, uh, Larry, could be in a little bit of danger based on that start. We'll have to see. Here are the Mongols looking pretty good. They got their sheep. They got berries. They have a huge gold node. The Mongols got a sweet spot, uh, spot. and they also have an Uvu here. So this is going to be a powerhouse start. I don't think Ionimus is going to want to move. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is just setting up a bunch of pastures around the uh, Uvu here. And uh, yeah, just getting the uh, augmented production, getting the sheep pumping out, and you're just not needing to really worry about food for most of the game. It's on Artie here with some really, really good uh, uh, FFA, FFA awareness, building the House of Wisdom in the corner of the map. A great idea. Obviously, Abbasid only have two landmarks, so he's going to just create a vast empire. He's going to just kind of stretch everything back here, probably move to these berry bushes and just set up houses to connect the dots and get his golden age going. But this is good. He could fortify this. He'd go for a wonder like late game. He plop a wonder down right here. And then, the you know, he's going to have a landmark behind the wonder, which is very smart. It makes it very hard to snipe you. And also for the uh, wonder victory, it's quite synergistic. So life is good. Question in chat, is it important for Malians to have one of their ore pits on the biggest nodes? It certainly is better. Uh, you get a little bit more gold. I mean, you know, on most normal 1v1 maps, you usually start with like a small one and the bigger ones are a little bit further away. So they're a little bit riskier. Um, but here, yeah, like it, you just kind of take what you can. Like in the early game, you're going to want to take whatever's closest to you. Like on Mega Random as playing the Malians, you would want to maybe explore and see if you could somehow find like a big gold node to set down to. But you don't have a lot of time. Like if you take too long to set up your TC and Nomad, which is what we're playing tonight, you can just absolutely get karate chopped because you'll be so far behind. Warpug, thank you for the 1999. The happy birthday, the dreaded happy birthday coming down. Look at this, the Kremlin. Oh my God. Eggnog going for the proxy Kremlin on Leto the Duke. Leto the Duke, we do not see anything. Is he gonna, it'd be really funny if Leto responded with like the uh, the Sub-Saharan, or the, the Saharan Trade Network right here. They just had their, their haggard arrow landmarks blasting one another, but I feel like Eggnog is gonna go for an early fight here. And you know, whoever has to fight early is gonna fall behind, especially if Don Hardy is allowed to just sit over here in Netflix and chill and basically build up his vast empire. We'll see. We will see, ladies and gentlemen. Deerstones here. We have the Uvu. We have the town center. Over to the west side, we do have uh, the Holy Romans with some early spear tech. So Leisure Larry getting a little bit crunk here. He's certainly not looking to uh, Leisure. He's looking for war. He builds an early spearman. Uh, I don't really see what he can do against Mongols. Mongols got to be getting uh, Feudal Age very, very quickly. HRE don't really seem to have Feudal Age in their sights. Leisure Larry seems to be trying desperately to find food. And he's having to set up a mill out here, which is very rough. Uh, it's going to be out of the influence of the Aachen. And whoa, what is he doing? He deleted his barracks. Oh, because that's where he's probably going to put his Aachen Chapel. Oh my god, that's rough. So he built that barracks for 150 wood, then homeboy deleted it. That is a very, very brutal start. It's not actually my birthday, no. My birthday's in July. It's it's a it's a running gag on the channel where people just randomly say it's my birthday all the time. I don't know where it started. It's been happening for years, but uh, yeah, man. The good times are rolling. Look at this. The Malian's trying to set up a wall against the Rus. Before the Kremlin finishes and the Malians, do they have a landmark coming up yet? No, Leto the Duke seems a little bit behind as it pertains to aging up. That is for sure. So he sets up a big wall and now the dreaded Kremlin is going to be here. It's going to pop that villager. So one villager goes down and the Kremlin is actually in range of the uh, of the town center. So it's going to take a while, but you know, hey, it eventually could get there. Villagers being moved up to the north to avoid the Kremlin's darts. They should be just out of range. Should be able to hammer these sheep, no problem. Over in the middle, we have English playing a little bit of Farmville. They have the Council Hall coming in. Going to be going stone. So obviously, it's going to be 2TC English with White Tower probably, which is a very strong build. White Tower uh, can rapidly produce crossbows, knights, men-at-arms, whatever you need. So you usually just can go Council Hall and go 2TC, protect your you know in investments using the English longbows, and then the White Tower is going to be able to produce whatever you need. So we see a barracks coming out. So what is he going to do with that? Is he just going to mass Donso? Could be a mass Donso push, but he's still in the potato age. That's a bit of a problem here. So later the Duke, he doesn't have a lot of food. Looking here, he could cancel two villagers to get another 100 food, and three would be at 350. So he's pretty close to aging up. But if he's going to start producing Donso, he is going to be stuck in the potato age for a long time. I don't like... I, I think just getting to the next age is more important, for sure. The Kremlin isn't really doing anything to you. It's, it's just kind of poking at your TC, which is going to take like a million years to kind of wear down. But even still, we'll find out. Hey, Pone's doing good, yes. Pone, man, I can't wait to start playing this game with you. It's going to be fun. Been watching Turn for probably four more years, and the birthday wishes have always been a thing. Yeah, it's been a long time. Been a long time, man. We've been doing this for uh, for quite some time. 
South side, we have the Khan, Duel of Fates with the Scout. Mongols here, looking pretty jacked. Got to be getting archers, and uh, I feel like this HRE player is in danger. He's like the he's like the Simpsons character, Ralph, you know, on the bus. He's, he's like the the definition of that. Don Hardy is just cackling, like in the corner. He's setting up his his network of houses, and he could still wall this if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he built it in a proper manner, so he can still kind of wall this. Although you could just do walls here, and then like some sort of a, a wall over here, build keeps, whatever. Not going to be too hard to defend. So he's connecting his great empire. Um, going to be going two TC, so it looks like a very economical, very solid build. He's did very very good cheap gathering. Don Hardy looking to be the cackling villain in this game. From what I've seen, Homeboy seems to be looking very very strong. He's completely uncontested. He has an entire corner of the map to himself. Um, if you look here, this top side is being contested. Two players fighting. We have two players fighting here. Don Hardy is the only one who doesn't seem to have anybody near him that is, uh, you know, giving him any grief or slowing him down. So he is just going to be able to become the Dark Wizard, I, I think. I, that's my that's my early prediction here. Nonetheless, town center for the English. Pumping out bills, I would imagine. TC should be coming up soon. Let's look at the resources here of Straight Nasty. Yes, the second TC is coming up. And the, one of the advantages of setting up in the middle of the map typically is that you have a lot of resources. Like the middle of the map on Mega Randoms is typically where you get these big chunky gold nodes. So he has really good sustainability. I mean, we're gonna have to see. There's gonna be, I, I feel like there's gonna be some, like the, the winners of these two fights, I feel will be considerably behind the Abbasid who are just gonna be macroing so hard. And uh, the Abbasid will probably just come and steamroll the English in the middle and just kind of clear them out. And then they can just try and secure trade. Although honestly guys, really unfortunate for the Abbasid. What I can see is there trade. There is trade. Okay, never mind. I, for looking at the big macro look of the battlefield, I couldn't quite see the trade post. Maybe got to make the mini map a little bit bigger. But yeah, I, I think there still is going to be plenty of trade options. Like he could go to the bottom side of the map, set up markets, and then trade up towards his base, secure this. Plenty of relics around as well that he could grab. So we see one, two, three, uh, four, five, and six relics all within the grasp. HRE, he is definitely in the worst position, hands down. Um, he's pinned up here. He only has like these two localized gold nodes. Uh, if he tries to go southward, he's going to be encountering the Abbasid. If he goes here, he's going to be encountering the English, probably denying him all these resources that the English are going to want. Mongols don't have the best position in the world either. They're a little bit resource starved up on the north side of the map, but at least they do have the dreaded corner where they could do a wonder with like a million cannon towers, which is, of course, one of the ways that Mongols typically will win these FFA matches for sure. I want to make the map a little bit bigger. We can do that. All right, there you go. A little bit easier for everyone to see. So Saharan Trade Network here for Lado the Duke, and it looks like the Town Center and the Kremlin just having their perpetual duel of fates, neither of them not really making too much progress. Are we going to be seeing Siege Engineering coming in here for Eggnog? Eggnog uh, pop capped at 40 supplies, so the dreaded supply block is here. Looks like he's getting Steeled Arrow upgrades, and is he going to go Siege Engineering? That really is the question. He's building a lot of archers, and obviously we see Donso being built, we see Triple Barracks, and okay, so it is going to be the Grand Fulani Corral, which I think is a better landmark for FFA. You know, the other one isn't bad. It, it can produce, like, units in a pinch. Maybe if you're in a really hard press situation and you need to get more military eco, perhaps going for, um... God, my brain is totally just blanking on the landmarks right now. I'm just... I need some I need some coffee today. Are we actually able to check it? Nah, yeah, I don't think we can. Nonetheless, the Grand Fulani Corral, giving you all that food, I think is going to be extremely preferred. Uh, over the course of a long, sustained, you know, war, it's, it's quite big. The dreaded Donso Javelin's coming in, but I mean, Lado's going to have to switch it up. Probably you're going to want to get like two or three stables here for either Warrior Scouts or uh, Sofa. And Sofa will become very good once you get to the Castle Age because they have the imported armor. So those bad boys can uh, get quite tanky and can certainly go fisticuffs with knights and different things like that. So yeah, blue looking awfully tyrannical down here, guys. Um, and I believe this is the actual Don Arty, who's basically a professional level player. So, um, or very high level. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't followed competitive Age of Empires too closely lately, so I'm a little bit out of the loop. But we do see Siege Engineering. So yeah, we are going to see the dreaded Eggnog go for the kill here on Lado the Duke. And uh, Duke is looking a little bit worse for wear. Uh, he doesn't have any answers against Archers is my concern. He's got five Donso. And Donso, like, at least have the ranged attacks. But yeah, like, if you see two or three battering rams, and Roos are probably one of the best civs in the game at doing Ramstein. If you want to go real bananas, and I, Spaskaya Tower is very good. It gives you stone walls as the Roos. But honestly, going Imperial Landmark and going the Imperial Armory, and getting the upgraded rams, the Roos additional upgrade, can make the Roos Ramsteins very, very terrifying. Yeah, the Freemba Garrison, thank you. Brain was just a little bit fogged there, but it happened. So we got a Horseman here. HRE, not in bad shape. They're gathering stone. They have a good farm economy, so they're going to be behind because of that. And we see a Cruel Tile already. Wow. So it looks like Ionimus is going to be channeling the inner uh, Uravity here and going for early aggression. But he must know that the English are over here. He has the tower. So I would be really shocked... If Eonimus goes and picks fights in the south, 
that would just be very, very strange to me. I feel like, you know, trying to clear out the Holy Romans here. And because for Mongols, it's more worth it to do early aggression compared to other civilizations because you get a bounty for killing their buildings. So yeah, like you might be a little bit behind aging up and not banking resources, but you at least get a reward for winning. Yeah. So like if you if you know you can steamroll someone quickly with Mongols, it's definitely worth it. Alex, you're the banter and love watching all of your streams. Thank you. Hey, I really appreciate that. Are you going to participate in the Drongo Outback Oxygon tourney? I have no idea what, what's going on with that. I, I've never... I think I saw I saw a YouTube suggested video about it, but I don't know any of the details. But yeah, I mean, I, I would assume it's it's pro players or is it like people who stream the game or... Yeah. Anyways, Shaman's going to be pulling back. Relic's being grabbed here by the Mongols. Nice start. And uh, looks like they do have the prayer tent. They're going to have a second Relic in their base. The Mongols going to be off to a decent start. Getting the two goodies. Alex, thank you again for the donation, my friend. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, Kremlin doing war here. The, the dreaded Ramstein cometh. Eggnog, let's take a look at his wood resources. So he's currently not sitting on too much wood. That's the problem with Kremlin. You can't, you can't, like, you can go Kremlin or uh, Golden Gate Ram aggression pretty well because you could just buy a ton of uh, wood at a very, very good exchange rate. And then you can spam these guys out. Uh, here comes the next Ram. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for Leto to hold. Is Leto going to be going Castle Age? He does have the Saharan Trade Network, which will buy him a little bit of time. Um, over here, we see the Fulani Corral being set up. And he's nowhere close to going Castle Age. Uh, his gold is, is very, very low right now. So he's going to need something, though. He's, he's going to be fully panic response. He's going to see this and then start building the answers. But it could be... Okay, this is actually a big misplay by Eggnog. If he just attacks these gates instead of going straight for the town center, this is going to give Leto a lot of opportunity to respond and like panic and you know get some units out to stop this. Because ramming the gates here, or the walls, is um, not what you would want to be doing. You'd want to build a critical mass of rams and push into the town center and basically just go for the kill there. Now on the bottom side, oh, look at this. Eonim is setting up a little bit of a vanguard outpost on the bottom side of the map. So there they go. And I believe the Abbasid have almost completed, have almost gotten the Golden Age. They did. They got the Golden Age. The barracks coming out. And now we start to see the Lancers. So somebody is going to pay the troll toll. It looks like the Lancers might be heading southward to try and take out this vanguard outpost here of Eonimus, which wouldn't be a bad idea. You don't want, you know, the Mongols setting up a little, you know, network in the bottom of your base. So now we see Mass Donso against Mass Archers. And obviously, I don't need to tell you guys how that's going to go. Donso are going to get cut to pieces. And Rams are coming in. The Ram sign. The Duhas thing is upon us as the uh, barracks. The true Duhas is when Holy Romans do it. Um, but here, you know, we'll take it. So Battering Rams and Roos, very, very strong combo. And uh, looks like we could have our first death. I don't know how he's going to be able to come back from this. He's trying to set up stone walls, which is very strange. Uh, maybe just trying to protect his uh, corral over here. But yeah, there's obviously a couple spearmen. So this was uh, a turbo, turbo greedy build from Leto. Uh, he, you know, he tried to just spend all this gold on getting a fully established cattle economy and didn't respect the feudal aggression coming from the Roos here. And he's basically dead now. So that is going to be the first Fallen, and that is going to give the Roos player basically control over this entire side of the map. Uh, granted... Yeah, he's going to be a little bit behind, whereas uh, I think that Don Artie probably is going to be going up to the next age soon. It looks like he's getting Iron Underbash, which is one of the most important upgrades when you hit a Castle Age timing because it gives you ranged armor for diving town centers and defensive emplacements and all that. So we see a keep coming up, securing the stone. Uh, the TC, was it stopped? Don Artie's keeping an eye on it. He's got an outpost over here, so Don Artie is very, very aware of this. But is he going to punish it or is he going to let it stand? It looks like right now he's not punishing too hard. Grabbing relics from the middle of the map, English player... Very, very much Helm's Deep, and it seems like the English player seems to be a solid player, um, but his position is just so rough. It's so rough. Like, he's going to be getting sandwiched from so many sides. The Ruhast. I like that. It's the Ruhast. Yeah, the Ruhast. Yeah, that's great. Hey, you know what? Shout out to Leisure Larry, too. You know, I thought he was going to get torched early on, with, but I mean, he didn't get attacked or anything, but he's setting up a nice little Aachen uh, economy here. Granted, he doesn't have a prelate in the church at the moment, which is a little bit Bronzodia, unless he's out trying to grab a relic or something, which... I would wager he did, but I don't think this HRE player is going to get any relics. So what you do if you're... Yeah, he already has a Castle Age landmark. He has a Regnant with one relic in it. Ouch. That's rough. I, it's better than nothing. And it looks like the Prelate's going to be running back to the farms to uh, get that sweet food economy going. And if the Holy Romans could find a way to attack the Mongols, you know, with an ambush and, and then get their relics, maybe. We'll have to see. So this TC is going to be fleeing across the map. Eggnog's uh, Vanguard Outpost is going to be seeing this, so he will be aware that the town center is over in this direction. And it looks like a lot of English uh, boys going to be moving out to maybe attack the Abbasid. We'll have to see how this goes. Abbasid do have a hell of a lot of knights, though. And the knights will counter men at arms very effectively. But again, the crossbows are a counter to the knights. So a little bit of back and forth there as Don Artie is going to be able to grab this relic. And it looks like he's moving in on this outpost to shut down the uh, the supporting forward buffs that the English do have. So, yep, Nomad FFA Tournament. That's the name of the game tonight. Well, Lowe's for sure going to be going down here. Nope, looks like Don Artie decides to run. Going to be pulling back in the English... Should be able to take down this Imam here, but it looks like the Knight's going to move in. We get the Wololo, 
and it does get picked off by the crossbows. So now the knights are going to pay the price. The English, of course, do have uh, several crossbows here, which have a bonus versus heavy. Knights, of course, are heavy, and it looks to be a very cost-effective fight as the English actually get some good damage. Now, we do have a critical, not a critical mass, but a good mass of archers here, or excuse me, uh, lancers, totally different, uh, that can dive on the crossbows and shut those bad boys down. We'll have to see if Don Artie goes for it. Now, are we seeing any trade being set up? We're not at the moment. The HRE, dude, just really, really... Trying to set up their Empire of Doom in the corner. Yeah, I mean, they do have this natural mountain pass, which I suppose makes them somewhat defensible. Ironically, somebody could set trebuchets up here and they could kill the Regnets as well as the town center and pretty much all your construction. I don't think you could fit a keep up here. Maybe you could actually put a keep in this space. That'd be really funny. Oh my god. We will have to see. So, over on the east side, ladies and gentlemen, the Roost is going to be setting up more town centers. And that is going to be the fall of Lado the Duke. Well played, brother. Greed had to overcome you today. Too many, uh, too many cattle ranches and... Oh, that's actually a lot of food. Like, you could come and set up a little uh, operation here and the roost could get a nice little bump in uh, food without having to set up farms and things like that. Shaman taking the sacred site in the middle. And the Mongols not being terribly aggressive, which is very strange. I'm so used to seeing Mongol players basically just go balls deep and actually absolutely try and run somebody over, but we're not seeing it this day. Um, English just going Farmville, again, to be expected. Going to be trying to get that infinite gold in the later stages of the game. And it looks like they did just get through one of their primary gold nodes, but thankfully they do have another one. Now, it looks like there's going to be some considerable English aggression. He's massing a lot of crossbows and men-at-arms. Don Artie's army composition, I believe, is knights and camel archers. Interesting. So camel archers do do a bonus against light melee infantry. Um, they do have okay base damage. Typically, they're good against, like, spear-type units, but... And they do also debuff horsemen as well. So it's one of the other tertiary reasons that you would have those bad boys in your army. I'm surprised Don Artie hasn't gone up here and just absolutely karate chop this uh, this outpost. He could just move up there with those knights and have it done in a couple seconds. The Mongol backstab is going to be tough for the English because, like, even if England has some success here, if they move in and you know are able to potentially get through Don Artie uh, or start to do some work, like there is just two just fully erect civilizations up to the north waiting. On the bottom side, we have a little bit of a duel. We have the Holy Roman Scout who somehow made it across the realm, just randomly attacking one of Don Artie's villagers. Trying to create a blood feud of sorts. The Roos, if you're the Roos, what you do is you just secure trade. I love that he's just like literally killing the Saharan trade network with like 500 archers. <laughs> it's so haggard, but yeah, we got some rams. You definitely would want to clear out this base probably. And uh, he said I got more hunting cabins. Going to be jumping on the berry bushes. We have the wooden palisades of doom. And it looks like eggnog is going to be looking pretty good over here. Yeah, you know, this is the reward for the early aggression. You then get to basically do what you want. Have uh, that whole side to yourself. He had to work for it though, but he's still only age two. Probably for the third landmark, most of the relics I would imagine are taken. What I would probably do is delete these two lumber camps and set up a high trade house like right in the deep like lumber that you've cut in there. And that'll give you like probably 300 gold a minute, which will help you compensate for the lack of relics. So that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad at all. Now looking over here, Don Artie looking extra thick as he does have a lot of barracks coming down. He's got a nice little farm economy. Abbasid have really, really good farm eco too. And let's see what tech he's got from the, uh, from the, the old landmark here. All right, so it looks like he's now going military wing. He has not gotten trade wing, so he's just gone eco and uh, and uh, so yeah, he got he has the military wing being researched right now, and then trade wing is open as well. So yeah, he probably went for eco and uh, yeah, the bass had been changed quite a bit. They have the, one of the main upgrades they like to get fresh food stuff is now in the town center. It's a it's a very very different sieve since the days of old. Ben says, "I hate that turn. Watched me die. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lado." The berry bush slow gather speed being uh, down to one vill really... Oh, so you only had a couple. Well, Lado, you know, you were you were having a bit of a slower start, but I I think a lot of it was that you you spent so much gold on getting the cattle, and you also had a very the wrong unit composition. He was massing archers, like hardcore, and you only had spearmen. If you had had some warrior scouts or some, uh, some sofa, something i think you would have been fine and or if you had maybe just like not gotten the cattle and gone faster castle age and then get the cattle once you're stable in castle i think you would have been fine just a couple little things like that but you know hey it, it happens brother you know i've lost many ffa games by just being greedy and just trying to like you know not really build a lot of military it, it happens it happens so knights are here we have a fair amount of spearmen over on the west side up to the north side of things we do have knights and crossbows Pretty classic Mongol army composition. Usually with siege engineering, you're going to see that. Does he have it? No, he doesn't have it yet. Then you just build whatever you need. Traction trebuchets, you know, mangonels, and you're able to press. I am really thoroughly surprised that Leisure Larry and Anonymous have not started fighting yet. It's it's very strange. Like, they're just right next to each other. Oh, my God. Look at this. What is this? The dreaded mill in between all the barracks. I think that was a berry bush down there originally, so that makes sense. But, yeah, he's going to need to get aggressive. Um, 
Yeah, the Mongols and the Holy Romans, they're going to have to figure that one out. Now, we do see a big fight here. We see an attack coming in from Don Artie. So Don Artie going to be the Lord of Camels here today, moving in with his Lancers and a combination of Spears and uh, Camel Archers, and is going to be trying to push. And he's even bringing some Battle Imams. So the Imams going to be healing. Of course, they heal 50% slower on combat. Looks like the Camel Archers are elite. Don Artie is Imperial, ladies and gentlemen. He is just so jacked right now. And the English Army, though, does have the Defender's Advantage. They have the Attack Speed buff, which is quite good. The Network of Castles given the 15%. But what are the Holy Romans doing? They're coming down to ambush the English. Look at this. Oh my God, but then they flee. Okay, that would have been just backbreaking. That could have basically destroyed the English. Straight Nasty would have basically died there. Like if those Lancers had rode back here and just started absolutely destroying those farmers, that would have been game blouses. So it looks like Don Artie's going to be doing a keep drop. Now English can fend off keeps pretty well with their trebuchets having the augmented attack speed. And it is going to be reaching villagers. Ouch, that's pretty painful. Yeah, so some of those English villagers going to be paying the troll toll. The Abbasid do also have a couple of elite variants of units. You're probably going to see hand cannoneers. We have elite camel archers at this point. Don Artie looking pretty jacked. We do see the camel support coming out. So camels are going to be buffing nearby infantry with plus two armor, which is very, very good. And we have veteran horsemen coming out. So horsemen and camel archers. Is that going to be the composition? Interesting. And I do not know what the Holy Romans are doing here. The Holy Romans are like, that gate must fall in the name of Jesus. They're just randomly attacking this barricade gate. I think he's trying to get through to help. Maybe to attack Don Artie. There could be some sort of an alliance being formed. Maybe they feel as if Don Artie has grown out of control. They might have realized he also has the entire side of the map to himself. So I think the Holy Romans are actually trying to help. Okay. So they are. They're going to be getting into the back and uh, doing a little bit of raiding on Don Artie's base. As Don Artie's bringing Bombard Cannons in. So that's going to be start getting very, very brutal here for the English. And another keep drop going down on the other side from Don Artie. Brutal. Really, really caging in the English here. And do the English have the resources to actually even make trebuchets? Uh, yeah, they do. They have a lot of gold in the bank. They're not Imperial Age yet. Nobody else is Imperial except the Mongols up in the north. Mongols are hiding the Deer Stones in the corner of the map. And uh, they are going to be getting the White Stupa in the base. So yeah, Mongols, and they're already preparing for a wonder. Look at this. We see outposts coming up. They're for sure going to be doing some wonder action. Now, the HRE Knights, I'm not sure what these bad boys are doing. So they're just kind of chilling out. Um, they're going to come down here, maybe go after these guys. I don't know. They're, they're sort of letting the English go to the dogs here. And once the dreaded Don Artie he grows powerful and is able to move through the English, it's going to be very tough to obstruct him. I mean, there would have to be some really, really clear communication. By the way, uh, Leto, if you're still in the game, is there any sort of chat or politics going on? I'd be quite curious to hear about that. So the battle rages on, keeps just pounding away, wearing down the gates over time, and they do have cannon emplacements on them, so if anything tries to come close, it's going to be pretty nasty. Hand cannoneers wearing through the men-at-arms, bombard cannons, just shooting whatever they can and uh, doing some damage to infrastructures. Don Artie does get his third bombard, so the bombard is here, and it's going to be Royal Rumblin. I have no idea what these knights are doing. The HRE is just absolutely chilling out there. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Knights maybe going to battle in. Looks like they're trying to ride past now. So the HRE player, the dreaded Leisure Larry, is going to be trying to get some villager kills here. So yeah, he's doing a little bit of disruption, but Don Artie with triple Abbasid TC. Guys, he's sitting at 150 economy. His villager count is just ludicrous right now. And he's, he's using like a minimal army to, to defeat the English. Just absolute greed eco. Uh, we don't see... Yeah, look at this. Oh my god, look at the villager count. It's just absurd. He's got 42 on wood, 38 on gold, 33 on food. That is just nasty. Now, for landmarks for the English, we have the Council Hall. We do also have the White Tower sitting back here. And the Berkshire Palace is going to be coming down. That's a really, really good play by Straight Nasty. In FFA, you typically just want to survive as long as you can. Uh, because there's always a chance that Gondor could ride your raid. Or Rohan could come to your raid. It's probably the more apt analogy here. As the Berkshire Palace does come down, Blacksmith on the way. Up on the top side, the Holy Romans look to be wanting some war, yeah. I think there's some sort of a weird, unspoken, uh, like, alliance between a Yonimist and Leisure Larry. Maybe they are kind of thinking, like, you know, both of us are next to each other. If we fight, we're both going to lose. So let's try our best to, you know, attack everybody else, and then we can solve those problems later on. But Bombard Cannon still moving in, going after the TC here with a minimal-sized army. English do reach the Imperial Age, and if anybody can scrap and defend and fight from a desperate situation it is of course going to be the english but uh yeah holy romans raiding in could make a, a significant difference here as don Artie's is going to be pulling a bunch of villagers to repair those walls very very well played and we do see the l's back palace coming up on the high ground so what you would want to do is grab your relic and put it in the l's back that's 100 percent the best play uh to get that nice and sauced up and this is going to be a path with which it looks like armies can move through yeah well, yeah there's a little bit of a weird like mountain pass here as the walls are being repaired, these amount of villagers should be able to amply out-repair the uh, single trebuchet that we're seeing here. So the HRE just going to be standing and staring at the gates while uh, Don Artie continues his aggression against the English. But this dual-pronged attack coming in from the HRE is certainly making him a little bit more cautious. 
I would imagine the Bombards could probably start plowing through all these uh, these buildings here to keep the English from remustering. I'm not sure. Maybe Don Artie's going to fight the Holy Romans. He might not know the size of the army. Like, it could be, for all he knows, this could be like a really sauced HRE army with like six relics, right? But it's obviously not, but he's going to be taking the more conservative route. We have a panic keep coming up, so the keep there is just going to be trying to uh, thwart the attack, and it for sure should. Um, granted, a ride-by could be very, very strong. And the English are going to be able to survive, I think. You know, but Mard Cannon's turning around, and now he's going to be going after the infrastructure, which I think in this case, you just keep like spamming static defenses over here, and you try and finish off the English. Although with Barkshire Palace and the fact that he's got such a, a greedy eco, he's a 140 uh, eco right now. It's going to make that very tough. Now, what are the Roos doing? It looks like the Roos are getting a little bit aggressive, uh, taking war with the Mongols. I think the Mongols are going to be pretty strong, but the Roos did just get Imperial Age. But the problem with the Roos is none of their, a lot of their stuff isn't upgraded. Okay, now we have Elite Knights coming out. We have a lot of upgrades. Uh, looks like he's getting Precision for the Horse Archers. So the Roos army is going to become a threat. Uh, he does have the High Trade House giving him 250 minute down there. Not bad at all. Has some keeps. More and more stables coming out. And we do see the dreaded Eggnog starting to take over his side of the map there. So it is on. For FYI, it looks like Pink, Purple, and Teal are trying to gang up on Zon. Yeah, they're all like a little bit weaker for sure. Zon already uh, trying to rebuild these walls. Looks like he's going to get them up just barely, as the HRE is going to be delayed once again. And if, I think if Zon already can finish off the English, I think he'll be fine against the other two. He'd probably be able to fight these two players uh, because he's just his eco is so strong. His macro is going to be insane. I mean, look at the score. 12.7, and uh, yeah, they need to team up on him now because if he's continuing to just you know, grow strong and fat, it's going to be rough. So we do have outposts coming up, probably going to get some cannon emplacements. The remnants of the Council Hall still serving the English Empire as it's keeping the Bombards from setting up properly. Looks like some of the Bombards are able to get in range. We got Manganel support as well. Down here, Mongols taking resources where they can. A couple of villagers doing their thing, and I think there is going to be a duel of fates. Not much politics going on in chat. Yeah, it's all business, huh? So that landmark has fallen, and the English are really, really on the back foot. All they have left is the Varkshire Palace, and obviously Don Artie is going to be very privy to that. If he gets like four Bombard Cannons and moves in, uh, the Varkshire Palace will fall very, very quickly. So I think Straight Nasty in the middle, uh, you know, he, he's going to be in some big trouble. Don Artie continues his push, his very, very small military push, which is crazy. And his military is literally only 66 supply, so it is not the strongest force. Now another tower is going to come up, and the cannons will soon be in position of the Varkshire Palace. Horsemen moving in, and Horsemen can tank Varkshire pretty well. And yeah, this is probably going to be the end of the English. Four Bombard Cannons will kill Barkshire very quickly. England needs to pull all his vills right now for repairs and just try and hold here. But I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's just kind of, you know, he's, he's the Palpatine right now. He knows he's too weak and he's just going to, he's just going to, he's like, just end me, bro. Put me out of my misery. As the Barkshire Palace is going to be taken out by one of our aspiring Dark Lords, Don Artie. Down goes the English. But the Holy Romans have moved in from the north a little bit too late. But that, ladies and gentlemen is the correct play from Don Artie. You gotta think, you, like, if you pull back and, like, start trying to fight off two people at once, it's much better to go in and just get the killing blow and force it into a 1v1 or something, right? HRE doing proxy keeps. The Holy Romans, though, are going to be in rough shape. They do not have a good economy at all. Um, I mean, their villager count is, is totally respectable, but the problem with the HRE is they have no gold income. Uh, they're fully trapped here. They have one relic. That's pretty much the only thing that's given them gold. It's going to be Spearman and Horsemen, and Don Artie will probably be able to steamroll him once he gets his war machine going. He's probably going to cut down villagers, uh, try and get a bigger military to fight here. We'll have to see. Nope, still not quite. He's still keeping that big eco, but yeah, it's not going to go well. So we got Bombard Cannons coming in from the east. Bombard Cannons thumping on that Holy Roman Keep. And this is very much like a Mordor slowly taking over type thing. Like Mordor grows. The nations of men are kind of like not really helping. We got the dwarves over here who clearly don't. They just send Gimli. That's pretty much their one jam. And uh, yeah, it's looking it's looking rough. Villagers getting popped by cannonballs. Might be able to get some torch damage. But the HRE is is for sure going to pay the troll toll. They are going to have a really, really rough time uh, once the fighting gets going. They, they're Imperial Age at least, right? Men at Arms? Man, the Men at Arms are still only Castle Age. For They just don't have the gold. Leisure Larry is just so, so poor. Um, so all of his units are like Castle and Feudal Age against a fully elite Hang Cannoneer army. Like HRE would be able to put up an okay fight if they had elite Men at Arms with like army tactics and all that kind of stuff, but... It doesn't look like it's going to be the case, and the Holy Roman Army is going to be fleeing the scene as Don Artie probably sets his sights on his next prey. The one thing Don Artie's not doing, though, is trading. Um, I guess he figures there's plenty of gold in the map. Like, he's got all these just chunky, chunky gold notes down here. Doesn't really care. He's able to just grab those and, you know, live his best life. Here comes a bit of a force. We have the men at arms on their way down, and the old army. The hand cannoneers move it up. Elite horsemen on their way in. And the battle is on. HRE will be able to kind of cut through some of the horsemen initially, but the hand cannoneers uh, will absolutely dominate this army. Like I said, the Lancers, I guess, are okay, or the Knights, I should say. But they're, um, yeah, they're, this is just going to be a super one-sided fight. The HRE army is, like, super under-upgraded. They just don't have the resources. And 
I don't know what the Mongols are doing. You know, I think the Mongols are going to go for a greed situation. They're probably just going to let... If What I suspect is going to happen from Ionimus is I think Ionimus is going to not attack Purple to give the feeling that he's helping. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not attacking you. Let's go after Don Artie. And he's not going to do anything. He's not going to go after Don Artie at all. He's going to sit in the corner. Wait, what? We have a wonder coming out already? Are you serious? Holy shit. Look at that from Don Artie. Wow, he's, that's such a fast wonder. So he's got the prayer hall of Cuba coming up and he's just like, come at me, dudes. So now this is going to force, uh, what I was about to say is that Eonimus was just going to go corner wonder and build like a million towers. But now the Mongols can't really afford to chill. Don Artie straight up going for the throat here, guys. He does not care. He is going to be going for the prayer hall of, uh, uh, how do you say that, Ukba? A little bit of a tough one to pronounce for sure. But guys, we have the dreaded prayer hall coming out from Don Artie. Super fast, super furious. Pedal to the metal. Workers probably listening to some free bird while they build that. Looking quite good over on the east side. The nations of uh, the nations of men trying to unite against Mordor. We'll have to see. HRE is just so weak, though. They're so weak. One relic, like they're using like still feudal and castle age units. The Mongols like are strong-ish, but it looks like they were doing battle with the Bruce. They're gonna have to muster. Maybe they're going to go for a Sacred Site play, but Don Artie actually has one of the Sacred Sites like, within the sphere of his base, so I don't think that's going to be an option. And this is going to be really, really tough. Yeah, he is He is just going to absolutely karate chop everyone. I don't think anybody's going to stop Don Artie here. The Mongols, are they like they need to be mustering an attack way quicker than this. There's got to be some strange politics or something going on in this game. If you're the Holy Roman Empire, what you do is you basically just go for the trees. You just get in here... You build as many rams as you can and you just send wave after wave of rams while everybody else is attacking. That's basically what you got to do. This is some Undertaker from the Rafters type stuff. Yeah, it really, really is. Don is saving turn from getting hungry like last time. I think we're okay because this is round one. In the grand finals, you'll find that the skill level of the players will be much closer. Sometimes in the earlier pods, you're going to have mismatches. Um, but usually, you know, it's like the Randy Savage said, the cream of the crop will uh, rise to the top. And you'll be seeing all the tyrants battling in the grand finals and whatnot. So, could be a pretty fast pod here. Speaking of, Gunhound. Oh, Gunhound's actually in a game right now. So, I'm curious how the other pods are doing. I would imagine making good progress. Homeboy didn't even wall this off. He's so confident that nobody can get in. You know, he took out the English, who was his biggest threat. And uh, we do have a little bit of raiding coming in from the south. So, Eggnog is putting an effort, which is good. A lot of villagers going down for Don Artie. Um, so, he does lose a lot. And Don Artie's bank isn't amazing. But, um, yeah, he should be able to fight this off. These are just still veteran archers. I don't know how these guys are not upgraded, fully upgraded yet. Okay, elite archers are on the way, which is going to be good. Killer, AoE is better than Warhammer, eh? To each their own. Uh, you know, I would say in Warhammer's current state with the meta as it is, like, yeah, Age of Empires can be a lot more fun. But um, once we get some new updates and some balancing stuff. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I'm glad you enjoyed the Age. And Age isn't going anywhere. Um, even as other big popular games come out, maybe if I cover them more, we'll still at least do one Age stream a week where we have our glorious FFA community come in and have some fun. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that, my friend. And yeah, any damage that could be done here. Um, the Archers might as well turn and fight. Archers do trade okay into the Hand Cannoneers. And now Don Artie going to be collapsing from the north with Spears as the Roos army does its best to wear these guys down. You do also have the elite horse archers with the precision. They do do 19 damage, which isn't insignificant. The Roos army putting up a good fight. But the question is, where is everybody else? Okay, the Mongols are on their way across. They got siege workshops. They got the cruel tie coming. Clearing out the English base to get a little bit of bounty. Holy Romans are just going to be the Dark Lord of Spears. Uh, pod 6 is down to 4 left. Okay, sounds good. I forcibly relocated decimated. The hey, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Thank you for the update. So the Roos army is swept from the field. Um, and now they're going to be just doing the dreaded Reaganomics where they just like trickle across the battlefield here. What you would want to do is you'd probably want to get like a bunch of villagers and at least build forward siege workshops and maybe just like spam knights or something. You need forward infrastructure because a Yonimist is a very strong player, but Don Artie is like, I think like a professional level player. So it's, it's going to take like several concerted efforts to really bring down the beast. And Don Artie's bank is rebuilding too. Um, yeah, he's got a nice little gold bank here. It looks like his military is being balanced a little bit. So now he's got 81 military. It looks like he did cut some villagers. Well, he didn't cut villagers, but they were taken out over here. So the farmers were uh, karate chopped. Look at this, this sad villager. She's like, all her friends just got taken out by the roost and she's just farming there alone, all sad. Yep, good play here. I like this from Eggnog, setting that up, getting the forward infrastructure, looking at the Wonder Tracker. We do have 12 minutes. Uh, to the Wonder Victory, about 11 minutes and 55 seconds. So they have a little bit of time to work with, but the Mongols are really going to have to go pedal to the metal here. Um, the one thing is the Wonder is not protected by walls. So like if a massive horde of rams and or lancers was able to sneak by, that could do something. We see siege workshops coming out and yeah, Leisure Larry needs to just 
spam rams, that's it. And get the Imperial Age upgrade for rams, so like with all your remaining gold. And then Leisure Larry could be the hero. I mean, it's really not that far. Like this wall, this wall, and then oh, one keep defending it. This wonder is totally killable if the players play their cards right. I think it's very, very killable. Don Artie's army is pretty good, mostly hand cannoneers, obviously, but yeah. Well, the Mongols need to need to hurry up. They're going to be cutting it very, very close right here. They're going to be cutting it very, very, very close. So up on the north side, ladies and gentlemen, we see elite lancers and spearmen gathering in their masses, and uh, yeah, the rams, the rams may be coming here. We do see the siege workshop coming up. Battering rams being made with siege engineering. Looking at the wood supply here of Leisure Larry, he's got enough to make a lot of rams. Yeah, that's just what you do. That's how you contribute. Even if you can only make haggard spearmen, you know, whatever. If you just have spearmen and rams and just kind of push in there, you might be able to get some work done. So the roosts are going to move in. Looks like an attack. They need to concert their efforts too. Mongols are taking way too long to start attacking. I think they need to move up and like set up like right here. Um, kind of just hanging out over here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be building archery ranges, but this is taking a long time to get the infrastructure set up. Granted, it will be a consistent effort from the Mongols from that point forward, but they only have 10 minutes left. And this timer is going to be running pretty, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly indeed. So battering rams coming around. We do see the Holy Roman men at arms, the true chads, moving up, getting ready to do some glorious battle. Uh, is he going to be getting any more upgrades? We have forestry, which I don't think is a very useful. I mean, it's okay at this point. You probably just keep updating your lumber mill and you know spend your gold elsewhere. But the spearmen are on their way, and we do have uh, the Duhas coming out. No, it's going to be bombards. So he's going to be trying not to knock down the walls there. Mongols are finally pushing. Um, they have trebs. They have one trebuchet. Looks like they're setting up some more workshops. The coral tide going to be brought to the west by Yonimus. So these. Folks need to get in there and they need to put the pressure on. The Roos player is actually the most active in terms of being aggressive. And yeah, these Roos armies are going to get wiped over and over. But like every ounce of attrition you can bleed from the defender is quite substantial. Um, Don already has a, a great income though. He's looking pretty good. His gold could become a little bit questionable if he loses hand cannoneers, tries to replace them. So Roos army's getting in really, really nice Manganel shots. Streltsy, of course, pack a serious punch and they're going to be able to put a bit of hurt on this army as the Knights pull back to a little bit of cycle charging. And we do see the uh, old Mangonels wearing down the front line here. So not a terrible trade for the Bruce. Granted, the Hand Cannoneer Legion is still pretty numerous. Or else you're going to get a couple picks on those bad boys. And the Duhost is coming from the north. Okay, a little bit of Duhosting. And are they going to get the Rams? Are they going to knock down these walls? Don already does have Mangonels and Bombards sitting here. And Rams coming in. Where are the Rams at? Okay, we have the six battering Rams here. And the Bruce army made some progress. Don already going to be hustling up to the north. The Mongols need to move in right now. They need to, like, have all these attacks going at the same time they need to just be bumping and grinding uh working in synergy with one another because if they fight you know divided uh one at a time and you know use the reaganomics as we jokingly call it uh they're, they're not going to win don Artie's like elite army will just hand, hammer them all down but looks like sacred site's going to be decapped not that, that really matters too much more and more towers coming up for the mongols and uh eight minutes and 45 seconds like i said this keep is super vulnerable if if, some, if the right things can sneak past it the battering rams are certainly a good choice it looks like the hand cannoneers are going to come will the hre army fight them it's going to be a disaster if they do. They're going to get wiped. And the Rams are moving in, but Rams are really good against hand cannon or spam. You can see how long it takes them. And now the HRE are going to be fighting, and it looks like the uh, dude's going to be running back behind the walls as the Duhost begins. And this is a true Duhost. So they get up. They're going to get a range advantage. Now the Rams can keep moving through. So hopefully uh, Leisure Larry will keep piling those guys in. He's got to keep that momentum on. The Roost player looks like he's going to be restructuring his armies, trying to gather a critical mass again. And here we see the Mongols moving, but very, very slow. The Mongols should really just be yeah, more aggressive being a little bit too passive. We see Leisure Larry setting up a lot of barracks here, and yeah, his army fights, but they get massacred. Hand Cannoneers, they literally have the same HP as these unupgraded HRE men-at-arms, and Leisure Larry's just too poor to get good quality units. But, you know, I like I like how he's trying here. He's getting in there, he's doing his best, you know, and despite having a, being dealt a very poor hand, economically speaking, he's still going strong, and Ionimus needs to go faster. Looks like the keep's going to get knocked down, and uh, the Mongol army is the best quality army. It's, it's elite units. It looks like everything's upgraded for the most part. I would wager he does have the upgrades to the uh, to the institutes. So yeah, you're going to want to move in there, and we do see Bombards now coming in. So this army is the one that could do the job. We see more Duhostening happening, uh, barracks being sent in droves, as more and more rams are being sent through the front lines. The Rus on the bottom side, they're coming in, setting up a forward keep. They have rams of their own, so Don Hardy could be in some pressure. He only has seven minutes left. Mongols moving in the center. Might be able to move across. We will have to see. So the battle for the fate of Middle-earth will be decided here soon. More rams coming. Horseman being spammed out by John Artie, which is very good. Horseman Sam is, is extremely good for defending sieges and uh, wonder defenses because of their ability to kill rams with the bonus to siege damage as well as killing enemy siege equipment with dives. What's not to love? So John Artie's getting pressed now. His base is going to start getting attacked and the Mongols are in and they should really send some scout horses to see if their opponent is uh, 
is indeed going to be having walls around the wonder. They probably assume he does, and that's why they're taking more of a conservative approach. The Roos are going to be hitting the farms from the other side. But Zahn already has a pretty good bank. He's got 8,000, 10,000, so he can produce units for a while. Most likely until the end of the game without any serious issues. Some bombards coming in, and we do see the Mongol army arriving. And we'll see if they can put up a fight here. I feel like they might just get pushed back. Uh, good supply lines, though. We do have a lot of infrastructure here, so the Mongols should be able to perpetually keep pumping out units. We see these towers being made, and the trebuchet is most likely going to be taken down. I think the hand cannoneers are simply just going to win this fight. In tandem with the horsemen, horsemen diving on crossbows is very cost-effective. Hand cannoneers are just objectively better than crossbows in every way. So they're going to they're gonna just win this fight, I think. Although the Mobard cannons are thumping back a little bit, but this is good. This allows the other players to do some work. And dude, Leisure Larry with no mercy, dude. Look at him coming in with more rams. More haggard castle age men at arms. This man is, uh, you know, he's on a mission here. The Roos have gotten into the base, and the Roos are doing a keep drop here, which is quite good. Uh, Wonder Tracker looking at about 5 minutes and 45 seconds, and the pressure is really mounting here on Don Hardy. He went for a very, very early um, Wonder, so perhaps they could muster some sort of a successful attack. We'll have to see. Camel Archer's chasing here. The Hand Cannoneer Legion in good shape. Don Hardy able to replenish most of his army, setting at 200 supply. So Don Hardy really, really not in any uh, dire straits, and this is a very, very good, like, siege defense. Like, being, having the awareness to rebuild walls, like, that's going to buy you another couple minutes from the north side, right? The Roost get a keep drop here, and the other keep here certainly needs to be built. It looks like it's almost finished, and uh, the Roos army is able to cut through the defenders on the south side. So there's going to be another keep coming down, which is going to make it harder for Don Artie to defend, for sure, because uh, the, this territory is going to be compromised. The, uh, yeah, and killing the House of Wisdom probably isn't the right play. It has 22,000 HP, so... Trying to take that down is going to be rough. And the Roos actually making some good progress. The Roos do have the double keeps. The keeps will trade well into the hand cannoneers. And it looks like there's maybe going to be another keep drop coming down from Eggnog. No, he's just sending his villagers to set up towers along the back side of the map, which is kind of funny. I like that. But probably just pulling him back to repair the keeps is going to be the smart play. But yeah, the keeps are doing quite a bit of attrition damage here. We do have a lot of army for the Roos accidentally put in the keep. Mongols need to keep that pressure on, and the Duhast also needs to keep going. So Duhast wearing down the outpost. We've got to pull the spears and uh, men-at-arms to protect the rams from the villager torches. Dude, like, look at this! Look how close the Duhast is. Honestly, if Leisure Larry was a little bit more aggressive with his micro, he could come in and maybe kill this right now. Like, Don already has nothing defending this. Like, and this... Like, look how close this is. This is undefended. You could just get in there with a couple rams and just live your best life. Don already's like, really busy on the south side. The Roos are moving in, and yeah, now Don already notices this weakness, so it might be a little bit too late to party. Looks like that keep's going to be getting hammered a little bit, and the HRE men-at-arms are uh, taking down the villagers. Look at this Don already plugging the, the hole to his base with these poor villagers. The sacrifice must be made. Now, what are the Mongols doing? Mongols are mustering an army. It looks like they're doing some siege engineering. Okay. HRE going to be charging in, but man, they, they got so close to getting in there, man. Their spearmen will drag down some horsemen, but they got to keep that pressure on. Well, the Roos on the south side... Are torching down town centers and whatnot. Not bad, but they need to be just diving, I think, at this point. It's going to be a tricky one. Don already did manage to get five relics, too. So with Tithe Barns active, that's probably one of the ways he was able to get a relic so quickly. HRE Army doing a little bit of battle. Mongols coming in the center. So they're coming from the east side. So here they come. Wonder is down to three minutes and 30 seconds. And, uh, yeah, that Mongol force needs to get very, very aggressive. They do have five mangonels. Seven mangonels, actually. Two trebuchets. Not bad at all. And uh, Don Artie's army, once again, able to have some good success here. On the south side, the Roos are making a bit of a dive for the back. This is the correct play. Don Artie, though, responds very well. He gets wall set up, but the Wonder is still 100% vulnerable. The Roos army could dive the Wonder. Although Don Artie is now moving across, having dealt with the attackers from the north. And he's going to be intercepting this knight-based army with uh, camel archers and hand cannoners. Basically a hard counter. So if you're the Roos here, what you would want to do is probably pull back. You'd want to run this way and just go chill by your keeps until somebody else attacks. You don't want to take this fight. It's, a, it's an absolute loss. You're going to get pounded. Uh, and the Mongols here, looks like they're moving in. One TC does go down. The Wonder Tracker is down to 2 minutes and 50 seconds. And uh, the Rams are coming. Got to get those Rams back in. It looks like part of the force is being left. I think that John Artie's all in at this point. So he probably deleted all his villagers. Not all, but most of them. So he's sitting at 150 military supply, which is definitely the smart play. The Roos are just taking a brutal attrition fight. And uh, yeah, just going fist the cuffs here with this army. Probably not going to have a good time. Culverin's here being dove, so the Culverin's going to get taken out. While the Mongolian army, under cannon fire from uh, the defensive towers... Gets their elite quality spears with the uh, army tactics upgrade to start trading. But the camel archers just mow down spears. They have that bonus for slight infantry. So this Mongol army actually trading very, very poorly. Don Artie's army composition seems to be doing well. Really needed that siege support a little bit sooner. So looking at the wonder here, guys, we are sitting at 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Looks like Don Artie is going to be in good shape here. I think he's going to hold it. Um, it's looking pretty good. Unless there's some big blunder or he doesn't notice something or one of these players is possessed by a conqueror, you know, a conqueror level player. It's going to be tough. The battering rams... Like, this is such a vulnerability. There should be, like, there should be, like, 20 battering rams here moving in, but... Yeah, he, he probably just doesn't have the resources for it. You know, Leisure Larry's been really starved all game. Still playing very well, despite that. 
So, more Roost Knights on the way in. Gonna be torching down whatever they can. Roost Keeps and Battering Rams. I wonder if, what landmark he has for the Imperial. Did he get Chad Skaya or did he get the Siege landmark? I'm not sure. It's probably around here somewhere. But anyways, a question for another day. Mongols still pushing, but they're really running out of time. A minute, 30 seconds, guys. And yeah, now at this point, you just hunker down in the back. You're just chilling it. You're taking it easy. The Duhas coming from the north again. They only have four Battering Rams, but it still is an army you got to deal with. The Roos are here, but yeah, now he's fully committed to... There was some windows of play where I think if some of the... There had been more aggression, more aggressive macro as well, I do think the Wonder could have been taken down. But at the end of the day, the Dawn, the Artie, looks like he's going to be able to hold this one, ladies and gentlemen. Setting with one minute left as the armies of, uh, of the old world collapse on him here. Roost Knights moving in, Rams just doing what Rams do. And uh, is there any trebuchets in this army? I don't think so. You know, one last trebuchet dive could be pretty good, but he is so close. 45 seconds away, absolutely zero chance. Uh, what you would also want to do if you're John Artie, which I'm sure he's already doing, is pulling all your remaining villagers to repair the prayer hall just in case. And it looks like the Mongol army is going to be pushed back. Don Artie's base is obviously in trouble, and it uh, looks like the Mo Oh, they're going to be going for the landmark here. There's not enough time. There's only 30 seconds left, so... Did the ram sign coming from the north? Here it comes, the desperation charge. Dude, look at the Chad hero. You know, Leisure Larry... He, he, you know, he got the message. He knew how important it was to dive this. And his Rams, if he took a little bit of better pathing around the top, I think they could have actually won this game. Or at least killed the uh, prayer hall. But, you know, the Rams getting stuck in weird pathing here should have taken him up around the top. Look at that. Like, the wonder actually gets kind of low. All due to Leisure Larry, dude. Look at him. Well played, and that's going to be a victory for the Dawn. Dude, I love it. Leisure Larry got in there. He almost, he, he got that thing down to like 60%. A little bit better pathing and a little bit more support from the other players there. Maybe. Just maybe. So, ladies and gentlemen, the pod is going to be won by the dreaded Don Arty, who will be advancing on to the Grand Finals of today's tournament. And as soon as we get an update from our in-game correspondence, we can find out how long until the next round. We might play a 1v1 in the meantime or something. But, um, you know, it was a fun game. We saw a tyrant rising in the West uncontested. The English player held valiantly. But at the end of the day, the English got no love and no support from anybody, and they paid the price. Yeah, it happened. Well, he got a little bit. The Holy Roman player tried to help him. Hmm. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. GG. Don Artie, the tyrannical play. Getting in there. We'll have to see. Okay, let's see here. So taking a look. And let's see how we're looking on pods. How are we looking on pods, lads? Could jump into another one. We're going to see. But that is one down. I think we have a lot of pods tonight, too. We had over 40 people sign up, like, even for a late night tournament, which is pretty pretty wild. So I could always just play some 1v1. You've got enough time to cast another pod? Perhaps so. Don dedicated that win to turn for his birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure he did. That's pretty funny. That was Bravado dropping the wonder like that. Yeah, before... I know. Was, he was very ahead of everyone else, though. I think he kind of assessed the, the levels of his opponents, too, and figured he could defend it. Love the AoE content. John, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we could cast another pod, perhaps. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, it looks like Eonymous is done. That's the pod we just casted. Your Avity's in game. Um, we could jump in and do another pod. I'm going to check real quick and see. Uh, Nandiori and Tron are still duking it out, so we have a duel in there. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, someone got a villager stuck in the trees with the random spawn. It's always so haggard when that happens. All right, so yeah, there's still a couple pods going. Uh, we, we can do a fast forward. What what we'll do is we'll do we'll do auction house commentary. So what that means is we're gonna fast forward through the pod, and I'll, I'll just give like some very topical commentary until we catch up to the live state of the game. Yeah. So let's do it, man. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you to my smoking hot wife for bringing me my uh, my tea, keeping me keeping me going strong here. Uh, why don't they fight with relics in the castles and fill them? Um, you, you you can do that with HRE. It's pretty strong. Pwn says, too bad it's so later. I would want... Yeah, no. It's, I'm lucky that it's too late or else I would be in some serious danger. We'll have a stream one of these days, like a training montage, where we train Pwn. And we'll put some Rocky music in the background and have him carry logs through the snow. So we're going to fast forward to catch up to the live state of this game, guys. Because otherwise, we, we it would probably overlap with the finals. Holy shit. Look at the middle. Oh my god. Wow, look at the start of this game. So we have Darien, Rectaliner, and Hunter. And neither of them, they're like playing a game of chicken here. Neither of them is going to back down. Holy shit. Oh man! And he backs down at the last second. It's like the, when the two cars drive at each other. The one guy swerves at the last second. 
So Darien gonna be going to settle, but he finds more and more. Wow. So up in the north, guys, we have the Dark Lord Gravity. To the west, it is gonna be the English uh, who lost the game of chicken in the middle and are gonna be setting up in a much safer spot, mind you. So English are here. In the dead center, we have Hunter, the, the Corsair Lord of the Rivers here. So the uh, rivers are gonna be controlled. Down to the south side it is gonna be Dark Hunter Ezra. So Dark Hunter Ezra and Uravity, both very, very scary 1v1 players. So gonna be quite interesting to see how they play out. We have the Incan, the Mongol Lord up in the hills here. Looks like he's gonna be uh, having a little Mongol hill economy. Yes, and some trees and some gold nodes up here, including this big chunky one. So I like this. He's got very much a Smeagol position. And this is a this is a great, a great spot. It's like just only a couple of choke points to get in there. Mongols have a nice uvu. What's not to love? So guys, just want to thank you all for joining tonight. It's going to be a fun one. We're catching up here. So we're rapidly catching up to the state of the game with the fast forward. I suspect the middle is going to be very dangerous. Although this is probably one of the most erect Aachen chapels I've seen in a while. The Aachen chapel is literally hitting like three substantial stone nodes, this gold vein, and also is going to be hitting your food uh, with the sheep by the base. And you can set up food around it, obviously, as you clear out these nodes. So this is a very, this is like a full mast Veiny Aachen Chapel. Yeah, no joke there. Over to the west side, we see Council Hall coming down from Darien and English Farm Bill trying to just get that sustained economy. More English of Ben here on the south, so the dreaded Ben 8-3. Ready to go, setting up his farms and all is well. Uravity, probably going to be going Castle Aggression, just trying to steamroll somebody. He did go 2TC though, so it's not like pure like scary aggression from him, but it will be in a moment. So Uravity does get the naval economy as well. So he's going to be getting fishing in the river. He's got a lot of fishing boats, guys. So he is going to be a powerhouse this game. I wonder who he's going to go after. The thing is, Uravity is going to be very strong, but his window of strength will be outscaled depending on the skill level of the English players. If they can get to late game, they should be favored versus the Mongols 100%. Um, it also depends on the relics and some of the other variables and all those different things like that. So... Look at this, we have Dark Hunter Ezra channel channeling his inner Smeagol here, building his uh, guild hall over there. Over to the west side, we have the School of Cavalry in Town Center. Hey, and we have uh, we have Chris's back in chat. Chris, when, when are you gonna officially change your name to Smeagol and just fully embrace it? Uh, I, I suspect that the reason you haven't is you probably play games with a lot of other friends and they wouldn't understand it. They'd be like, why are you, why are you calling yourself Smeagol now? Look at this, guys, he got walled in. So Dark Hunter Ezra walled in the Incan up here on the high ground. He like walled him into his little mountain empire. Look at this. Ezra is stonewalling the Mongols into the hills to contain them. And I don't think they're going to have too many other ways of escaping here. Oh my god. Ezra has a lot of map control. And the thing is, guys, Ezra is playing French, which means that he is going to be able to just have a ton of stone in the late game. And uh, most French players just go for the wonder. Now, Uravity is out for blood. He comes down here. Yep, classic Uravity. Very, very signature play. He finds his closest neighbor and he absolutely karate chops him. That's, that is pure aggression. Smeagol says never, yeah. Is, is that why your friends just wouldn't understand? I think I, if I were you, I would just embrace it, dude. You know, get a, get a Smeagol tattoo and, you know, change your name. So Uravity karate chops one player pretty quickly here. He takes down the English to the southwest. That was Darien. Darien had a relatively rough start. You know, he, he uh, yeah, he had to relocate. He was really behind on the TC. So the Dark Lord Uravity has great fishing economy. Very, very stable in every other regard. And now he's going to be doing battle with Ben. So Ben is another English player who's also still only in Castle Age. Although Uravity's still Castle Age as well. So oh, they're all Castle Age. Okay, I just misread that. But it's going to be a big Royal Rumble down there. Drums in the deep. We can't get out. No kidding. Look at this. The Mongols are being fully caged in by Ezra. I'm so glad we came to this pod. So Ezra is setting up his French keeps here. And he is just perpetually walling in the Mongols. He's got stone walls. So the Mongols just literally can't escape the corner. That's one way to finish off a Mongol player and to keep them from running around the map. Oh my god. Yeah, you should obsess obsess about jewelry, live in a cave, eat raw fish. You gotta go all in on it, Chris. I think you do. Yeah, it's pretty great. So, down here, it looks like Gravity's gonna be continuing his war, uh, trying to take out all the English players, which is certainly smart. The game is still going at this point, guys. So we're 25 minutes into this 56 minute pod. In the middle, the Holy Romans are probably super. They're just like surprised. They're like, why is nobody attacking me? I'm in the middle of the map. Just able to do whatever I want. Holy Romans do have two relics. Not an insane amount of relics, but still not bad by any stretch of the imagination. We got more relics here as well. And a big fight's going down between the English and Uravity. A big Royal Rumble. Auction house commentary. It's going strong. And the English just bullied them back. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I was talking about. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Is uh, uh, All the other copycats are going to be Deagle. Yeah, the one that Smeagol strangles. Perfect. Um, so yeah, look at that. The English actually forced Gravity back. Okay, this English uh, player seems to be pretty solid. Really, really good food economy here by the Dreaded Ben. Gravity tried to go for the killing blow, 
but encountered some super, super stiff resistance. Very, very stiff resistance. Now, how are the Mongols looking here? It looks like the Mongols actually pushed Ezra back. So the Incan getting some good progress, and it looks like he had a winning fight down here. Apologies, it's kind of hard to keep up with everything when we're doing the uh, speed commentary here. But the French are kind of getting hammered. Is Ezra going to die? Is he going to die to the Mongols who he kept oppressed in the mountains for so long? It could be the case. Oh my god. I think it was the trebuchet. The Mangadels must have made the difference. So Ezra has lost one landmark here. It looks like his keep's going to be falling as well. See the horsemen and knights moving in. And dude, what the hell is this? The Mongols just like came out like a wrecking ball, dude. And now he's got the step read out looking for a little bit of gold. We can't quite find it. But yeah, dude, Ezra could be dead. Unless like his inner Smeagol here is fully channeled. And he's just allowed to live in the, the mountains here. So the Mongols trying to get into the mountains, and they do, they find a way through. Oh no, Ezra tried to get the wall, but the horseman just blitzkrieged through that. And we do see all of the Manganels coming into support, and Ezra is probably going to be paying the ultimate troll toll here. Yeah, there he goes, his TC's going down. Dude, the Incan, just no mercy, coming from the hills. Oh my god. Look at that. And the monk coming out for a desperate wololo, -lo, which might have bought him a little bit of time. Ezra trying to stabilize here, but it looks like the Holy Romans are also attacking him from the north. So his... his his doom has come. Usually going after French players is very smart because of the fact they can spam wonders like really easily or spam wonder defenses. The guild hall in the back is going to be claimed and that is going to be the end of the road for our boy Ezra, it looks like. So, yeah, that's his last landmark, right? No, he's got one, two, school of cavalry and... Oh, no, Ezra got the red palace in the corner. Holy shit. Ezra lives. The dark hunter will not go quietly into the good night. Man, what a scrappy player. Okay, I can see why this game's going to go long. I'm starting to understand the dynamics of this game. So Ezra actually gets the Red Palace, which if he garrisons that, it's going to be very defendable. Oh, and he walls the choke, keeping the Mongolian horde from getting north and shutting him down. Wow. Those Mongols call an ambulance, but not for me. They're the embodiment of that meme. The English player is just literally taking over the map with farms, too. I love it. He's just like, he's just expanding. He's like, unlimited power. It's like building farms up, at, like proxy farms up in the face of the Mongols in the south. Uravity just in a duel of fates down here. It looks like we have a bit of a blood feud. So Uravity going to be trying to wipe out the uh, the blue English player, which is not going to be easy. The English player's economy is probably nuts. Like Ben is getting, oh my god, 5,600 food a minute. Dear god, that is unholy. And yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to just easily, easily produce like just mass minute arms. He's, he's in, you know, that's all. The thing about English is all these villagers are giving you gold as well. So like you can just like steamroll with food. Oh my god. And once again, Yuravity's army is pushed back. I mean, Yuravity's making a good army comp. Hand cannoneers and lancers will trade pretty well into men at arm spam, but yeah, man. The English, these guys eat their English breakfast, dude. They eat their bangers and mash, and they're, uh, you know, I kind of found that when I was in the UK, actually. Um, like, breakfast wasn't as much of, of a priority for people there. Like, whereas here in the States, like, it's always like, hey, what are we having for breakfast? But, like, over there, it didn't seem like, you know, it was something that was, like, every day being, like, a routine. I don't know. Seems a little bit different. So, yes, the Mongol horde, the Incan, doing some solid work, but Ezra has mustered a defense force. Ezra is not out of this game by any stretch. He's got his red palace over here. He still has his little mountain fortress, which he's going to be able to rebuild. So you can see he's coming over here. Uh, but he did lose a lot. Lost his relic and uh, is going to need to get that guild hall back online. That's hands down the most important thing. So the English farms got raided. It looks like the Holy Romans came across and torched all these English farms, which is going to be helping uh, Eurabity's cause, that is for sure. But Ben has plenty of farms in his main base, too. It's not like he's going to be hurting super, super bad here. Now, what are the Mongols going to be doing? We will see. They're, they're coming across. We see the veteran horsemen on their way up into the hills. Going to be trying to shut this down. And yeah, he doesn't want Dark Hunter Ezra to get back online. Ironically, Ezra's score is pretty similar. And you can see all the spears coming across. The Mongol army is all cavalry, too. So the spearmen spam, you know, 42 spearmen would trade super well into 84 horsemen. Looks like horsemen coming this way. So it's going to be a horseman on horseman duel as the two armies collide, rubbing their spears together. Spearmen aren't far behind, and it looks like Ezra is going to be trying to rebuild these walls and secure that uh, guild hall. Hands down, the most important win condition. Man, this is crazy stuff. This is looking, looking pretty wild here. All across, the elite men at arms, hanging out, just chilling. We do see these stone walls being rebuilt, and uh, I think your avid is like, all right, I'm not going to waste my time. He probably is going to go for some sort of a wonder play. I guess you could do like a top of the river, but then it just gets trapped from over here. So for your avid, you probably wonder, oh, this is a good wonder spot. Holy shit, that's a good wonder spot. I wonder if Yavity is going to see this. This is a beauty right there. Mongols, I got the farms here. Looks like they got pushed back. Holy Romans are just kind of chilling in the middle. Looks like they're maybe going to be taking some battle uh, up to the top side of the map going after Yavity. And they could certainly put some big hurt on them. Ezra, in the meantime, really, really scrapping pretty hard. Somebody in chat saying breakfast is less important in Europe. But I found turn as they actually... Oh, as actually... Oh, are you talking about like at schools and things like that? 
You're saying lunch is more of a priority there? Okay. Very cool. Veteran horsemen. They lurk in the shadows. Trying to get through to that guild hall. Maybe going to be trying to break their way through here. But Ezra seems like he's going to be able to scrap. That looks like a landmark got taken down there. I just got a notification for a landmark being destroyed. But I did miss that. As we're doing fast forward. We're almost to the live state of the game, guys. We're almost to the live state of the game. So we can see here the hand cannoneers and the elite men at arms going to be moving up. See the uh, hand cannoneers nuking some of the boats in the river. Doing a little bit of damage here as the trebuchets do shoot from across the map. More and more culverins will help in the siege effort. And now a big clash in the river as now your Abbey is going to be on the back foot a little bit. No demo ships. This is a fully, fully loaded HRE army. These are upgraded men at arms. Hand cannoneers, mangonel support. And it looks like your Abbey could be in a little bit of danger. Looking at his bank, he does have 3,000 gold, but his surplus isn't that insane. Like, he wouldn't be able to sustain multiple wars, especially if the English come in from the south and, uh, and get in there. Yeah. Over to the east side of things, we do see a lot of veteran horsemen. Able to kind of clean up a little bit here as Ezra's forces are uh, are diminished. More and more spearmen being spammed out. Ramstein coming in from the Incan. So we do have a couple of blood feuds in this game. It looks like there's like a couple little microcosm conflicts that are going down here. Up on the north side, your Abadi trying to ride around. He's looking for raiding. He's, he's trying to see if he can find a way into the HRE base to get a little bit of cost-effective raiding. Not going to be the case. And uh, yeah, your Abadi could actually be in some danger, guys. He does not have a lot of gold. You can see he just hit this gold node here. There's a couple more, but if he's denied gold and starved out, like Hunter would probably be able to win. Hunter is our HRE player right here, guys. So yeah, that could be something. Up in the north, we got 107 men-at-arms. Dear God, that is so many. If the English player decides he wants to go and attack Uravity, he could probably kill him. Like with that men-at-arms, especially with the HRE being on his doorstep. And we do see the uh, step read out. He came in and tried to jack as much gold as he possibly could. And then he just flees, just like a gremlin in the night. I love it. All right. So the battle continues. Looks like this villager here is going to be trying to take some of this gold. HRE does have a lot of gold. It, Holy Romans have gold. They have all the middle of the map, which the middle is a very risky proposition in FFA games, but typically it can pay off. Uh, I mean, generally you're going to lose if you're in the middle, but it can pay off is what I'm trying to say. If you have access to uh, all those juicy resources and maybe you're able to kind of kill people to the west of you or the east on either side and control that side of the map as well. So yeah, English... Looks like they pushed your Avity out of the hill. So your Avity is going to be forced back. And Ezra getting a little bit of a fight back here. Mongols are out of gold as well, though. Uh, they don't have any sort of trade. They're, yeah, they're just kind of pumping out whatever they can. It looks like it's mostly a horseman-based army with a little bit of light artillery from whatever tertiary gold they maybe got from relics. It's hard to say. Felix, happy birthday. Keep the AoE 4 content flowing. I will. I will. Don't you worry. Now, this is very cost-effective for the Inca. He gets in here. He gets all his elite horsemen. And he's going to be... Oh, look at that! Look at that. Ben deleted the farms before the Mongols could farm them. Look at the MLG play coming in from our English player. So Ezra losing another landmark, it looks like. Uh, nope, looks like he just redestroyed the landmarks that Ezra maybe tried to rebuild here. In the meantime, no major conflicts. We're almost to the live state of the game, guys. It's at 56 minutes and 105 is where the game is. So I suppose it was a good idea to get in here and do this rather than uh, me playing games. This, is, this was the right call. This has been a very, very good game so far. How are the Malians and Ottomans? Oh, both are good. Malians are really strong in 1v1. Um, in FFA, they, they're not bad either. And Ottomans, I think, are just a good sieve. In general, I, you know, I'm a little bit out of the loop with competitive FFA, or competitive 1v1. FFA is more kind of the thing I focus on these days. But um, but yeah, oh, a little bit of a raid coming in. Your Abadi actually finds a way into the base. Look at that. Gets a couple horsemen in. And look at that. He's farming the English farms at the base. Oh my god. What a troll toll move. He gets in there and just farms whatever he can. Your Abadi trying to squeeze every bit of resources he can out of his opponents here going to be going down to the south and whoa whoa what is the english player doing with his farms oh and he deletes all the farms to deny your avity which i don't know if that was worth it i guess he's going to be able to set up a lot of farms in the hills here it's hard to say no major conflicts going down mainly just ezra and the incan having a bit of a blood feud so these guys these guys just have it out for one another just the duel of fates so only five minutes until we're at the live state of the game and i can see why this game is going so long mm. i can see why it's going so long this is getting pretty serious all right, so looking over to the west side, you can see the English are hanging out with 108 men-at-arms. Those lads, very, very thick. Up on the north side of things, we do see Uravity. Uravity setting up, uh, yeah, just a big pasture economy. Going to be pumping out a million sheep here as he just kind of chills out. Hand cannoneers, elite horsemen. What's not to love? It's really impressive that Ezra was able to survive, though. Wait, somebody's trading. Okay, so it looks like the Holy Romans, are they trading with Ezra? No, there's a neutral trade post here. Okay. So the Holy Romans are actually getting some trade. It's not insane trade, but 86 trade is pretty respectable. In the meantime, a little bit of gold being shared with Ezra and the Hunter. It looks like they might have some sort of an alliance or a truce of sorts. 
while they deal with their respective enemies. Holy Romans in the middle of the map looking like a, a beacon of light here as the Regnitz Cathedral is uh, aglow with relics. And I wonder if Gravity is going to continue trying to fight Ben. Ben seems like a very solid player. Uh, he's good at macroing those men at arms. And uh, yeah, I, I wonder why I deleted all the farms though. I mean, let's look at the eco here of Ben now. Yeah, a much more balanced economy now. He's got 38 here. Deleted all those farms, including the buildings that could be raided. Gravity going in once again, and he didn't seal that breach. He's probably going to seal it now. I would imagine he's going to pull some villagers. And are the English going to take the battle to the Mongols in the north? I would I would think that would be a good idea. Mongols are pretty poor, I think. Although, Yoravati does have a decent bank, but he doesn't have a lot of gold units at the moment outside of the hand cannoneers, which are pretty good against you. So, yeah, forcing a duel of fates and just attritioning things down might not be a bad idea. Because, you know, the English can afford to take bad trades, whereas the Mongols can't really. So, horsemen coming out. Men at arms just grinding through. The hand cannoneers of Yoravati getting big, big damage thumping through those units. But the English forces are causing attrition. They're, they're taking down siege. They're pushing into the hand cannoneers. They're killing some buildings here. But overall, that's going to be a big win for Gravity, obviously. He's going to have wiped those men-at-arms. But hey, just like that, there's an entire army. And this time, it's going to be even more stacked with hand cannoneers and some uh, mangonel pieces and whatnot. If you're going to be encroaching on the Mongol base, I think you want to set up some forward infrastructure. You want to set up, like, you know, uh, keeps and towers and things like that to get that your network of castles. Those buffs make a really, really substantial difference. So we've almost fast-forwarded to the peak of this game here. Ezra is still battling the Mountain Mongols. And it looks like the Mountain Mongols have actually been pushed back. Wow, that's some crazy shit. Horseman spam. Ezra just macroing super, super hard in here. And yeah, I think that the Incan is running out of resources. Yeah, yeah, he has like no wood. Oh shit, that's what she said. Um, he's got a wood patch here. Yeah, that's what's happening. The Incan is probably out of wood. Let's see. He's got, no, he's got a little bit on wood, but not much. Yeah, this patch is like the last of it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to get very, very precarious. It's going to get very, very precarious. Oh my god. Elite men at arms down here. The English fighting the Mongols in the north. French versus Mongols in the south. Looks like Ezra is reclaiming the fallen empire, ladies and gentlemen. And he seems to have taken over this battle with the, the hill Mongolians. Yeah, he seems to have retaken that. Another fight's going to be going down here. Men-at-arms piling in. But uh, yeah, that men-at-arms push is going to be forcing gravity to micro pretty heavy. As the English are setting up forward infrastructure, and they do have towers now. And ladies and gentlemen, we're at the live, we're at the live point of the game. We are live. So we are caught up with where the players are in this game. We have fast-forwarded pretty quickly. And it looks like the English are going to be pulling back. A little bit nervous about that hand cannon near Legion. You know it wouldn't be terrible. I guess longbows are good, but mangonels are probably your, your good answer. That's going to be a really solid answer. Ezra, I think, is just going to be going for the kill here. He's going to be trying to take down the Mountain Mongols, which isn't going to be easy. They do have a fair amount of cannon towers upgraded here, so you got to watch out for that. On the other side, we do see keeps for the French. It looks like the French do have their guild hall back, so Ezra could be a wonder contender this game, as he has currently 7,000 stone banks, but you're going to wait till you get like 20,000 right there. So the fight is on. Looks like the uh, diving coming in from Ezra. A lot of spearmen. The fact that the Incan is only spamming out uh, horsemen is going to make those spearmen just turbo cost effective. Those bad boys going to trade well. I think he's got a couple archers in the mix too. He does have archers, which I would imagine he's manually focusing on the spearmen, which would be the good play. Okay, there comes a lot of reinforcements. So it looks like there's going to be 54 archers coming across. So Ezra's forces should be repelled here. It looks like the Incan is going to be able to hold. Ezra bringing in battering rams, but he's going to need to get more of a critical mass of an army. Ezra doesn't have any gold either. Um, a lot of players this game are super gold starved. It doesn't seem like anybody's really trading outside of the Holy Romans. Although, yeah, just the Holy Romans are trading. Oh my god, you're having going for a wonder. The Dark Lord, will he find a way? Dude, do you guys know how hard this is going to be to defend this? This is going to be so hard. Because, like, it seems as if every player in this pod is pretty darn good. Like, they all are very competent, very strong players from what I can see. I would wager Platinum might be the lowest one of these players is, like High Platinum, with everybody else being Diamond and or Low Conqueror level. So, so yeah, this is this is going to be a hard defense for Yoravity, Um because everybody's going to come after him. He has a fully erect English neighbor to the south. He's got a very strong Holy Roman player in the middle who has a pretty good standing army with trebuchets ready to go. It's going to be tough. Gunhound says five of eight pods done. Hey, glad to hear it, man. We're getting there. It's going to be it's going to be good. So the battle continues here. They need to stop their blood feud right now, though. Like the English and the Holy Romans might be able to handle Yoravity by themselves. It's not going to be easy. Villagers coming across, but the uh, the floppy hat boys with their big uh, big swords. There's Vihinders. Oh my God, they cleave those villagers down. Brutal. And the trebuchet siege begins. So the fact that Yoravity is being attacked so quickly after building the wonder is definitely scary. But he's got a lot of cannon towers. I mean, Yoravity was planning ahead. Yeah, he was planning ahead. He was going for it. You know, he probably didn't want to get dragged into like a super long game. 
But the English pair is going to be got to be moving sooner. Like, I don't know. People react. to. The, I guess I've done that before where I don't notice the wonder for like a minute. And I'm like, oh, shit, there's a wonder. I think that's the same thing that's going to happening here. But yeah, you got to get up there a little bit quicker. Red and uh, Teal also need to stop fighting. Because your Abadie could win a 2v1 versus Blue and... and not win, he could win with a Wonder. He's not going to be able to defeat them 2v1 with pure armies. But with the Wonder up there, his good static defenses. Gravity also hiding landmarks, which is a very, very good play. So he's got the Silver Tree kind of hidden on the edge of the map. The Step Read out being used as a long-distance tree outpost, which is pretty good. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, it doesn't look like he's getting attacked yet. The English player's just sipping on some tea, you know. Hanging out, thinking about, uh, you know, I don't know. Just uh, all the delicious English breakfast back in the base. Not going to be attacking out. Holy Romans are at least sieging. They're putting in pressure. They're going to be killing the main town center, which is, you know, not insignificant. Looks like your Avity going to pull that bad boy, maybe get some repairs and save it. So the Holy Romans is going to be preparing for battle, but there's a lot of mangonels, which will win the river fight. This is a great quality HRE army, though. 24 land snakes, uh, but it's going to... The culverins could be the difference maker. It depends on how good the micro is from Hunter. So Hunter needs to get those uh, those culverins and start just blasting these mangonels into the Shadow Realm. So his culverins are auto-attacking, and mangonels are now getting popped. Land Snake's doing big damage, but the uh, the Mangonels are just brutal here. As you can see, the uh, Culverins didn't manually target them super, super effectively. Trebuchet shooting in here on the south side of the map. We do have the English Army. I don't know why they're not helping. What are they they're taking so damn long? Like, that English Army's good quality, and it looks like the Holy Roman Army is bunker busted. Uh, they basically just pushed into a Mangonel position, and Uravity has 75 hand cannoneers, which is going to be a very tough army. Could Uravity win this? That would be very, very impressive. A uh, red and teal looks like no, they're still fighting. There's there's a serious blood feud going down here, guys. It looks like a blood feud in the south between Ezra and uh, the Incan could lead to your Avity winning this game. But the fact, what is this? Was the English player just AFK? It's like not like at this. As soon as you see a wonder, you need to be like, or even a minute after, two minutes after, whatever. You need to be setting up a ton of infrastructure here and getting ready to push. Like the HRE player is going to try, and it seems like he's he putting up a valiant effort, but. At the end of the day, man, it's got to be way quicker than this. So Red is trying to help. It looks like Ezra is going to the north. So yeah, Ezra is going to the north. Meanwhile, the Mongols uh, seem to be continuing aggression on Ezra, which is going to be... Um, yeah, they don't really have much of a choice, though, do they? Like, the Mongols actually cannot contribute whatsoever. Like, they would have to go through the HRE, the English, or Ezra. Like, the Mongols literally can't help with the wonder. I mean, they could send some horsemen around or something like that, but yeah, I, I understand why the Incan is doing what he's doing. They, it, he just can't really get up here. Now, it looks like Red is going to be trying some sneakiness on the top side of the map. Going to be setting up some sort of infrastructure, coming across the river, trying to do like a trebuchet backdoor, the classic allied Trex play. Could work out. We'll have to see. The English player, yeah, he's just not moving. I don't know. Did he DC or something? Or is he just, you know, maybe maybe he's got some, uh, got some IRL stuff he had to attend to here. We'll have to see. I don't know. It's going to move from his nest eventually, I would wager. Hmm. Oh, that was good stuff. That tea is so good. It's so good. It's not even really tea. You get like, uh, you boil some water, you put a bunch of honey in a cup, and then you throw some lemon, lemon juice in there, and it's like this delicious, like, yeah, delicious concoction of sorts. So the Incan is just chilling out. Ezra mackering some horsemen down here. But Ezra, yeah, I think going for a trebuchet, spam could be good. I mean, how is he going to get those rams? I guess he could go across the river here. The Holy Romans are mustering another army for the attack. They have a lot of mangonels in this force, a lot of men at arms. I don't know what the English player is doing. Is there is there some weird Okay, he's moving, he's here. I was like, what the hell is going on with him, man? Yeah, that was like a very, very slow response. Got a good quality army, men at arms, you know, not bad. Certainly good for diving landmarks. And uh he, he needs to just get aggressive. Gravity's probably shocked himself. He's probably like, what the hell is going on? Like, what why is the English player not attacking me? He's back now. Yeah, maybe it's tea time. That's true. That could very well be it. Look at the Rams coming. Oh my god. I love it. Ezra is a very, very cunning player. So we're going to be seeing the old Rams come across here. One sec, guys. Taking off the old hoodie. It's getting a little warm in here. All right. There we go. It is time. It is time, ladies and gentlemen. On the south side, we have 84 men-at-arms, 14 hand cannoneers, mangonels, ready to push. England setting up their forward infrastructure. But Ben needs to get moving. Ben should just be torching buildings. He needs to be getting productive for sure. The HRE is going to be moving across. Ezra also staging for a bit of a fight. Down to the south, it looks like the Incan is just kind of Netflix and chilling. And just, you know, that's what I would do if I were him. If I were him, I, would, I don't know if I would attack Ezra because I wouldn't want Ezra to pull back and defend. I would, you know, that's the best bet is to just let him go for the wonder. The wonder time, the wonder tracker is nine minutes and 23 seconds. There, this is a very, very slow response. This is a very... 
poor response from all the players. I mean, Ezra's response is good, but the other two players, they need to be more aggressive. Because um, uh, like, what's going to happen is, if, if the English was sacrificing its armies and just attritioning, and we had the same thing with the HRE, perpetually putting waves of pressure on, that opens up the back door from Ezra. Ezra's got 13 battering rams here, but your is just going to be waiting with a bunch of horsemen because there's no other pressure, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's just a, it's a tricky one. Yeah, and trebuchet spam is good too because all you need to do is get the trebs like right here to this little peninsula and you're going to be hanging out. So English player chilling out. They're really, really taking their time here, guys. They're really, really taking their time. Looking at the resources of all the players. Ben has a nice bank, so he's got no excuse for sitting back. He needs to get aggressive. The Holy Romans also have a really good bank, not of wood, but of the primary resources for men-at-arms and things like that. Ezra's got a nice one too, and he's also got stone and reserves. Ezra could for sure counter wonder. If this fails, like Ezra could probably counter wonder and just build like 50 keeps and probably have a good chance of winning the game. So this probably is really, really behooves Ezra to try and get the W here. Horsemen parked across the reach. We do have spearmen in this army, so there are uh, 18 spearmen versus 32 horsemen. Probably would be pretty good for the spearmen, but now your is going to be setting up cannon towers on the river, which is going to be quite scary. And uh, hey, Don Artie, how you doing, man? Well played. I enjoyed watching you. Looking forward to seeing you in the grand finals, my friends. I've watched you play before in other big tournaments. I've, I've seen you in action, brother. I've seen you. So the war rages on. On the south side, the English, kind of just mouth breathing here. They need to move up. Like, why? They should be destroying infrastructure. They should just be here, torching these things, making it harder for gravity to rebuild. But they're literally just, the infrastructure is just being built right in front of them. Over to the east, the Holy Romans are going for it. They're trying to fight. They do have their manganels. They have their men-at-arms, all that other sort of good stuff. And uh, is going to be, unfortunately, taking another fight in the river, which they're probably just going to get Mango down. Yuravity is a dark wizard for sure. And uh, I think he's going to win this game. I, I just, although Ezra with the trebuchet snipe could be very strong. Okay. Yeah, Ezra is a scrappy player. I've had so many games against him where it's just like a constant 1v1 grind of doom for hours. And he just always scraps and really, really tough to finish. Um, so yeah, a transport ship dropping tre like 16 trebs here. Power moving them up to the Monument of the Great Khan. What would be an even more MLG play would be to pull villagers and build a, wa a wall here, uh, right here. So the Mongols can't like get to your trebs and then you just like trebuchet them down from a distance at a choke point. There's a lot of other things like that. Yeah. Oh, that's the Incan? Oh shit, I got all confused there. That was the Incan setting up infrastructure. Oh, that makes sense. I just saw the Mongol looking buildings and you know, the green and teal. Just, you know, the colors, they just all kind of blended together there. So, wow. I like I like that the Incan's trying to help. That's fun. So we do see the big English chunky army coming in. The big thick men-at-arms having eaten their breakfast now. And, you know, had properly, they had their tea time. And now, you know, with six minutes left, they're going to move in and go for the kill. And obviously Mongols can't, you know, they can't wall. So this men-at-arms push might be a little bit precarious. Ezra coming in with the Duhas from the north. The Rams of Doom are on their way in. Currently, we have 6 minutes and 18 seconds left in the Wonder, and the Men-at-Arms are getting annihilated, but he should just be going straight for the Wonder, probably. Like, trying to torch down, like, a tower for, like, an entire Men-at-Arms Legion, not really worth it. But this is a distraction. Oh my god, the Ramstein's coming in, guys! The Duhost is upon us. Yeah, that's gonna get it. That's gonna get it. I don't know where Yuravity... Yuravity was fighting the Holy Romans on the bridge. Holy shit. I did not expect it to go that well. But they just got in there and pounded it down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a continuation of the game. Oh my god, this is this is some stuff. They nailed that wonder. Now, Ezra should probably counter wonder here, I would wager. Like, something by the Red Palace with like 500 keeps here. I bet you he's got over 20,000 banked in his guild hall. Let's go and take a look. Uh, guild hall is up in the hills somewhere. Yes, it is. 14,000. Not quite as much as I thought, but somewhere in the ballpark. Somewhere in the ballpark, indeed. Now over the west side, ladies and gentlemen, we see Lancers and Men-at-Arms. They should take this opportunity to try and finish your Avity, for sure. Ezra pulls back. And now suddenly, I think Ezra could potentially be a favorite in this game. With the with the French ability to just build 500 static defenses and just cackle. Laugh in French. You know, however French people laugh is how he's probably going to laugh. And uh, yeah, that was a good... That was a good... They attacked in unison there. Even though it was a little bit cutting it close, they still came together at the end of the day and got the job done. So... They should try and finish off your Avity, though. Um, definitely. And he's very broke. He's got no wood. That's what she said. Also does have 974 gold. So a little bit starved there. Looks like the Incan is going to be farming. So look at this. The, the Teal Mongols, they're getting their bounty here on the bottom side of the map as they are going to be trying to take down what buildings they can. Up on the north side, trebuchets, hammering. Your Avity basically on death's bed. If the players continue the pressure on him, he is, he is a goner. Looks like there's a couple spearmen still pushing here. We have the Karax bombarding from the top. Trebuchets across the river. Uh, is Ezra preparing for a wonder anywhere is the question. It looks like he's setting up. Okay. 
Ezra is setting up a ton of towers all over his base to prevent the Holy Romans from getting a good crossing, I suppose. Maybe he doesn't want to get navel dropped like he just did. I uh, wonder where his wonder would go. Here isn't a bad spot. It's a really, like, it's super far away from blue. And uh, I wouldn't hate, like, having the red palace near. In case something tries to dive, it can do it for sure. So, yeah, Yuravity was kind of all in on that. I mean, he's not out of the game, for sure. Because somebody else is going to be arising as the superpower here. And uh, that might give him an opportunity to try and get some trade or find a way back into the game. We're going to have to see, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to have to see. So back on the other side, more trebuchets blasting from across. Giving a little bit of sweet, sweet nuking right there. Yeah, that, that hurts. Your Avity doesn't have wood, so any infrastructure that is destroyed is going to be sorely felt as the Incan continues to do a little bit of raiding, trying to get some eco back. And now I wonder if Mortal Kombat's going to be resuming between the Incan and, uh, and Dark Hunter Ezra on the bottom side of the map. We'll have to see. A lot of Lancers cruising across. They are cruising for a bruising. Update from chat. Gunhound says, Great turnout tonight. I had 46 players competing for a spot on the winner's list. We currently have three way a tie for the top of the winner's list. Gravity, Smeagol, and Anatan. Very, very cool. <laughs> I like how we just call him Smeagol now. It's like, <laughs> just... Yeah, Smeagol, Smeagol doesn't mess about. He's, he's all business. By the way, did Smeagol qualify for the grand finals tonight? Did you? Yeah, Gravity will survive. He's got landmarks hidden. He's not going to die. But, I mean, he could have his base pounded. It looks like the Holy Romans, like, don't perceive him as the main threat anymore. So they're going to be backing off. Even though with perpetual pressure, they probably could have finished him. Uh, simply because the Holy Romans have a better gold eco. Uh, they have trade going. They have gold veins. Like, whereas Yuravity is very starved of primary resources. He literally just has 26 on food. His eco right now is 27, which is absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. So, down to the west side. We do see the elite men-at-arms. The English is cackling in infinite gold. And uh, look at that. Oh, an attempted raid coming in. The Incan's raiders tried to find a way in, but Ben is able to get the walls up. So Ben is going to be setting up the stone walls. Very, very good reaction to those raids. So they're not going to be getting in. And uh, yeah, Mongols certainly do not enjoy facing off against walls. Oh, never mind. I eat my words there. Jeez. Chris, you got slaughtered? No. Smeagol. No, not like this. Culverins getting the job done, parping, par uh, popping the mangonels. And obviously the urgency... In the defense here of your it seems to be less substantial since you know he he's i think he feels as if he might be in trouble and it's just kind of he's just like just take me just end me just letting it happen here triple culverins will counter a lot of this army the fact that men at arms are kind of fighting in a choke here is a little bit unfortunate but gravity straight up can barely reproduce anything um so every every loss is going to be super felt super super felt over on the south side of the map what do we got we got a lot of uh a lot of mongol action just sitting up in the corner here it looks like they're upgrading uh cannon towers Let's look at the bank of the Incan. Yeah, he's also starved of primary resources like wood. This map is not very wood heavy. Outside of the northwest or the west side of the map, due west and the northeast, wood is very, very bare bones. And gravity forced back into the shadows. And HRE is going to be coming to finish the job, which I 100% agree with this decision. I think it's a great call because if you leave your gravity there and go to do other things, like he's going to eventually be at the north of your base, like attacking you, right? Like you need to stamp out these threats while you can. So yeah, the, the fight continues. Looking at uh, Uravity's army, he's got 13 uh, hand cannoneers. On the bright side, he can hide a bunch of buildings and relocate up here and just set up behind his million cannon towers that he did have. But HRE maybe going to be pulling back, figuring they did enough damage. We'll have to see. Ezra is still sitting here with six trebuchets. Ezra could do some merc. Oh, he found landmarks. Ezra found the silver tree. Look at that. He's scrapping. So Ezra found the goodies, ladies and gentlemen. Gravity is going to be down to uh, only a couple landmarks. And yeah, we do have the step read out uh, on the bottom side as well. So step read out is alive. That's going to go down. We do have the main town center has been repaired. The three relics have been put in the back safety of the base, which is very good. Tithe Barnes will give him something to work with at the very least. And uh, yeah, I don't know who's going to win this. I think Ezra probably is a favorite right now because of the stone. Having like 20,000 stone. He, he has time too. Yeah, Ezra is really setting up an entrenchment here. And French entrenchments are hands down the most obnoxious shit to deal with in the game. Um, they just have so many. Like, you'll go to a French player's base and they'll have like 30 keeps and you're like, how is this even possible? Uh, Guildhall is the answer. But um, yeah, it's it's nasty. 17,000 stone in here, guys. Looking pretty thick as the Incan continues his raids. He's basically just trying to scrap however he can, getting whatever relics he can. And, you know, farming the the remains here of, of uh, you know, Gravity's base, I think is going to be a reasonably good call. So the, the, raid, the battle rage is on, guys. It happens. Up in the northeast, what do we got? Archery range is there. The white stupa back in business. Ezra has taken out one of those landmarks. And is Ezra going to be finding this other landmark in the corner? That would definitely put uh, Uravity in a very, very dangerous position. 
Hunter in the middle, just kind of chilling out. We've seen some some pretty consistent aggression. Looks like he's going to be going after these trebuchets. So Ezra is going to be losing those traps. I think he just kind of wanted to get a little bit, bit of value out of them before they died. But yeah, probably going to keep the pressure on your Avity. Your Avity's army is basically 13 hand cannoneers. So he is in some serious, serious danger, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Ezra is looking to be the powerhouse. Oh, yeah. I think we know where the relics, the wonder is going to go. Back here, maybe? Yeah, we see a keep, a lot of towers. Although, yeah, the, uh, why would you not just go in the corner? It's the furthest possible location. The Corsair Lords of the River could do some work. Nobody's trading anymore. I believe the Holy Roman trade was shut down by Ezra. The Incan's still just raiding your Avity's base. Your Avity just kind of clinging onto life here as the Holy Romans it kind of seem as if they're somewhat interested. The English, how are they looking resource-wise? So Ben has an... Oh, shit. Guys, we could see an English wonder here. I don't know where he would put it. Would it be like back here? Probably so. Berkshire Palace. I would not be surprised to see an English wonder, actually. This big, like, enclosure opening, the fact that he deleted the farms up there makes me very, um, as the kids would say, sus. I think that's uh, I think that's the, the boomer learning the language here. And up on the north side, yeah, gravity just basically holding on. Not really doing a whole lot. Doesn't have much to do. Down to the south, we have the Incan. He's also kind of in the same boat as Gravity. Both are super resource starved and just scavenging resources wherever they can. Gravity and the Incan will probably be more in positions to play Kingmaker than they will be actually able to win the game. So we've got walls coming up. It looks like the Holy Roman's going to be setting up a wall empire here. Uh, is HRE trading? Yes, they are. So HRE does actually have trade. It looks like it wasn't shut down. I believe it's 86 trade. Uh, so not bad. Not bad at all. A little bit of gold being taken here by Ezra. So these these villagers have made an agreement with the Holy Romans to be able to mine there, which is going to be a, a big regret, I'm sure, when Ezra builds his wonder inevitably. Wonder here, too. Really curious where he's going to build that. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's happening. Oh, man. It's happening, guys. Breaking through the English base is not going to be easy because Ezra has to go through the Holy Romans. Probably going through the south is the best bet. Ladies and gentlemen... The Cathedral of St. Thomas is going to be getting built here in a second. You better hurry, though. I wonder if the French are going to race. No, the French have a lot of villagers here. They have 41 villagers. The English are sitting on 53. So the English will 100% win this wonder race if they start building it at the same time. He's he's very prepared for this. And I'm not sure where that one villager is going. A little bit of a vulnerability from the north. This is like this is like the breach at Helm's Deep. It's like the where the Urukai, you know, sapper kind of attacks. It's like the one weakness of the fortress, right? We'll see. We got something in chat. French should just wonder and he'll win. But if English wonders first, it might be hard. 100% agree. And I think the English should wonder first. I, I honestly think the French would. I agree with you 100%. I think the French would get this. Dark Hunter Ezra is going for the wonder. Is the English going to pull the trigger and try and race him? Oh, he does it. Who's going to get it first? So over here, we have 41 villagers. And then we do also have 50 in total. But the English have 59 villagers. The English are going to win the race. Oh, my God. That's going to set Ezra back so hard. And is Ezra going to go for it? Because then it's going to get into one of those weird, precarious situations where it, it, like, someone has to, you'll be like, okay, the rest of the players are going to be like, well, Ezra, if you don't delete your wonder, we're not going to help. That's very, very common. So the English with the balls deep pull. 70 villagers right here, ladies and gentlemen. 54 right there. That, man, Ezra is really going to regret that. That's really unfortunate timing. So Ben has got the wonder now. Looking at the English, who can really threaten them? Down to the south, the Incan isn't going to be able to do much. He doesn't have wood, doesn't have gold. It's basically just going to be horsemen, you know, waving their spears here at the gatehouse and wishing they could be let in. Uh, the Holy Romans are a force of nature. They have a strong army. They can definitely fight. Uravity is kind of out of the picture. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I think that probably Ben is going to be massively favored. And Ezra canceled his landmark, which is the right play because it will also, it helps unify everyone against that player, right? And, and you also need those resources for the siege and whatnot. So there you go. English are waiting for somebody else to build. You think so? Huh. They could be. Just, the, just like the challenge to try and, try and you know get some mind games in there. Towers being set up, but English have Berkshire. Berkshire is so powerful at defending. You can also turbo, tur turbo produce from the White Tower if he has it. Does he have White Tower? I don't think he did. Did he go King's Palace? Uh, do we have the White Tower out here somewhere? Not sure. The Incan doing a little bit of raiding, you know, doing his part, looking at the Wonder right now. We do see the Wonder is at 13 minutes and 55 seconds, give or take. Up on the north side of the map. Your Avity, your Avity's like, screw this shit, I'm going home. He just taps out. He's like, I can't do shit. Yeah, which makes sense. Your Avity was basically dead in the water. I mean, ah, uh, yeah. It was going to be hard for him. Like, he could have helped. He could have, like, converted all of that gold into wood and maybe built some rams and trebs and tried a back door. So your Avity could have helped, but... In reality, he didn't have much going on, and really it was going to be in danger. So yeah, entrenching this area. This is the, the weakness of the fortress here. So you're going to want to entrench that if you can. 
Over here we see the Holy Romans heading to the south. Wow, interesting. Why would they, I guess, is there a crossing here? Yeah, Holy Romans should be attacking from right here. This is, this is where they would want to go. Oh, wait, they're going for a sacred? Oh my god, I think they're going to go for a sacred. So if they grab the sacred sites from the English before the 10 minute mark, they can try and force the English to delete the wonder. But no, it looks like they're they're going south. We do see one sacred site being taken. The other two, is there any is there anyone going to pray to Jesus on those sacred sites right now? I don't think so. That's one of the common tactics we also see in FFA is people will take sacreds to force wonders to be deleted. Although a lot of times people with the wonders will be like, screw you, I just want just end me. You know, you guys figure it out. And then it becomes a very complicated situation there. So over here. Yeah, you're happy you we're watching your game, GG. We watched your game second. It was the second round of games we tuned in here. But looks like it's going to be a sacred attempt, yeah. It's the power of, the, power of the, the Jesus. Is it coming here? Ezra still says he's constructing the wonder, so it looks like the UI is just bugged there. But yeah, one sacred site being taken. He's got to hurry. He better get a prelate onto that other one. I don't know if he's going to have enough time. The wonder tracker is at just going to be going under 12 minutes right now. He, he should be okay. He should be okay. So yeah, it looks like it's going to be a sacred rush. The English... What they should do is they should send all their big, thick men-at-arms across the river, deny this until the 10-minute mark, and then they're just chilling, basically. And then they're in good shape. Okay, looking on the other side, we do see all the bombards hanging out. English just chilling. Sacred site's going to be taken. I wonder if he's running his prelate over to the other one. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of urgency in a sacred site play. Like, normally you'd see a villager pull building right next to it, like a monastery, and pumping it out. But he's not, like, panic rushing over to this other one. Which makes you think they're planning a siege. They're not like going to be trying to do the sacred site, which I think is a. Is it, where's the other sacred site? So we got one here, we got one here, and it's a little bit hard to tell where the other one is. It's probably like up around here somewhere. Is there only two? Let's look at the sacred tracker. So sacred tracker, yeah, there's only two sacred sites. So uh, a pretty considerable misplay from the Holy Romans. They should have gone for the sacred win here, because then it's like, yeah, that that would be that would be pretty strong. Because then the English should probably delete their be forced to delete their wonder. I don't know. There's no sense of urgency. We're not seeing a prelate running over to that other landmark. Now it's going, but the sacred tracker, let's look at the wonder. Uh, yeah, he's got 11 minutes. It's going to be pretty close. It's going to be very close indeed. So Ezra told Pink to take sacred. Blue said he is happy with second place and won't delete. Oh, man. Look at that. Blue just, just going for it. I like that. I like that. You know, the, the macho, the macho test there. That's kind of funny because the fact that Blue is able to not delete the wonder, it puts Ezra in a very weird spot. Because then, like, if he doesn't, like, yeah, he's he's the one who's just going to be taking the fat L, basically. It looks like horsemen going around the top side of the map. Ezra setting up siege infrastructure for another backdoor attempt, which is very strong. Um, oh, wow. You know what? You know what would be a really strong play, too? Lumberjack through here. Bring a bunch of villagers. Lumberjack through. You got a nice path. It would, be, it would take only a couple seconds to lumberjack through this. And then you come and you just pound this wonder here. I think that would be very strong. Holy Romans are sieging from the south, but England is going to be able to defend itself very well. We see the sacred site being taken, but he was too slow on it. And uh, ultimately, the wonder, I think, is going to pass. Oh, my God. This is so close. Oh, that sacred site is capturing so slow. He could have easily had it. Four, three, two, one. And oh, my God. I think, dude, they might be, they might be like tied. They might be like within a second of each other. Build a pony. Thank you for six bucks. Thank you, thank you. You have the, the samurai dog, that's great, I love it. All right, so the sacred sites have been taken, and this is a very, very strange one. I, I He was a little bit slow on that, but it looks like he's got a thirst for blood. Now Ezra is gonna be creeping in from the top, while also maybe threatening a decap. Okay, Ezra can also get a decap over here. He can take the 12 villagers and just easily decap this. Okay, so there's options. We've had two games recently where people refuse to delete for sacreds. People seem to be pushing back against sacred bullying. It's the new trend. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it, you know. It, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one. So a lot of men-at-arms, a lot of land snakes here. The English army isn't amazing. It's just men-at-arms. Although I believe the, yeah, it's fully walled here. So the Cathedral of St. Thomas stands firm. But that's a pretty good quality HRE army. Land snakes mixed in with the uh, HRE men-at-arms should be able to dominate the English men-at-arms-based army here. Up on the top side, we see Ezra. I think Ezra is going to find a way. I think he's going to find a way. And Ezra is a very, he's putting in so much work. Is he building another wonder? Uh, he's going to be ready to, that's for sure. Let's look at the bank. Ezra currently sitting at enough to build a wonder. So yeah, if this works, Ezra is just going to slap down a wonder. He's going to slap the base pretty hard, I think. So yeah, the battle seems to be going a little bit of lag. It's, it's strange. It's, it's maybe because the replay is like trying to catch up or something. But the Incan getting in here and doing work. I, I really like how the Incan is contributing despite being very behind. 
He's using all these Lancers to torch down the houses, which is going to be supply blocking the English player. Uh, looking at the Wonder, it's currently got eight minutes left, which is a long time. Ezra up in the hills. Ezra, I think, knows. His scouts are here. He's privy to this, and he's bringing over a villager for the Lumberjacking, and Rams are going to be coming in. Okay, guys. I think they're going to get this Wonder. I think it's going to happen. Ezra, though, yeah, he'll probably have a counter Wonder after this, I would imagine. This, this honestly could be like a grand final game. I feel like this is such a scrappy match. And more houses being built in the shadows. We have a couple towers, but honestly, a couple traps here, and it's just GG for that. We do have a French keep coming up, which uh, obviously the influence isn't terribly pertinent here, but it still does give you a little bit. I still am, but I can't see the Sacred Timer for some reason. Yeah, it's very weird. The Sacred Timer is like really close, but it can be easily decapped. Like Ezra has knights here. He's got 24 knights with which he's going to decap the Sacred. And then he's going to build a wonder and he's just going to cackle like the heathen kings of old. Yeah, I do think Red's still going to win the game as well. He's he's looking like he's in good shape. And the English, they're losing a lot. HRE is here. They're getting torched down. Um, yeah, there's some decent forward infrastructure. Not insane. But the HRE player, I'm very impressed with how well Hunter is doing. Um, despite being in the middle of the map, that's a hard spot. So he's trying to lumberjack through. Oh my god, did he get the snipe? I think he used the English villagers to snipe the French villager who's trying to lumberjack. And now another one's coming in. Okay, let's see. So he's doing it. Ben losing landmarks here. Two fat armies here. This guy just loves his mounted arms, dude. He is just not messing with anything else. He's just like, I, you know, I like my mounted arms. Simple as. He's like that, that meme. Oh my god, look at this. A wall coming up. It'll buy a little bit of time. It would be better to snipe the villager. So the villager, the last tree. Oh, is he going to go down? I think he's going to get popped in the face before he finishes. And the tree doesn't go down. The tree holds and the wall is finished. Every moment you can delay like that is quite big. Siege workshops on the way. We got a lot of stables, a lot of diving units here. As the forces of Dark Hunter Ezra gather at the north side of the map. They prepare for battle. The villagers jumping in the towers. It's pretty haggard just throwing the villagers in there. But it looks like they got through the tree line. Okay, so the tree was finished. The seven villagers were pulled. And now Ezra is going to need some proper siege equipment to be able to deal with this. He does have his knights waiting. The knights obviously just going to be getting that decap. And then he can go for his own wonder and probably win the game. Most likely. HRE. Dude, the Incan. Look at his army. It's no joke, man. It's no joke. Look at him getting in there. So attacking the Council Hall. Council Hall going to be torched. Looking at the remaining landmarks. We got Barkshire. We got White Tower. We have the TC. And that's it, actually. You know what? He's probably going to die to Landmark Snipe. I, I don't I don't know if it's even going to need to get to the Wonder. The Incan is just going MLG with his scouts and Lancers. And just going after these landmarks while the HRE player... He should continue trebucheting and going after the, uh, the palaces here. The fight is on. The HRE and the English armies collapse. Fighting into one another. Collide, I should say. Land snakes with their big cleaving snake swords doing a lot of damage against this army. You can see very poor efficiency in the English army. A lot of units aren't even fighting. Whereas the HRE, you do have hand cannoneers, a little bit better army diversity, and land snakes doing uh, doing their work. But again, England is still England. Units able to fight pretty well, and we got more men at arms piling out from all directions. Ezra coming in like a wrecking ball here. And good defense here by uh, Ben. Ben's doing a good job. He's it's, What you want to do is just keep rebuilding the walls. Like, before your opponent can, like, react and just kind of keep layering. There should be, like, five layers of walls here, if you can. Yeah, so he needs to rebuild the wall, but it looks like Ezra is going to be very on top of it. So the rams are being torched down. I don't know if any of these are upgraded. And I think Ezra is going to come in and probably just trebuchet down the wonder. And look at that, man. Landmark's just getting sniped. The Incan going for the supplies. Wow, some really, really great play this game. Four minutes and 54 seconds. Pretty much a 0% chance he gets it. With Ezra knocking on Heaven's Door back here. Knock, knock it on Heaven's Door. He's getting in there. The ramp should be able to clear through all these. And, um, yeah. The Sacred Timer. See, if the HRE player was, was really a, a clever one here, he could start... Oh, right as I say it. No, that's the French Keep. I was going to say, he should be fortifying this. Now that, like, the writing is on the wall, and you can see how well it's going, you would want to fortify that. Because then you could just straight up win. But Ezra's going to get the decap. Ezra just super, super clever. So he goes for that. He gets here with the Elite Knights. He sets up a keep to prevent the recapping. And he's got his wonder in the corner, ladies and gentlemen. He's got it in the corner. The English wonder has fallen. And now I think Ezra just takes his game. Wait, why did he delete it? Whoa! He deleted the wonder. Was that an accident? What's going on here? So Ezra still has the resources for the wonder. Why did he delete that? What's the what's the what's the business? What's the jams? There he goes. Okay, so maybe it was just a misclick. I think he misclicked. He's probably panicking right now, sweating bullets, but looks like it's gonna be coming back. So he does get that set up again. Over on the west side, we do see a lot of elite royal knights. They're able to get a keep up. I love this. He's setting up multiple keeps to make it too hard for the HRE to recap. And he does have a good a good core of medieval battle tanks, aka French Royal Knights, who are gonna be able to defend this adequately well, I would say. 
So, over to the west side, the English, you know, the, the, the weakness, the, 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 the hole in Helm's Deep, or I should say uh, the Hornburg, is, uh, is compromised. And now the English player, he's got a lot of, a lot of these guys. And he, you know he likes his men-at-arms, but the HRE going to be turning around to go after Ezra. One weakness is this. Like, this north approach is really good. Like, Trebs across the river and it's instant GG. If you're Ezra, you probably want to build, like, more keeps and more defenses up here. That's, like, the one weakness. The main base is going to be an unholy nightmare to get through with all the cannon emplacements he has. But that other side is going to be tricky. And, yeah, he got the decap there. And, uh, yeah, he's got to try and grab this now. The HRE player, probably your best bet is just a desperate fight to try and reclaim the sacred site. I mean, you have four and a half minutes to do it. It's not like it's, like... Like, it's, it, he has some time, is what I'm essentially trying to say. English player moving up. Going to be going after Ezra's Trebs. It looks like Ezra's trying to finish him. He's trying to finish him. Oh, but the White Tower is still in the TC. Okay, I, I thought, well, that's actually not the main TC. But Ezra going for the snipe with the with the, the big uh, Manganels or, excuse me, Trebuchets back here. No. So if you're HRE, you, I think you just re-secure the Sacred Site. I think you just re-secure it. That's, that's your best bet. So keeps getting knocked down. He needs to have a Prelate on standby. He's got some workers. Uh, decapping here is pretty vulnerable as well. I mean, he did not entrench these. The English player could basically just sail across the river here and easily get the decap on that. And it looks like Ezra's force is going to be pushed back. Dude, look at this man. Look at this. He has 120 men-at-arms. He is the dark king of men-at-arms. Which are hard to stop. With English men-at-arms are a pain in the ass. They have such good... They're so tanky. They just, like, don't even care about burning oil, too. They're like, I don't care that we're wearing, like, literally metal. That could just be... <laughs> we're just going to move in and, and, and do it. So Ezra going to go for the fight here. Ezra has got to gotta take a really active... This is like the one way Ezra could lose the game. Is if somehow Hunter is able to push him off the sacred site and actively get it, then that's that's the one chance. Otherwise, I don't think the alliance is going to have that great of success. Although down here, we do see elite fire lancers. And one thing is Ezra could be landmark snipe too. Although, you'd have to get through all this. Uh, I, although these aren't really upgraded. Yeah, he doesn't have too many emplacements there. I really like what the Incan is doing too. Like He's being very helpful. Like, even though he's behind, he's always playing to win, which I really, sh big shout out to you, Incan. You're, you're playing, you're playing the champs game. Being dealt a, a poor hand of cards, and you're, you're still just getting in there, torching things down, contributing to every effort that gives you even a slight chance of winning. So where is the Jesus? Where is the Jesus? The big, the big Lebowski, the Jesus. Yeah, he needs to get in here and, uh, and take the sacred site, like ASAP. Ezra is going to be, you know, obviously looking to make sure that doesn't happen, but where is it? Where's his prelates? He's got to pull some. And obviously, you know, you have a pretty easy little tooltip for prelates. Okay, Friar Tuck's on his way over. So he's coming. But Ezra's going to make an attempt to snipe and dive that guy, probably. Uh, I would wager. Ankin torching down most of the infrastructure here. Trying to get what bounty he can. And still scrapping. So the English player's coming as well. Now, what will the English player do? Is he going to decap the sacred sites? Or is he going to go across the map? Puts him in a bit of a conundrum here. HRE should probably start entrenching their, their sacred sites. Like right here, there needs to be keeps. Wall something making this a little bit harder to get. The English army's moving, but they don't have any siege equipment. Um, looking here at Ben, um, he does have 4,000 wood in the bank, so he's not, it's not, he can make siege equipment. Uh-oh, a little bit of an opening here. Looks like the English might be able to get through. No, not quite. Ezra going for the snipe, and the good micro comes into play. And he gets, he takes down the Jesus. He gets him. Yeah, and I, you had to know that was going to happen. Ezra showing, you know, some high-level play. The awareness that that was going to be coming is very, very good. So the wonder is 11 and a half minutes. Is there going to be more Jesus coming? Let's find out. Uh, we got one prelate sitting somewhere. I, I think he's in the... Yeah, we have a prelate being produced here, but he's supply popped. So he's probably not going to get it out unless he deletes some units, which is going to take a little bit of effort. Ezra riding about looking for the prize. He's, he's looking for more prelates to make sure that nothing's going to be coming. And honestly, Ezra might just get a decap here. He probably is. Yeah, okay. So Ezra probably is going to be going for just the wonder W now. Like, uh, there's, there's no more threat. He's going to decap this. So Ezra with the plays, man. Very, very good stuff. So, yeah, HRE has its... It, the die is cast. It, he needs to just move east now and try and press with the siege. Gravity's base being farmed by the Incan. Incan just kind of taking his fellow Mongolian brother scraps here and, uh, you know, probably thankful for it. The English player, just mass men-at-arms. We see Ben going to be moving across, trying to maybe just make his way over to Red's base. And does he have siege engineering? If he did, he can make a lot of rams and maybe do a little something-something. Just a casual two-hour round one match. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. So the sacred sites are decapped. Uh, we do have a prelate making his way over here, I think. Yeah, but there's no way. He's not going to get it in time. He, he just, like, pieces out. He's like, screw this. I'm going home. The Incan's doing some work, though, man. He's doing some great work. The guild hall is rebuilding more stone. So preparing just, to, just for the worst here. 
As the battle rages on, a lot of spearmen here, but I think there's a, a enough units. He's got seven. Oh, these are scouts mostly. 73 scouts, Jesus. That's a whole lot. Got cannon towers with stone. It looks like Dark Hunter Ezra is going to be preparing for this. On the west side of the map, we do see the Walls of Doom coming up. And uh, where's the English player going? What is he doing? Is, is he going to the north side of the map? Ezra, I think, just has got this. There's no way. I mean, we're sitting at 10 minutes, guys. And uh, yeah, I just, nobody seems, the only player who seems actually like, able to feasibly siege like like with siege equipment and like push with a, a, a good balanced army is the HRE um, but even still they're not going to be able to solo through Ezra has really good micro and is going to be able to use his horseman to dive and just cause tons of havoc I think Hunter gave up Saker to get the English united to fight Ezra maybe maybe so it could be the English player is moving across going to be bringing the, the big boys and did he get his farms back up did the English player rebuild, or is he just kind of in that, like, lamenting stage, where you're just, like, everything kind of fell apart, and you're just, like, you're still kind of just existing, you know? You're not, like, fully committed to it, but you're just... Is it that kind of a state? It could be. The Haggard Scout Legion doing a little bit of work, man. They, of course, are dragging down Spearmen with, like, two damage at a time, which is pretty hilarious. English men at arms, they have an opening to get in here, I think. They might be able to do something. I mean, there are 77 of those guys. The Sacred Sites have been taken, but far too late. So, looking at the, uh... I guess it's a backup win condition, but... HRE really, really should have walled those bad boys. But, you know, they won't make that mistake next time. So, HRE does not want to fight this English army. They want to work together if they can. English army looking for a way in, but there really is not an easy way in. Um, yeah, HRE, this is the best bet. But the thing is, guys, they don't know all this. The HRE player knows there's a little island here, but he doesn't know, like, what's there. He doesn't have the same info we do. So, it's easy for us to say you should do this or that. But it looks like that's what he's going to do anyway. So, he's heading up to the top side of the map with the uh, four trebuchets. Setting up some emplacements, and the English army just kind of marching around, not really doing a whole lot. In the meantime, we do have the Incan. You know, the blood feud has been rekindled, and, you know, Ezra is kind of tight on resources. Ezra only has 2,000 wood, um, and his gold is kind of low, too. So as he takes attrition, starts to get worn down a little bit, the Incan might be able to do some work up here and actually get through some of these. But this place has a lot to get through, guys. There are layers and layers of shit. The Red Palace, you also want to just put 15 dudes in the Red Palace and hang out and live your best life. The English player is killing Ezra's infrastructure here. Maybe to... I don't think he has any hope of getting Wonder again. No, the English player is basically just like in the pits right now. Yeah, he's he's not looking too comfortable. So we need to go with uh, Ezra's resources, yes. HRE pushing through, slowly getting through some of the walls here. Nice stuff. Going to be attacking from the north, which is hands down the weakest point. Although a lot of cannon towers. It looks like a lot of the infrastructure has been developed. And Ezra is just kind of spamming horsemen. Mangonels, very, very strong for Wonder defenses and all that sort of good stuff here. So the Incan is on his way in. He is getting through the walls. A landmark snipe is very viable here. Because, guys, all it's going to take is him getting up through here and taking out the Red Palace. And the Guild Hall is, is you know, one of his two remaining landmarks. Ezra has not been able to repair his main base landmarks. Hmm. Navy could actually be kind of a funny idea. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Yeah, you could go naval. Sail up the river, although I don't think it would be very efficient. There's a lot of cannon towers. I guess you could work your way through them with like some Chinese bow chads or something, but I don't know. It's a tricky one. HRE moving through the gate. Ezra going to be using the Reaganomics, trickling in some of the elite horsemen right here. The battle rages on as the defenders or the attackers continue. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Incan might landmark snipe him, guys. Ezra probably is going to want to consolidate all of his forces to stop the landmark snipe and just let everybody else kind of bang their heads against your static defenses. That's your best bet. Just have like a couple loose contingents of horsemen to like ride down trebuchets and all that. That would probably be the way to do it. Now the guild hall gonna be paying the ultimate troll toll, dude. This is actually dangerous. Should collect that stone before it goes. He didn't get the collection, I don't think. And now the uh, trebs are gonna start knocking down this next wall. A couple cannon towers right there, but the trebuchets of the Incan will probably uh, dispatch this very quickly. Six minutes left, but he is not that far off. Ezra knows this is a problem. You can see his mangonels and his springholds are all gathering here. He's got more mangoes and spearmen defending. The red palace is fully entrenched, and uh, yeah, he knows that this is a big threat. So the Incan continues pushing from the high ground. The English player. Oh, look at the Haggard transport ships. They're coming. What are they even doing with those? He's just going to go across the river. The old English Navy loading up their men at arms. I like that he's contributing. It's fun. He's, he's trying his best here. So the walls, were they rebuilt? I don't think so. Looks like they were not rebuilt. So there's just a cannon tower there. All those little uh, cannon towers taken down by the traction trebuchets of the Mongols. They're able to move up and uh, take down the defensive emplacements here which means that this is going to be an open run now. So probably he will now move his trebuchets, take this down. The horseman could blitz here, but yeah, Ezra knows. 
The boy has been watching. He has brought all of his mangonels and his spring all to different tools, and it looks like he's going to be standing at the ready to try and deal with this. English army moving. It looks like they are still loading up in the river. The Corsair Lords of England. Although, where are they going? It's like they're sailing downriver now. I'm not sure which direction they're trying to go. And they're just getting cannon towered. Yeah, so the English player is trying to help, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's a tough one for him. Ezra's defenses here are going to be pretty weak. HRE definitely needs to go pedal to the metal. It looks like the Holy Roman player might have had his artillery sniped by Ezra's horsemen. I have a feeling that's what happened because um, I'm not seeing any good quality artillery. So at this point, you might just need to go and eat the burning oil. You're going to run out of time pretty quickly. The English player decapping the sacred site. <laughs> Look at that. What a troll. I love it. So Ben getting in there and decapping the uh, sacred site from the Holy Romans. As the Incan is just sending scouts. I mean, he can send scouts all day. And one thing he's not going to run out of is, is food. And the scouts are pretty good at killing the buildings. And he gets resources as he kills these towers. Look at this, guys. The Incan is moving in. Ezra's army coming up to fight him. But a lot of these static defenses are being taken down. Oh, my God. Traction trebuchets on the way. Sacred site decaps by England. Oh my goodness. What are the English men at arms going to do? They should be using some siege engineering to try and get into the front door, but I don't know. Like the English player, like if he could, if the English player and, and team were able to take down Notre Dame, like England is still in the game. You definitely don't want to give up yet. I mean, the Incan has been just a paragon of, of persistence here as he, uh, he gets around the walls, but it's going to be encountering some stiff resistance now. It's not going to be free real estate anymore. This is Trebs, just slowly working. The Cavalry Corps is going to be pulling back. I would wager he's just going to be spamming out scouts. He's just straight up spamming scouts and torches, which is hilarious. So England is setting up its siege infrastructure. They now have a decent army here. They have two Bombards, three Mangonels. Could definitely just punch through this front wall here, but the time is running very short. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to get it. It, it really just comes down to the Incan. I think he's going to be the big deciding factor. Ezra gets his elite Spearman. Spearman can obviously hard counter all this army. Yeah, these are just Mongolian scouts, and there needs to be pressure from somewhere else. HRE being a little bit too relaxed, a little bit too relaxed here. So they're, uh, yeah, they're all they're all hanging out here, guys. But they need to get in there a little bit quicker. Yeah, the HRE's been very chill. Um, I guess they're waiting for Trebs, but you got, I think you just got to dive and just like start attritioning. Forcing Ezra to expend resources elsewhere is, is one of your best bets here. So we get Lancers coming in with the Spearmen, probably going to be enough. Um, looking at Ezra's forces and his bank, he currently still has 3,000, so it looks like he found some wood up on the top side here. So yeah, he's been able to kind of keep that wood flowing. That's what she said. And uh, yeah, looks like Ezra is going to be able to fold the Incan's backstab attempt, which is very, very important. HRE is moving up. Trebuchets are going to be getting close to the keep. Ezra is going to be rallying forces over here to defend now. So a couple of here Spearmen will be doing battle and uh, yeah, buying time where they can. Keep's going to get taken down. HRE should be able to make a little bit of progress, and then they could go here. And if HRE can get some trebs here, that's not going to be easy, though. There's a lot of stuff here. Incan still pouring in scouts, and the English army is now moving, but too little too late, probably. Although, if the English army goes for the landmark snipe, how much time do they have left? Only 2 minutes and 21 seconds. They're just too slow. Looking at Ezra, he's got 113 military. He still has a fair amount of villagers who are uh, working, probably actively repairing, and or building static defenses. Yeah, it looks like that's mostly the case. We've got 32 idle vills. I think the Red Keep has, the Red Palace has 15 in it, so that's going to turn it into the Machine Gun Palace, which is pretty insane for sure. HRE making some progress here, but it's too it's too slow. Um, I think Ezra is going to be able to pull out the W this game, which was insane. Uh, for any of you guys who've been watching the entire time, I don't, man, Ezra in the beginning was looking like he was straight up Palpatine on Death's Bed. Like, he got routed by the Incan and pushed back to the corner of the map, almost lost all of his landmarks but found a way to survive. And it just goes to show that in FFA, like even if you get karate chopped early, don't give up. You know, sometimes some of the people who look like powerhouses early will fall off. It's almost like playing a game of Magic Commander. Like I can't tell you how many Commander games, you know, one person rises up, they get super strong, the pod turns against them, takes them down. And then, you know, one of the weaker players is able to, or players who had a weaker start, is able to come back and get the W. Ezra with a huge flank, dude. Oh man, just good, good plays. He gets on top of the trebuchets, Forces those bad boys down and is going to be di diving and maybe getting the other trebs as well. It's totally worth the sacrifice of all these horsemen. English players coming in, you know, but it's not going to be enough. Ezra just falls back. He defends the red keep right now. We got one minute and six seconds, and it looks like Ezra is going to get the W. I believe Ezra was in the grand finals of last week. It was him or somebody else in a 1v1 in the final. So, yeah, he is, uh, he is a very, very strong player. So, battle continues. Elite Spearmen, men at arms, all doing their jams, looking at the Wonder Tracker. We got 51 seconds. And this is where you just sound the horn of Helm Hammerhand once more in the deep, and you just basically fall back. Mangonels, you now they get back over to the west. HRE tried, but a little bit slow to push. So they didn't quite get in there. And now the English and the, uh, the English and the uh, the Mongols are like inadvertently fighting each other. They're like, oh man, he accidentally just killed all those bombards. 
Not that it matters. They wouldn't have had enough time. Ezra would be able to defend it. He's got he's got spring ults. He's got eleven mangonels. He would just park them behind the walls and be able to shoot. So yeah, he played very very well here today. He played very very well. That was a that was a great scrap uh, scrap there. Looking forward to seeing him in the grand finals. I feel like the grand finals is going to be pretty loaded as we move on and uh, yeah, going to be a lot of good players. GG, the dark hunter Ezra has hunted the souls of his opponents. The dreaded French wonder. It is a very strong strategy in FFA. We'll see you guys in the grand finals. It is on. Yeah, the, the red keep kind of looks like Helm's Deep a little bit. Yeah, it sort of does. It sort of does, yeah. All right, guys. So now it is time for the Grand Finals. I believe all the pods were done. I think that was the longest lasting pod that we decided to jump in and watch for our second game. Looking at the statistics here. Some people like to see this, but we kind of saw how the game, you know, flowed there. We still have two other pods going. One has become a 1v1 and the other is currently in a wonder situation. Oh my God. Are you serious? There's still pods going? That's crazy. Well, it's okay. We'll get the uh, we'll get the pods together now. We have a little bit of time to gather everybody. Um, it looks like somebody just won Gunhound, so I think they're the pods might all be done. Let's see. There might be that one v one pod going. Everyone almost done. Just a few minutes. Sound good. Sounds good. That was great. That was great. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. Let's get in there. Let's do these grand finals, baby. I'm excited for this. So now we can just hang out, enjoy each other's company. Thank you all for joining tonight. I really appreciate it. Super fun hanging out. I see some new faces in here, some old familiar folks. Life is good. Can we vote for a crowd MVP to join the grand finals? <laughs> no, we probably don't want to do that. It's got to be, you got to be, have it be merit based, you know. Even if it's a seven man final, that's fine. Totally fine. Or five or whatever. It doesn't, I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah, that's a good time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious about what civs are going to be adding next. I wonder, I wonder if when we're going to be getting some of that. Company of Heroes just got a bounce patch. I can't wait till we get some uh, some content for Company of Heroes or, or replay features. Like, what is it with games these days? Just launching with just like such, just in such janky states and just being they're like they're like at their optimized state like six months after launch. Yeah, man, it's like just re give us re like replay features. I guess replay features aren't like super important. From my perspective, they are, but from like most people's, it's not a priority, which I completely understand. But I do think replay features are very important for keeping like promotional purposes, right? Like if you launch a game, if you launch a game with good replay features and it's a good game and it's, it's like, it's going to get covered. There's going to be more events, more people will want to play. I think it's like, that's very important. I think Nomad's pod is still uh, going. He died, but shift click his trebs before he died and they killed the wonder after his death. The Nomad's pod is still going, so it, there's you're not you're not saying it's like bugged or something, are you? Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Okay. So apparently there's like a sweaty one v one going down right now. Yeah, I think there's a sweaty one v one. Okay. So yeah, the we're getting the winners of the pods. So we're organizing it right now. So the lobby should be up soon, and we'll get going as soon as we can. We'll get going as soon as we can. Yeah, it'll be perfect. <laughs> the Rona greatly reduced everyone's standards and game developers included. Yeah, it's just like, man. Like, I'm really grateful for Relic making RTS games because I'm an RTS boomer. You know, I'm in my late 30s. Well, mid 30s, I suppose. And, uh, you know, RTS is my favorite genre. And if Relic wasn't making, like, Age of Empires and Company of Heroes, like, thankfully we have Total War, which I love. But um, it'd be, we'd be pretty starved for good RTS games. Um, so I'm really grateful to Relic on one hand and, you know, I've really played countless hours of games they made and enjoyed them. But um, yeah, like I just, it's just so, the features are so bare bones. No, that's a real thing. They tried to fix it so they'll stop moving after death, but now your military keeps queued up orders. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Hey, T-Rex push-ups. Holy shit, man. That is way too generous. Goddamn. Goddamn, Joe Rogan. Byzantine Civ with Greek fire, flamethrowers, and feudal. Historically accurate, perfectly balanced. Keep up the epic work. Dude. Oh man, that's way too generous. Thank you so much, dude. Holy shit. They meant to make uh Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. T-Rex, man. Thank you. Could a T-Rex yeah, a T-Rex really wouldn't be able to do push-ups, right? I feel like a T-Rex sometimes with my arthritic hands, I'm just like, when I go to do push-ups, it hurts pretty bad. Yeah. It's crazy how when you're like young, I remember like when you're in I was in my late teens, you used to like you never you don't perceive that that could ever happen, you know? <laughs> All right, looks like one of the really sweaty pods just finished. See, that's the that's the advantage that the dreaded Don Artie has. He he just like cleaned up his pod so quick. 
<laughs> that he had like an hour and a half to rest and just chill and get dinner. And then there's these guys who are in the sweat pods who just like, yeah, they had to, uh, they, they, they just are like all tired and worn out and oh man, <laughs> that's some funny stuff. Yeah, that's good. Same here, brother. Yeah, I feel you, T-Rex push-ups. I feel you. Life's good, though, man. Keep on rolling. I'm excited for Stormgate this year, too. Stormgate's going to be pretty fun, I think. I mean, you know, if it's an RTS with high production value, whatever. I don't. The aesthetic didn't call to me super hard. Kind of the cartoony look, but... I like a good RTS game is a good RTS game, so... There's few games that can really hang with Total Wars battles. Like, and not in terms of balance, but if you look at Total War battles, like, seeing the actual units fighting and, like, the immersion of it is really good. The way they look, how awesome, like the unique animations. One of the pods is down to two with an island with an island dweller. <laughs> Might be a bit. Are you serious? Just waiting on pod two now? Oh my god. I mean, I could play just a, a casual 1v1, but um... <laughs> Don already did his best Miley Cyrus and came in like a wrecking ball. Who is in that pod? We could We could just fast forward to it. If it's going to take that long, we could just suffer together. So whose pod is it, by the way? Let me know who's in it. Is it Nomad? It's probably Nomad. I think somebody mentioned it was his earlier. So let me know if it's his and I can jump in and we can take a look. I probably won't do the speed commentary for this one. I'll probably just fast forward and chat with you guys. Uh, you know, to keep the kind of rest my voice a little bit. But yeah, we'll go from there. Vikings in Japanese should be the next uh, DLC. That would be pretty cool. That would be very, very cool indeed. You guys want to see the suffering? One of them should sacred and win. The island game. The guy on the continent took control of the sacred, so it might end sooner. Okay. Danny Dragon and Nomad Mac. I think this is Nomad, right? Do we want to go for it? It's going to take a while to catch up to the live state of the game. That was the only thing. But I guess, you know, time is something we have. If it ends, we'll just jump out. We're not going to, like, finish it. Um, all right. So let's go here. See if we could find this game. Hey, darling, what's going on? Uh, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just got a little cold, so. Thanks. Well, if you use that healing thingy, the watch. Well, it's your favorite, so. Thank you, darling. I don't appreciate any of my gifts. The lady stopping by. It's it's over? Uh, Gunhound says that's it. We could also get turned talking about Star Trek Star Wars. That usually works. Yeah. We can, we can rant about the best Star Treks and how terrible most of the new ones are. Although, I heard Strange New Worlds was good. Okay, I'm not, I, I don't want to get on. The Game of Thrones rant, I think, is one of my favorites. Just letting the hate flow on season, the last season of Game of Thrones. Gunhound saying that's it. Uh, let me check the Discord to see if they actually did indeed finish. Pod 2 should be over soon. Okay, so I think there's like a sacred timer that's closing, so we're just going to hang out here for now. We are just going to hang out right now. Yes, yes. You could have a, I wonder, do they ever make a mod for this game where you could have more than eight players in a game? I know in like Warcraft 3, you can have like, apparently now you can have like up to 24 players. Yeah. <laughs> you great chain. Oh, I do. Trust me. I do. The wife and I always have like a duel whenever like the holidays or birthdays come around, like to see who can, you know, win the gift contest. No matter it is. No, it's still going. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. Ezra did win the game we just played in. Yeah. Oh, Inca, we were watching your game, dude. We were watching the whole one. Talk about Heroes 3. Well, if we're if we're gonna get be real boomers and talk about Heroes 3, I am I am an Inferno enjoyer. I just like to play the most haggard, shitty castle or town in Heroes. So I play Inferno. I just love using the uh Afrites and the uh and the demons. Yeah. As soon as I start talking about Heroes 3, all the all the Slavic folks in chat are just gonna rise and appear from nowhere. It's, it's pretty crazy how, like, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 was pretty popular in the States. Like, I had a fair amount of friends who played it as kids and whatnot. But when you look at, like, like uh, like Poland and, you know, over even further in Eastern Europe and, like, it is was big over there. It was like, a, it was like, it's still popping. There's, like, full-on channels, like Polish channels and uh, that cover it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, we saw the crazy. Yeah, we watched that game, uh, Inkin. Yeah. You you did great, dude. You were you had a really rough position in terms of resources, but you scrapped well. Yeah, see, Anna appears as soon as I talk about it. She heard it. She did. Well, we uh, so they they the guys who did the soundtrack for Heroes of Might and Magic Three they actually did a remaster on the uh, the soundtrack, and they made like a vinyl like uh, like 
you know, which was pretty cool and it had some unique art on it. So we, we managed to get our hands on that. Castle is overpowered though. You know, Castle, like the Archangels and like the Crossbowmen, like I just feel like they're so good. I like to play and it's just so funny using like the Imps and the Gogs and just all those like haggard creatures. Home 3 soundtrack's really good. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's amazing. All right, guys, I'm going to go grab uh, some water real quick. I'll be back in just a moment and we'll get this started in just a second. So uh, hang tight. All right, guys, I'm back. It's go time. It is go time. So let's see if the final pot is done. Uh, did you get landmark sniped? No, I wondered, and then it died, and then I quit. Went too long. <laughs> Dandy is about the sacred, and Siberius has no shot. Has next to no shot, so probably within 10, it's over. That was as of two minutes ago, or three minutes ago. So, yeah, okay. I think we're fine. It is time. <laughs> 1v1 Don Hardy with a one-minute head start. Who wins? Uh... I don't know. I'm I'm out of practice. I mean, I'm I'm my my skill level is conqueror one, so I'm yeah. He's a, I'm pretty sure he's a rock hard conk three player. So in any fair matchup, he would probably consistently beat me. Uh, with a one minute head start though, that's that's pretty damn big. I think I would be able to get it. I don't know. With just just do like an English all in. <laughs> one minute's a long time in this game. Yeah, it's a long time. All right, guys. So the pods are uh, on the way. I'm just. Staying up with the updates here. Let us see here. Sacred Timer on six minutes in pod two. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the play by play. Yeah, we got a nice play by play coming in there. All right. It's going to be good. Let's go time. You guys talking about Slavic cars now in chat? It's good times. Yeah, if you guys are enjoying the stream, do drop a like. We'll be moving on to our uh, grand finals here in the next 10 minutes. Well, probably like seven or eight minutes. I actually really like playing Stronghold in. Um, my favorite, my favorite faction to play in Hom Three is probably Inferno, followed up by Ooh, that's tough. I really like, um, yeah, Inferno, and Tower. Like, I like Tower a lot too. Like all the wizardry, it's really fun having like the Arc Mages and using like Solomir and getting Chain Lightning as a bounce spell is really good. Yeah, Don Artie is going to be a terror, I'm sure, in the finals. Yes. Well, the thing is, everyone in the finals is going to be pretty good. I mean, he'll probably be the highest level player individually, but yeah, they, it, there's going to be a lot of people, and you know, it, it'll be it'll be a strong pod for sure. I wanted to stream um, more more Heroes of Might Magic three, but my only thing was is every time I streamed it, I was getting so I would just play the game. I would just straight up play Heroes of Might Magic three, and the soundtrack of the game would be playing in the game, and I kept getting copyright slapped by the by the, I guess, the owners of the HOM3 soundtrack. I don't know how HOM3 people stream it without that happening. They must just play with the music off or, or something. Maybe just sound effects. It's a shame because that's like the best part about it is like the immersion of like the old soundtrack, you know? Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good, uh, Lado. Yeah, you're going to be setting up another event. Well, keep me posted. If I, uh, if I have some time, I would, I would certainly cast it. Certainly cast it. All right, pod two is over. It has ended. Let the hate flow. All right, let's see who's going to get it. It's go time, baby. Let's get into this game. It's going to be quite a bit of fun. I think BC did a video where he played uh, different players of ranks with a one to four minute head start. Oh, yeah? How did that video go? I'd be interested to hear about that. He's he's very strong, too. I know, playing Hom 3 without the soundtrack. Yeah, Rampart is really cool, too. The Elvish Archers. With the double shot, when they become... What are they upgrading to? Is it sharpshooters or something? Yeah, they, they're really good. 
They're really good in Heroes 3. All right, guys, the finals lobby is uh, f finalized. So we're going to be starting in just a minute. Those players literally playing like a two and a half hour, just, just Royal Rumble, dude. Just like no mercy. That's pretty rough. The grand finals, I wonder how long it'll go. I guess it depends on the mega random map. Like the map dictates a lot of the pacing. If it's more open, like Thunderdome style, then it can go pretty quick. It can go pretty quick for sure. That's, that's pretty crazy. Ukraine train, that's crazy. <laughs> the week two upgraded elves, yes. 100%, they're terrifying. Yeah, those 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 do quite a bit of work. What else on Rampart's really good? The um the dwarves are kind of haggard on Rampart. The centaurs they have like one of the best tier one units in the game. The, the upgraded centaurs are really good. Have you ever played Battle for Middle Earth? Yeah, I played it when I was a kid a long time ago. I never got like super. I mean, I got pretty into it, but like I was playing that in eighth grade, so that would have been two thousand. Uh, God, what year would that have been? Two thousand one or two thousand two? Whenever it came out, I suppose. And um. Yeah, well, and then Warcraft 3 really took over my 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 RTS focus. Like Warcraft 3, Diablo 2, all that kind of stuff. Those were really the jams. Those were really the jams. Okay, let's see if we're having any issues with the lobby or anything. Nanny Ori is on the way. It's time. Yes, it is. Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. Thank you. What are the what are the what are the elves called? The upgraded ones? Sharpshooter? No, high elves. Is it yeah, I think they're just high Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. We were just talking about that. Thank you, darling. Okay, perfect. Okay, no issues here. All my settings are good. Stream's looking safe. We're in good shape. What are some RTS games? By the way, um, there was some game that somebody was talking about. Oh god, it's like it's like Age of Age of it's Age of something. Age of Wonders, I think is what it was. Like Age of Wonders 4 or a new one of Wonders 2, is it? There's a new one coming out. I never played the other Age of Wonders games. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out in May, May 2nd. Is that something that you guys would be interested in watching? I never, I never played it, the previous game. So I know nothing about it. I'd have to be, I'd have to be learning it. But um, yeah, I would, somebody, I've been recommended that by a couple people. Is there a multiplayer component to it? Hey, you're happy to get some rest. Man, it's 3, 3.50 AM, where are you? I, are you in Europe, you're happy? I always thought you were here in the States. I guess you'd be East Coast. No, East Coast would be wouldn't be that much. Yeah. Age of Wonders 4 is what it is, right? Yeah. Hunters in a game. Looks like the lobby hasn't started yet. Age of Wonders or Age of Mythology or Age of Wonders? I'm not sure. No, Age of Mythology is the the the, the Age of Empires one. Yeah. It's too slow? Is it like how does it work? It's not like real time or Yeah, I've never I've never done it. Oh, you're in Scotland. Oh, I didn't know that. Right on, man. Right on. The original Age of Wonders was amazing. I would love to see it again. Yeah, we'll we'll give it a look when it when it comes around. Where are you guys all from, by the way? Let us know in chat. Where are you guys hail from? What realm do you call home? I would imagine mostly probably US based right now since it's so damn late, but you would love Age of Wonders 4 if you like Home 3. Yeah, yeah, I love Home 3. Home 3 is one of my all-time faves. We'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Keith, you got knocked out quick in round one today. Hey, it happens all the time. And you had to restart the game. No worries. No worries. We'll get it going. There's some weird spawn. Are we Are we doing, a, by the way, are we doing a special map tonight? Is it like a one of our community-made maps, or is it uh, just a mega random gunhound? It's a four times with XCOM-like combat. Got it. Okay. Does Age, of, uh, does Age of Wonders have any sort of PvP, though? Like, could you load in with friends and have, like, uh, like have a big map? Kind of battle, kind of like you could in like uh, Civ Five, for example. All right, so we got some folks: Colorado, Italy, Oklahoma, Utah, UK. Wow, we got some. We actually have a fair amount of folks who are uh, outside of the states here. Denmark, dude, just just up, just balls deep at like 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. or whatever it is. <laughs> Germany as well. Yeah, look at you guys, man. Michigan, yeah, seeing a lot of the states. Just mega random tonight. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll showcase them whenever we can. Yeah, whenever we can. Someone, I like how T-Rex push-ups is like, I'm from Jurassic Park. Laugh, laughs an Australian. Are, are you Australian, Smeagol? Let me see. Time is in Australia right now. Australia. Time. Oh, man, it's like, this is great for you if, you're, if you are Australian. Yeah, it's like, it's like 2 p.m. Worked out good for you, my friend. Worked out good. 
You know, I always wondered about Australia. What is the food like there? Is there, is there like a is there like a big food culture? Uh, that's like something I've ne I don't think I've ever like heard about that. Yeah, I always wondered what kind of what kind of food uh, is enjoyed out in that part of the world. Bronzodia, Texas, Arkansas. Yeah, all right, right on, guys. Wisconsin, Ottawa, Canada, Colorado, and Peru. Ooh, very cool. So as soon as we see the lobby fire off, guys, we're going to be jumping in. No more games. Alex says, Florida, go Gators. I remember going to Florida when I was a kid. The humidity there was pretty brutal, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of a lot of cool stuff out there. Let's see. Age of Mythology was a really good game. Yeah, never played that one. I heard it was quite fun. Sounds good, Brian. Where you headed? I'm going to go party. Yes. I'm taking Rue with you? No. Yeah. You're leaving me with the Chihuahua. Coffee, all about the coffee. You're saying that's that's the big Australian thing, yeah? Yeah, it's a coffee culture. Oh, I love coffee. Sadly, when I drink coffee, it makes my uh, makes my hands hurt though. I have I have a form of arthritis that you get when you're young, and it just like aggravates it. Yeah, I still drink it, but it's like I just wish it didn't. All right, so looking to see if the lobby started. Just scrolling through the old friends list. Should be very very soon. Sorry for the delay, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Yep, looks like it's launching right now. All right, game's launching. Perfect. And uh, we can observe the match. Pod 2 is an unholy nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. Age of Mythology. Uh, re yeah, aren't they remastering it? Anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with tonight's grand finals. It is going to be Nandi Ori on the French. Dark Hunter Ezra on the French. Jesus on the Chinese. Don Artie on the dreaded English. Taha on the Chinese. Ophidius on the Rus, Quill on the Ottoman Empire, and Dandy Dragon on the French. I can assure you guys, there is going to be some very, very obnoxious wonder play in this game. <laughs> With triple French, there is going to be some guild halls banking some of that sweet, sweet stone, and it's going to be getting down and dirty. Yeah, it's going to be good. So we got a fun fact from chat. The McCafe was started down here in Melbourne, not sure. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, uh, dude, I, I, at my old job... When I used to work as an athletic director, I, I used to just drink pots of coffee like every single day. It was it was insane. We used to drink so much. Oh no, a delay. It's just a minute. We'll be in in a second. Pod 2 is terrible. I take some responsibility, says Nomad. You're not in this game, are you, Nomad? No. So it must have been pretty rough. I used to get the same thing with the hands and the caffeine. All right. That's good to know, T-Rex push-ups. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we got 43 seconds. 41 seconds, the countdown of the gods. Don Hardy's English, obviously, very scary in late game. China, an incredibly powerful late game. Uh, Taha is a, a very good Chinese player, very macro focused. Um, Jesus, can't remember when I saw Jesus last. The name's very familiar. I've obviously seen his games before, but Jesus is going to be coming in. Nani Yori, FFA veteran, makes some of our maps in the community, which is awesome. We just saw Ezra playing. Obviously, I think French is a very safe pick for, I, I would say they're one of the higher win rate sieves in, uh, in the old FFA. It'd be kind of cool if we track the data of that to see like which ships have the best win rates. Hmm. Have you played any AOE too? Yeah, when I was a kid, I played a hell of a lot of that. I remember, I remember going onto the AOL dial-up launcher back in the '90s and playing with um and playing Warcraft Two: Tides of Darkness like on the launcher. Holy shit! If if Smeagol was here, he would have just a full heart on for this area. Look at this, like this mountain range with like a little mountain pass. It's like, you're gonna have like Saruman like chanting and smoke is gonna be, you know, and, or excuse me, and snow is gonna be crashing down on you here. Don already immediately scouts it. So he does have a villager here. I'm not sure what he's gonna be doing that. We'll have to see. So up to the Northwest, we do have Don already setting up his TC. He's got two villagers there. Down to the Southwest, we do have I Jesus, And uh, he's got a nice, he's got a like, oh, look at that. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. He has got Shoreland Fish right next to his TC. That is going to be Value City. Up to the north side of the map, we got Nani Yori. Not a bad spot. You know, you got a corner of the map to yourself. Um, doesn't look like there's, like, natural food nearby. You're going to have to go hunting for some sheep, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you do what you can. Over to the east side, we do see Taha. Taha is going to be our Chinese enjoyer. And, uh, yeah, not bad. He's got this. He's got stone for the second TC. Gold's a little bit far away, but not too bad. Overall, should be totally fine. So where's Smeagol? He's dead. Smeagol, Smeagol usually makes it to the Grand Finals, but you know, can't win every week. So you got to take your fat L sometimes. It's good. You know, it keeps you determined. So a random Chinese village being built here. 
uh, which probably will get torched at some point. And the TC, obviously going to be going for shoreline fishing, so this is going to be nice. River fishing will also be substantial. Don Artie, I think, is pretty close to it, but his TC, you know, he's got his two villagers building it. Um, the Chinese, the Chinese in, in this format, quite good. The fact that they can build things faster is really strong. They get their TC up faster, and uh, yeah, in general, China is just a freakishly strong FFA sip. They don't mess around. Somebody in chat, Keith saying I would use dial-up for Counter-Strike or go to a land center. Yeah, oh man, I remember land events back in the day. I could go on a rant about that, but we'll try and focus on the game here. Dark Hunter Ezra, the winner of the pre one of the pods we watched earlier, is uh, down on the southeast side of the map. Don Artie setting up a nice little, uh, nice little mining, uh, you know, little mill action here. It also lets him keep kind of tabs on the high ground to see if anybody's trying to smeagle their way up into the hills here. Dude, this spot, holy shit, look at this. Like a wonder up here. I don't know. I think you might be able to fit one. Um, although, is there? Yeah, this is just. This could be the most unholy rat's nest in the corner, and I feel as if Ezra is going to do his jams here. Now it looks like the Roos, no, this is the Ottomans. So the Ottomans are going to be sitting up in the middle, already getting quite a bit of wood actually. So starting on the wood very quickly. Over to the far east, we see the Chinese. And where the hell did the Roos go? Um, we see the French, we see the English, and the Roos with a very late town center. Oh my God, very late. Two villagers, uh, it took Mophidius quite some time to set up. He probably just kept running into other people's bases wherever he wanted to go. So he's going to be behind. I mean, the other civs, the Chinese player already is rocking eight villagers. And he's still sitting on his two villagers here and the TC is halfway done. So Mophidius is going to be massively behind. Massively. Um, Nanny Ori is going to spot this. Going for English Farmville early, which isn't a bad idea. If you're up in a corner, you're safe, you're on your own. You see that your neighbor is really, really suffering and is really, really behind. You know, you can, you can treat yourself for sure. You can treat yourself indeed. So looking at Don Artie's opening, looks like he's got four villagers on food. No river action yet. He does also have another villager down here. Looking over at Jesus. Jesus is off to a really good start. Like Jesus has a wonderful corner position with a, a good natural choke point here for a wonder if he wants to. He's got shoreline fish in droves, which has an extremely high gather rate. He has a natural mining camp right next to his base. Well, a natural gold with the mining camp, which he can supervise with the Imperial official. I think of all the players, Jesus probably has the best start. <clears throat> I think Jesus is, is definitely cackling. Yeah, he's he has the best start of everybody. But again, that's not going to determine everything. He can still be 2v1. Um, over here, the Ottomans, not bad. Good river economy early. So they set up next to the river. They knew that that was there. That's why they were starting on the, uh, the early lumber before the TC was even finished. So slightly delayed TC, but getting that sweet, sweet um, fishing is going to be quite massive indeed. Indeed. Down on the south side, it looks like the French... They're just enjoying themselves. Dark Hunter Ezra going to be getting a river-based economy as well. So if you're near the river and you have access to it, it's a big mistake not to play it, probably. Uh, although I suppose civs like English could probably get away with not caring about it just with their farms and maybe going like a fast 2TC into White Tower. That's some delicious tea. But that could indeed be a very, very strong play. Up to the north side, we do have Nani Yori. Nani Yori with only two farms right now, but a nice safe position. So Nani Yori is going to be away from the hardships of the world. Roos are now just starting to produce villagers, and I believe they got their first scout. No. Man, the Roos are going to be hurting so bad, guys. Like, all the sheep just got jacked by Don Hardy. <laughs> so Don Hardy just rolls over all dirty and just takes all the sheep from nearby um, Mophidius' base. So he is just going to be in the pits of hell. Because soon he's going to run out of food. Um, he's got one villager on food. He, I guess he does have some fishing down here. So the fishing economy might be his salvation, but we'll have to see. Have the Ottomans won any of these tournaments? Yeah, I believe so. I, I, they've won in the 2v2 variants, the, the Team FFA, and I think I recall them winning once in 1v1. I'm not sure about 1v1. Definitely we've seen Ottomans do well in team games too. Ottomans are a strong civ in FFA if you can establish trade. They have some of the best trade in the game with Seagate Castle. Ottomans can blow you out of the water with late game trade gold. Like, it's just fast, it's furious. You can use your Vizier point to augment it. Um, let's see if we could actually take a look here. So it is gonna be Quill. And it is going to be the uh, trade bags. So yeah, increases the amount of gold they collect by 40%. And they also move faster with the Seagate Castle. So Ottomans, I think, are super viable Civ. They can be aggressive and feudal. They can play, you know, Castle or Fast Castle or Duke TC, whatever. I mean, they have a bunch of different play styles in trade. Ottomans are pretty rad Civ. One that I'm actually very bad at, but yeah, very fun times to play. So down to the bottom, Jesus is going for the boar. Wow, going for an early boar here. So Jesus is going to be shanking that boar down. Looks like the Chinese villagers are able to take the beast down. And that's going to be a nice surplus of food they're going to be getting in tandem with the uh, shoreline fishing that they do have. Down here, Dark Hunter Ezra just doing his thing, claiming the old river. And uh, this basically has 
Uh, this basically just has wonder written all over it. Like, there's gonna be a wonder somewhere. Looks like Quill's gonna be exploring, so Quill is our Ottoman player. No crazy aggression as of yet. Obviously, it's a little bit early for aggression. I do feel like the Roost player is gonna suffer bad. Like, Don Artie, uh, we saw, he, he comes for blood. In the previous games we saw, he gets pretty aggressive pretty quickly, so... I would wager he maybe will come over and finish off the Roost if he knows he's there. Let's take a look at scouting, see if he knows he's there. Most likely does. Uh, it looks like he has scouted that general area, or at least rode near it. Yeah, he stole the sheep from that area, so I'm pretty sure he's privy to what's going on down there. I think he is aware. So we do see the Lumber Camp coming down. Lumber Camp going to be giving uh, them the option for the 2TC, probably. I wouldn't be surprised to see the uh, stone outcropping being taken here. China, of course, loves to go song 2TC. I don't know why you wouldn't. It's very, very good. Over on the far side, our other Chinese player, this is Taha. Taha usually goes very, very macro heavy. And uh, two villagers on wood far away from the base. A lot of food. Has not gone up to feudal yet. So Jesus is just very far ahead. Um, Jesus has been feudal for quite some time. And obviously nowhere near close to the castle yet. But yeah, just like we talked about, the two TCs could be coming out. There's no reason not to go super greed and just go for the goodies here. So yeah, should be good. Looking here at the old roosts, poor guys. Like their entire economy is basically banked on these fishing boats down here. And they're surrounded by Naniori's English. Naniori going to be going School of Cavalry. For some reason, I thought Naniori was English when I looked up here. Yeah, because I kept saying English Farm Bill, but no, it's French Farm Bill, which isn't as good. English farmers, uh, they know how to get that wheat. That is for sure. But School of Cav could be some early aggression against the Roos. Wouldn't be a bad idea to try and you know push them out to make sure that you have the corner all to yourself. You don't want anybody up there with you. So you can entrench it and build a guild hall and just kind of do your thing. Just kind of do your thing. Over on the east side of things, China, growing in power. I'm probably going to be going feudal here in a second. Let's take a look at their resources. Uh, they have more than enough to go feudal. It looks like they've been banking. Are they going to try some weird thing where they build like both landmarks at once? Or I don't, I don't know. It seems a little bit strange. But nonetheless, we will see. Yeah, looks like they're going to age up now. So we do see the Imperial Academy. And obviously, he's going to be going Song Dynasty pretty quick. He's keeping a lot of villagers on food, or is he going to pull them to build? Yeah, he's still got food and gold going, which usually is indicative of a uh, Song Dynasty. Jesus, in the meantime, what is he up to? Jesus down here. Uh, does he have Song Dynasty? Looking at him. Uh, we do see the Imperial Academy. We do not see the Barbecue of the Sun. So it looks like he's going to be doing 2TC. Spending a little bit of wood to secure the river first. So he's just going to be setting up here to make sure that nobody, like the dreaded Don Artie, pushes across the river. So we are going to be seeing the 2TC English, which seems to be very meta these days. I've been seeing it in 1v1. Uh, with the changes to the White Tower, making it able to produce any unit at 100% speed, it, you don't... You can go 2TC and then White Tower for the defensive capabilities and the utility you get from producing those units is often just straight up better than the King's Palace in my opinion. King's Palace is good, but you know, just my own humble opinion. Up on the north side, French just farm billing. They're not going to be super jacked. Like when you have to invest in early farms like that, it's usually a little bit rough, but the School of Cavalry is out, so we could see some French Knights. The Roos are kind of getting back on their feet a little bit. Um, for Roos, you have to go with the Golden Gate and you have to go for 2TC, maybe even 3TC. You gotta just go pure greed. Yeah, it's pretty cool how the TC has like a little gate over the cliff so the villagers just, just fall to their doom, yeah. That's pretty ridiculous here. Second TC coming up for the Chinese. Song Dynasty probably on the way here for yellow. Dark Hunter Ezra just spreading out across the bottom side of the map as we approach the 10 minute mark. And the Ottomans with a very, very nice river economy. You see the Sultani trade network. Uh, is he gonna be doing any actual trading or just kind of garrisoning for the gold at the moment? Looks like it's gonna be that. Setting up another TC in the north, and we do have a trade post here, so the Ottomans could do a lot. They could they could go down here and trade up to the center and probably get like great, great gold. But you know, having Ezra to the south of you is no no easy opponent. It's gonna be a hard fight. Uh, you know, attrition and back and forth action. Gotta be careful. So all is calm in the front. All is calm on the front here. Two TCs are up. Supervisor supervising the mills. If you guys are a little bit newer to the game, a big aspect of China is using your imperial officials to supervise buildings and tech and all that stuff making China, I think, one of the harder civs in the game to actually play. Now, are we going to see another TC coming down here? Most likely, yes. Uh, we see a lot of stone being gathered. Do we see Song Dynasty before the second TC? I don't think so. Supervisor going to be giving a massive surplus of stone. And the second TC should be coming up here. He probably should have just built it next to that deer camp or instead of the mill here just to save the resources. But it's honestly not that big of a deal. Looks like they're going to be moving over there and uh, going castle now. He does have 600. He has 600 stone banked. And like no wood or a little bit of wood. I guess he's got 322, but yeah, with 600 stone in the bank, you could do a lot. You could definitely build, uh, not two TCs, but pretty close. Ever since the nerf to town centers, making them cost a little bit more. Over on the west side of the map, English just farm billing it up. Or not farm billing, but ecoing up with the two TCs, I should say. Mophidius finally reaches the feudal age and the Roos are going to be splitting up their landmarks, which is smart. 
I think that if you're in the position of this Roost player where you're just behind everybody, he obviously doesn't know this, but he did do a nice play using the uh, Kremlin to take down the boar with some villagers, it looks like. I'm not sure if he did that, but um, yeah, he gets the boar, he gets the bounty, and now like even if somebody just steamrolls his base, which is very likely, he's going to have an opportunity to fall back to a secondary base. He might be able to survive. You know, there's going to be a couple other options that he does have on, on the table here. So right, the Ottoman's looking. Hmm. Delicious tea. Thank you to the lovely wife for that. Double town center. So we got two of those. Looking pretty normal. No military aggression yet. No feudal savagery. Nobody's going to be going ham in the feudal age here. Looks like Don Artie might be going for another TC. With the way he's gathering, he's got 22 on wood. Either that or he's just trying to flood the river with boats. Oh, Don Artie lands across the river. Look at that. And he actually takes out all of the uh, deer camps here. So he... Look at that! He lands, he makes a dock, he fills it up with longbows in a proxy barracks, which, is he gonna go and try and take down Jesus here? That ain't gonna go well. Your boy Jesus is castle He's got a Barbican coming up to fend this off, and he could easily just make a nest of bees, and that would be able to fend off the longbows pretty easily. But Don already with an interesting proxy here. So he goes across the river, and he sets up the old uh, barracks and also has an outpost. Perhaps a precursor to his invasion is what I may be thinking here, but the Chinese... Player Cheezus here is very, very strong. He is looking jacked. In the meantime, Dark Hunter Ezra, he's able to find, uh, in exploring his own rat's nest behind his base, he does found, find the mountain gremlins, and he does take down that, which is going to be giving him full agency over the mountains. We have wooden palisades, so not stone walls being spammed that early. Ottomans, no military aggression yet, just continuing to macro. Everybody's basically playing greed, which is, you know, pretty normal in FFA. Sometimes you can get punished for it, like in the last game we had Lado kind of get punished for it. But typically, you can get away with it, and that is the way to play a lot of the time. Obviously, ample scouting will often solve that problem. So this is pretty wild. Look at this. Don Hardy is going to be getting a little bit crunk here, guys. He's setting up double barracks. Uh, is he Castle Age is the question. Don Hardy is uh, still feudal, and he's actually doing a little bit of ramp sign, which could set him behind. Now, this normally is a good play, taking out you know somebody here who's your neighbor, and they also happen to be the, the Chinese, so they're very scary late game. But the fact that he's Castle Age, he can simply supervise the barracks, mass produced palace guard and should be able to easily, like Jesus, if he has good control, should be able to easily stop this push. This push is not that jacked. I mean, Don Artie's not all in by any means, but this is not gonna go well for him, I don't think. Like the palace guard are gonna be out in numbers. He should be supervising that right now, supervising the barracks. And it looks like palace guard are lined up and ready to party. Don Artie gonna start shooting at the men at arms here. And you know, the English, or excuse me, the Chinese palace guard, I do not believe have the same armor values as some of the other civs. And now we are going to be seeing Jesus coming out with his clock tower nest of bees. So they're on their way. And uh, I think the English are probably going to just withdraw from this. They have to know this isn't going to go well. China is just like pretty sauced over here. Well, they, have, they don't have like an amazing food eco, but they still have the shoreline fish for now. So that's going to help. And it looks like Don Artie is going to be pulling back. It's pretty much the only aggression of the game. So we don't need to watch too much else. I'm not seeing any other fights. So this is really the main combat that we have here. Now he does drag the palace guard down, but the Nest of Bees gets a nice shot there, but he does fan out at the last second. Looks like a little bit of a dive on the Nest of Bees. It could have been a blunder by China to move out of the base like this. Uh, they might lose the Nest of Bees, but the Chinese player should definitely pull some villagers and keep that Nest of Bees alive. Because that thing could be the difference between him dying and, and living, right? But the palace guard chopping away. More palace guard are on the way out. And is there going to be any villagers to come and repair this Nest of Bees? Otherwise, Don Artie's going to get it, and that's going to be a pretty big blunder, because that obviously is your main holding tool against Longbow Spam. Yeah, looks like he's going for it. Um, Don Artie probably going to be going castle behind this, although no, he's really all in on this. Yeah, so it looks like he's straight up going to try and kill the Chinese in feudal here. And, you know, he might be used to playing 1v1s in which a timing like this would be good, but Jesus had the nomad advantage of Chinese building faster and shoreline fish next to his main TC. So his normal timing probably won't work. And it looks like he maybe is gonna pull back across the river and flee the scene and just macro, which I think would be the uh, smart decision for sure. So Chinese player on the other side, just cackling. And yeah, I've seen Taha play many times or a couple times in the past few weeks. And he usually will just macro super hard. We're gonna be seeing the granary set up soon, like the triple granary with farms surrounding it. And then that's when China just booms like super hard. Don Artie getting pushed out of the invasion here. So you can see his barracks and all these different tools here are going to be shut down. Nest the Beast still managed to stay alive. No repairs on it, but now is it going to go down? It's got 20 HP. It's being shot by that arrow, and it looks like it's going to be retreated here. Palace Guard fully cleaning this up. And probably going to be seeing uh, a push to Castle now. With the White Tower, White Tower right here is going to be super necessary. Otherwise, China could probably blitz right now. China could do Palace Guard raiding. Like, if we were in a really sweaty, high-level 1v1 game, the Chinese player would be swarming Palace Guard into your base right now, and you would just they would just be all over your farms, and your longbows wouldn't be able to kill them quick enough because they're too fast. Um, so yeah, could be a little bit tricky. Could be a little bit tricky indeed. 
Over to the east side of things, we do see the Imperial Academy. Giving that nice taxation. So it uh, basically all the buildings nearby here are going to be generating additional tax. And the battle does continue on here as the Chinese clean up the palace guard. Any aggression from Ezra does not look like it. Ezra is playing the true French manner. Wow, look at that. So he lumberjack through and hides his guild hall in the back of this mountain pass. Channel channeling his inner Smeagol. Certainly quite good indeed. Palace guard butchering through the last of the battering rams. And the English proxy is going to be in a little bit of trouble. We're going to be seeing a white tower here very soon. It looks like Don already does have enough. And the white tower is going to be coming up in the base. Which will pretty much thwart the Chinese aggression. Now, one big advantage that Don already has over the Chinese players is that he probably already has an established farm economy with what I would imagine wheelbarrow. Um, no horticulture yet, but he's going to be ahead of the Chinese in the food department, so China could run out of steam in that regard. Now, he needs to get this White Tower up. China is actually going to be getting aggressive here. They're coming in. White Tower is going to probably finish in time. Don already pulls all these villagers, knowing that this is the danger zone, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it is going to pop up right now. There it goes. It finishes. We see all the villagers running into shelter as the defense should be adequate now. But what Cheezus should do is Cheezus should just start spamming Palace Guard onto all the farms, just like this. This is the right play. Start going after the villagers, because you're not going to beat... Well, China can beat England late game. They're one of the few civs that can actually do okay in that regard. Crossbows are being spammed out, so crossbows at rapid fire production will be very, very good. Palace Guard are getting into some of the villagers. Farmers are idled. And this is very strong. I mean, the Chinese with triple nest the bees. Oh my God, Don Hardy's villagers getting popped as well. Jesus is coming in, trying to finish this one, ladies and gentlemen. He's going for the kill. Which again, taking out a really strong player like Don Artie, who's super, super high level early, would be really big in terms of increasing your chances of winning the game here. The White Tower might be able to stabilize it. Looks like crossbows popping out in numbers. We'll be able to probably chase down the Palace Guard, looking at Don Artie's eco. He's down to 66. Comparatively to the Chinese, they're sitting at 80, so the eco of the Chinese is going to be a little bit better. But it looks like he will stabilize at the end of the day. Um, but the Nest of Bees could easily just pop a bunch of villagers if he's not careful. Overall, that is quite scary. So Ezra down in the bottom corner. He does have his uh, his old guild hall coming down. Up to the northwest. The Ottomans, wow, holy shit. The Ottomans are getting super aggressive. A massive proxy infrastructure coming down here. Securing some stone. And it looks like he's going to be going for the Chinese. Yeah, so the Ottomans with a big war machine. It's about to be uh, going. That is for damn sure. Man. So Palace Guard are fully cleaned up. Don Artie's going to be able to get his macro going once again. Looking at his bank. Uh, what kind of damage? Ooh, he's, he's hurting right now. If China really goes pedal to the metal, makes trebuchets and continues his aggression, they, they would probably be able to finish... Uh, they might be able to finish the job. It's a very strong opponent, but yeah, I would definitely not take the pedal off. Because if you let the English rebuild and get their farms going and get late game Imperial, they're probably going to come and get you. Hmm. So over here, the Ottomans sieging in. China was not Castle Age yet. And it looks like the Ottomans got in and butchered a ton of villagers during the building of that landmark. We see Zhugnu coming out, and it looks like Taha might be in danger. Quill might be coming in with the steel chair, which would be really nice, because then Quill could just take this corner, build his Imperial Age landmark in the corner, and be very, very durable. Like, incredibly tough to kill, for sure. So looking across here, we do see Springholds coming out to counter the Nest of Bees, and China just kind of chilling out. Now, China's going to be getting its, its sustained food going now. So Cheez is going to be getting the granary economies, uh, as far as landmark or imperial age goes, this cheese is close to it. He's a little bit hurting on gold, but food is certainly in no short abundance for him. But it seems as if the Ottoman Empire has taken down the uh, Chinese. The Chinese are going to be trying to panic build a keep here, which will not save them. Uh, the villagers will get absolutely massacred while they're trying to build it. There's too many Ottomans around. Looking at the landmarks for the Chinese, we have the main TC, which I believe is over here. We have the astronomical clock tower, the Imperial Academy and the barbecue of the sun. And I think those are pretty much all the landmarks. So the Ottomans are, are going for the kill. You can tell they're, they're going after all the landmarks. They want blood and uh, that would be pretty crazy. Really, really powerful position for our Chinese player in the corner. And the power building keeps coming up. Will the Ottomans react to this? This could be one thing that it won't save them fully, but it'll buy them time. It, it's gonna make it take quite a bit longer for the Ottomans to uh, finish them off. But that's a lot of Chinese villagers. The Ottomans do react relatively quickly, but it looks like that keeps gonna go up. A handful of villagers gonna get butchered as well here, but they do end up garrisoning. And uh, the clock tower is down for the count. Only a couple landmarks left. You have the town center and the barbecue of the sun as the Ottomans are just streaming units into the base. Just absolute war machine on full tilt here. Just getting in there, trying to push into the base. So Ottoman army though, still very heavily armored. So many gold intensive units that are just probably upgraded. No, no upgrades yet, but they're on the way. Over here, the conflict between Don Hardy and the Chinese. It looks like there is going to be more aggression. We got 20 palace guard, three nest of bees. Do we have any trebuchets? Well, it looks like he's going for the Ramstein, mixing in some spears as well. Up on the top side, we have another fight. We have Mophidius battling against Nani Yori. And wow, the Rus actually managed to kind of get back in this game a little bit. 
Looks like they're having some success. So you can see Mofidius able to just bush her through that English army. Wow. Or the French army, excuse me. And the French are going to be panic building a keep, which is going to buy them time for sure. But that's still a very armored, like heavily armored army. The Rus could probably just circumvent the keep, get around the back of the base and just start taking down villagers and uh, take over this fight. Rus are also bringing in some Ramstein. This keep is going to fall and so too will the villagers that are in it. So it looks like Nanny Yori is going to be in serious danger. So the Rus underdog doing some great work and the Rus player also taking over the middle of the map a little bit. So he's going to be securing a lot of resources for himself. His position normally would have been dangerous because Don Artie was like potentially going to sandwich him with Orange. But now that Don Artie's busy fighting the, uh, the Chinese down here, it's going to be a different story. Rams are on his main TC and we're going to see if he can hold here, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be a very tight hold. Those Rams are not messing about. Palace Guard going to be able to get in and some of the uh, Spring Alts do overextend and are going to get torched. So one goes down here and the other one's going to get attacked as well. But yeah, the pressure from the Chinese is on, ladies and gentlemen, as the Ottomans have pretty much won this fight. I, I think it's only a matter of time before they get in there. The Ottoman war machine just pumping as this keep is getting set up here. We do have battering rams coming in, the siege speed, the greased, uh, the greased axles, and uh, all the fun times. So the Chinese push back again, running away from the English defenders, but did the English take any casualties in that fight? They lost some eco. They're down to 63. So it looks like the English did lose maybe like 10 villagers during that fight. Ottomans were all rumbling. Naniori in big danger. Naniori is, uh, is, is Ralph from The Simpsons. He is in some serious danger right now. As the big, thick Roost Knights with the Boyar's Fortitude getting extra jacked, turning into Kisselvites here, are going to be able to ride up to the north and cause some havoc. So this is a very violent game, but I can't help but think Ezra is going to be the cackling villain in the corner because, like, he's not. nobody's attacking Ezra, really. Um, Blue is the Dandy Dragon. Yeah, what is he doing? He's got the Red Palace. He's got his guild hall. I love how just the two gremlins in the mountains, the two French players are trying to occupy the mountains. So Dandy Dragon, yeah. So Dandy Dragon is the dark lord of Netflix and chill. He usually just sits semi-AFK for most of the game and trades and then builds a wonder and wins in the fourth quarter <laughs> from what I've seen. So look at this. Dandy Dragon's trading with the dock of the Roos. That's so funny. And the Roos player doesn't even notice it. Wow, that's pretty good. Nandi Ori looks to be in big danger though, big danger. I mean, a reasonably sized military, but the Roos player seems to have gotten the upper hand. Killing the TC, taking a lot of villagers down, and uh, China still wants this uh, wants this battle. He still wants it. She's just going to be moving up here. Don already chilling at the White Tower, but the English are macroing well. Do they have horticulture yet? They do. You get any Castle Age, another town center coming up to try and keep, uh, keep pace. Some people notice with high-level players is when they take some bad fights and they're on the defense, they'll just build more TCs and you know, try and macro back up to keep up if they can. China getting that sweet, sweet granary economy. So yeah, all the farms are finally coming to fruition here. Dark Hunter Ezra just walling off his empire here. He, yeah, 43 trade is bad, but I mean, it's better than nothing. If you don't have any other gold sources, like, yeah, I'll take it, right? Uh, Stone Walls, they are up. Ezra has got his corner empire. Looking here at the Ottomans, they have taken down the Chinese. Oh man, we have the Seagate Castle. So this actually gives 40% movement seed, speed to your traders. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. So that's gonna be nasty. We got a market coming down. And the Ottoman Empire, guys, is looking very scary. Because now they're going to get trade through the cent center of the map, most likely. Or maybe with a dock on the south side. I'm not sure if there's a dock nearby they can trade with. But that's going to be very strong. So the Chinese attacking in. Nesta B is doing some good work. And the Palace Guard still grinding. It looks like these Spring Alts of, uh, of the Chinese are going to be going after the Spring Alts of Don Artie. But Don Artie able to micro those bad boys back. China attacking from multiple points. Flanking Don Artie's base here. And are we going to be seeing any rams? China just... Sending hordes and hordes of units. And that Nesta B's composition is so good against the English. And Don Artie could eventually fall. He's, he's in a little bit of danger. You know, the Chinese had a really good start in the beginning. And obviously, you can see Cheezus is a, a good player as well. He's, he's doing a good job in this fight. Naniori, in the meantime, trying to deal with the harrying Roost Knights as we do see what appears to be a landmark defense attempt in the corner. So we see walls coming up. Maybe going to be a red palace built there just to have a really, really good security. Another French keep coming down, but the Roos are just preparing a war machine. They have the uh, battering rams. Most likely will be able to punch through the front of the base. On the back, Naniori does have a defensive trebuchet, which is putting some hurt on the Roos here. Are they going to do a proxy? Are they going to do a proxy uh, landmark here? This Baskaya, like right in front? They totally could. Well, not saying no, maybe they're going after the berry bushes. We'll have to see. So Ottomans are just going to become the trade war machine. Yeah, we see a lot of trade going. Oh, wow. There's a Chinese marketplace here, guys. So they could just trade with that. They're just going to build the traders, target this, and then go trade with their main base. And the Seagate Castle is going to give them just a fat amount of speed. They're going to be extra chungus. Don Artie's TC is in serious danger. We see the Nesta Bs and the Spring Alt standing at the ready. 
He's valiantly defending, but this is not going to be an easy hold. The Chinese player is not inhibited at all. He's just macroing freely in his base. Although blue is lurking? No, blue is just going for the stone. This is classic French players. They just don't, they just like turtle up and just, you know, do their own thing really. And then go for those wonder victories. Don Hardy getting his villagers butchered here by the Lancers. And also some of the Palace Guard moving in. And uh, ye old Nesta B is going to be sitting in the shadows as well. Nice crossbow play. If he can take out the Nesta Bees, he might be able to use his high attack speed crossbows to win. But China isn't without its anti-siege as well. As we can see, they're going to be forced back right now. What's being pumped out, it looks like it's going to be knights. And the English are really, really on the back foot, guys. Really, really on the back foot. So Ezra does have multiple sacred sites as well. He's got two sacred sites. Looks like there's going to be one in the middle as well. And now Quill is going to be getting that fat, thick trade. I mean, I, 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 it's going to be big. Yeah, how much is he getting here? 167 to pop. Uh, he doesn't have the Seagate Castle Network set up yet, but once he sets up a keep here, it's going to buff their speed. And I would imagine if we look at Quill, he probably has the Vizier point for the uh, trade. Yeah, he does. So, yeah, he's going to be getting those those trade bags and certainly going to be rolling in the money. So Zon already fends off the push. China coming in for round two, taking down the docks here and uh, trying to starve him out however he can. Nice spring I'll play here from Don Artie. Going to be sniping out the clock tower. Uh, Counterweight Trebuchet. Is he going to get the pick? He does, which every little moment like that it buys you quite a bit of time. Looking at his economy, he's up to 71. So getting a little bit going. A lot of crossbowmen. Very good against the Chinese army comp. China probably needs to start making some basic archers. Maybe some horsemen. Horseman archer would be very good here. Counter the crossbows. Could also dive a little bit. And now we see more infrastructure being set up. Up on the top side, the Rus continuing their battle. A lot of action this game. We've had several big battles between you know multiple players. The Roost piling in, going to be jumping in the counterweight trebuchet. Big damage as the battering ram's going to start do-hosting buildings. Uh, are they going to go after the keep here, I, I think? Yeah, they could have knocked down the infrastructure to kind of make the defense harder, but the Roost seem to be doing well. Nasty manganel shot from the Roost player, nailing into the Arbalists, and uh, it's going to be the end of the road for Nani Yori, depending on how well the Roost player reinforces. We get Chad Sky a tower coming over here, so the Roost player doing a good job scattering his landmarks across the map, which is going to make him very, very tough to take down. Now, on the bottom side, English is going to be setting up another keep, trying to just desperately hold this. And England, if they can hold and get to Imperial Age and get, you know, those English trebuchets, they might be able to get some pressure back on the Chinese. We'll have to see. White Tower's under some serious uh, pressure from the Clock Tower treb in the back, but Don Artie's, Don Artie is creating a critical mass of units here that is out-muscling the Chinese forces, despite China sending in waves and waves of units here. So, we'll have to see. Over here, uh-oh, uh-oh, look at this, the Ottomans have arrived. This is going to be a very tough hold. He's going to have to use some politics now because there's no way he's going to survive against both the Ottomans as well as the uh, as well as the Chinese. That, that would just be too much. Because China's pouring in. The White Tower, very, very good. You can see many of the units that do extend in are getting taken down. The Ottomans with some rams. They're just like kind of coming over here. And understandably, Quill probably perceives Don Artie as a big threat, being English and uh, being you know his Western neighbor. So he's going to be going for this here. But Don Artie does have a lot of crossbows. Should be able to amply deal with this. Looks like that town center is going to go down, which is really rough for him. In the meantime, China is now going to be able to get its bearings and restructure its attack once again. So the Ottoman Empire, man. Somebody in chat asking if they had won before, you know, but they're uh, they're doing good. Yeah, look at this. The Ottomans are going to be the Dark Lords. Oh my God, look at this trade. It's 150, 167 a pop at a 40% speed increase. That's so nasty. That's so nasty. So John already holding on, just barely. Up in the north side, we do see Quill. He's just, dude, Quill is just going after everyone, dude. The Ottomans are make, not making any friends. They're going after everybody equally. So it looks like he's going to be going after Morphidius. The Roos base, uh, I, wow, he lost his town center too. So the Ottomans actually hammering the Roos. Look at that. So I didn't see it, but it looks like the Ottomans steamrolled the Roos and took out several of their landmarks. The Kremlin, the High Trade House, the town center. The only landmark left is the Chad Skaya Tower in the corner. So Nana Yori could now potentially finish off Mophidius. Nana Yori is alive again. Wow, man. Ottomans are definitely steel chairing this game. But the White Tower has fallen. The Keep has fallen. That is five Nesta Bees. I don't care how good of a player you are. That is going to be a lot to stop, ladies and gentlemen. As Don already did have a little bit of a rough spot, didn't he? Yeah, like over here. Like sandwiched between these two players. But man, oh man. The Chinese player. He is uh, he's going pedal to the metal to try and finish him off. Looking on the east side of the map, the Ottomans are just trading like the heathen kings of old. Just making a ton of trade at this neutral trade post. Oh my god. He's going to be so loaded. The Rus are basically uh, in danger. Yeah, like they, they are just sitting here at the Chad Skaya trying not to die. Nani Yori is going to be coming for vengeance too. If Nani Yori kills the Spaskaya Tower, I don't know, he doesn't know this obviously, but that will end the game for Mophidius. And then Nani Yori is going to be able to potentially have, you know, some play in this game. Down on the bottom, Ezra is just playing Farmville Simulator. Ezra 
is just absolutely hanging out. Absolutely hanging down here. Uh, looking at his bank, currently sitting on a pretty good resource bank. He does have the Red Palace up in the hills. Um, let's look at his Guild Hall, which is... So we got School of Cavalry. Uh, we have the Red Tower in the Guild Hall. 5,000 stone in the bank. So not super close to the Wonder, but in the ballpark. So it looks like China is going to be able to clean this up. I, I don't think... Does he have the, I mean, enough to build Berkshire somewhere else? That's the only way. He's trying to do it. So Don Hardy is trying to get a Berkshire build somewhere to hold on, which is very smart. Because then somebody else might attack the Chinese. We'll have to see. So he's going to be going for a proxy Berkshire up on the top corner, which I think is a really good play. It's very strong. Yeah, he's, he's going to be able to potentially rebuild. He still has 47 villagers. And he's just going to be going Berkshire here. He, he doesn't want to waste any more time. He's got to get very, very close here. So Berkshire is going to be getting set up to the north. And it should finish before he dies. So he's not going to be dead. He's going to have to embrace his inner Smeagol and see what he can do here. Now down in the center of the map, we do see the Istanbul Imperial Palace. I forget what this landmark does. Doubles the Imperial Council experience for all landmarks. Oh, that's pretty cool. Very, very cool. So Don already on the ropes. He has his main TC here. That's pretty much it. Relics being taken here by the Chinese down to the corner. The one rough thing for the Chinese in the corner, though they had a really nice start, gold is going to be a problem for them. They don't have any trade. The gold nodes are all over far away in the center in Ottoman territory. And that's going to be a tough one. That is going to be very, very tough. Indeed. So the Berkshire Palace is up. Oh, man. The Ottomans are coming to finish the job. Oh, man. He tries to build that. He cancels it before things get ugly. And are the Ottomans going to finish him off? The Ottomans are trying to finish off the roost, but like, you know, they're like, well, might as well while we're here, right? So he jumps into the Berkshire Palace. The Ottoman army is going to pull back. Berkshire is obviously super strong. And uh, yeah, he has his opportunity to try and rebuild here. Probably building some stone walls would be the play if he has the resources. Although it looks like he, uh, yeah, he's, he's going for that town center again. You could do a stone wall like right here and just try and entrench and just hope that your old base is left like partially alone. Jesus has reached the Imperial Age, but gold's going to become an issue. Ezra moving in and backstabbing the Ottomans, guys. So Ezra coming in with the steel chair in the south, taking down the town center, doing quite a bit of damage. And the Ottoman army was all north. So this is going to give Don Artie some much needed breathing room to try and re macro. So he's got his two town centers, and uh, he might have an opportunity to get back in this game. Elite horsemen in droves, able to take down several landmarks, looking at the Ottoman landmarks. After I have a sip of tea here. The Sultani Trade Network is uh, definitely going to go down. So one, two, uh, and the other landmarks are up here. Yeah, so he's got Seagate hidden very far away. So Ezra probably is not going to be able to kill him. But he's still going to do some damage and, of course, uh, be harassing. We see a lot of blues villagers. So this is Dandy Dragon. What is he doing? Oh, he's looking for stone. So Dandy Dragon pulled 29 villagers to go and look for resources because he's basically starved down here. But Dandy Dragon basically likes to just build wonders. That's his jam. Don Hardy's base getting torched to the last. Up on the top, we see triple TC from Don Hardy. Oh my God, look at that. That's one way to get back in the game, ladies and gentlemen. As Nani Yori battling the Rus. How are the Rus even still getting resources? Um, Ophidius has got 20. Okay, it's the fishing. But Nani Yori basically trying to finish off the Rus here, but it's not easy. The Rus do have Imperial Age and some Strelsi and uh, might be able to get a little bit of momentum. The Ottomans seem to want to kill the Rus too. They have like cannon towers set up on their, some of their you know proximity here and are doing some work. Huge raid by Dark Hunter Ezra. So Ezra is going to go looking for trade and landmarks, I would wager. Uh, does he take that down? Oh my god. In the Istanbul Palace is down. This is down. Oh man. So Ezra is going landmark hunting. They better start repairing some of these. Ezra might find the Seagate Castle. He's following the traders. So he probably saw some of the traders moving through. He finds the opening. Oh my God. If he gets the Seagate Castle, that's going to be nuts. That is going to be absolutely nuts. He is just beelining across the map right now, ladies and gentlemen. And this is going to be some nasty, nasty business. The Gunhound, I feel the same way. I mean, he says, I may need to practice for our next team game. Our community is getting too good, I know. I'm the aged out boomer, you know. So we do see the dreaded walls coming. And is the Chinese going to go north? They are. They're going to go and try and finish him off. Ezra goes straight to the Seagate Castle. So he must have scouted that earlier. I, I'm not sure. He just like beeline straight for that bad boy. We do see a keep coming up. Is he going to get it? Quill should be repairing landmarks back in his base. But I'm not sure if he is. Uh, do we see landmarks? No, he's camping those. Seagate Castle is getting torched, but this is going to be close. I don't think he's going to get it. I think there's enough... Ottoman units there that he's going to be paying the troll toll. I think he is. But that landmark is getting really, really beaten down. We have a keep being built here. It's getting really danger close, guys. It's getting danger close. He's got to pull the villagers. He's got 30 villagers right here. He needs to repair. Oh, God. It's getting so close. I think he's just barely going to save it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's at, it's at 800 HP. 
Okay, it's netting HP now. It's netting HP, just barely. And that is going to be the end. And he, he actually destroyed the keep, I think, so he can maybe get more villagers around this. Wow, look at that. So that is going to get shut down here. So Ezra's forces going to get karate chops here. Will the Ottomans be able to get back online? Find out, as that landmark is salvaged. And the Ottomans are going to need to consolidate their forces. Looks like they have a trade. their trade route has been switched right now. And looking down on the south side of the map to the southwest, we do see Dandy Dragon. If you guys haven't seen Dandy Dragon before, um, he he just usually sits in one spot. I, don't, I wonder, like, I legitimately wonder what Dandy Dragon does while he's playing. Like, he's just kind of chilling. He, like, I've seen games where he doesn't move his units for like an hour, and then he just builds a wonder and defends it. And then, like, it, it can work if nobody's pressuring you hard. It totally can work. That was close. So the Ottomans, wait, what is the, did the Ottomans just leave? No, they didn't. Okay, no, that was the other base. For a second, I thought they left. I was like, geez. So the Roos are in serious danger. Oh man, Chad Sky is at, in danger of going down. And it looks like the Roos are gonna be eliminated as well. There's no way. Yeah, Nana Yori able to get an army of Arbalists and the Roos are trying to send some Rams out, but here they come. That's gonna be the end. Fast Sky Tower should fall, assuming he goes for the kill here. Look at Don Artie, dude. What a Chad, just fighting tooth and nail to try and stay alive in this game. It's not going to be easy. A couple crossbows fighting. Also able to get a little bit going. But the Chinese, they, they want him gone, which uh, is understandable. But the Berkshire Palace doing some good work. Garrisoned here, certainly causing some uh, serious problems. <laughs> Snoring Dragon Hidden Wonder. <laughs> That's very apt. The Roos have fallen. Nanny Yori with the steel chair. Able to finish him off. The Ottomans, of course, going to now probably have their sights set on Ezra if they can recoup after that, that military uh, incursion there. Their trade has been shut down, but the Ottoman army is pretty feasible. Yeah, they have the Great Bombards, which will hurt. Ezra is in such a good position, though. It looks like he's just ferrying knights across the river. It's pretty funny. It's pretty micro-intensive to do that. It's definitely pretty micro-intensive. So Nanny Yori finishes off the Roost player. It looks like we've had two eliminated. Yeah, Don already still holding on for dear life. It's basically spamming out Spring Alts, which is not a bad idea. It's one of the better ways to defend yourself. Chinese are looking very jacked in the corner, but the thing about the Chinese is they don't have any gold. Um, so if we look at the Chinese gold income, it's probably minimal. I guess he's... Oh, he does have some on these gold nodes. Never mind. He did find a couple. Yeah, when he pushed him back, he was able to take the local gold nodes. So he's going to be strong for a while longer. And I don't know. I don't think Don Artie is going to be able to hold. If the Chinese really want him dead and they actually like aggress on him here, I think they'll be fine. And the thing is, with the Chinese, uh, if you know that Danny Dragon's your neighbor, you don't need to worry about being attacked. He's just going to be hanging out here and just spamming 200 stack of French Knights and saving up for a wonder. So Ezra with a 72 stack of elite Royal Knights. Absolutely brutal. Those bad boys going to be heading across here. Looking to go after the old mill. And the battle is on. The Ottomans do have a good army. Janissaries would be the way to go here. Janissaries would be very nice. And it looks like he's going to be taking his Knights over and maybe trying to snipe that landmark again. So yeah, he is going to be going for that landmark. As the Ottomans are producing spears where they can, but a couple spearmen, unless there's like 80 of them, are not going to be able to fight against this many knights here. So the Ottoman army, are they going to rotate over? It looks like they are. They have the Great Bombard Cannons packed up and moving. TC's been repaired. The fact that he hasn't repaired his landmarks here is very concerning. Um, yeah, because he's probably going to die. These knights might actually kill his last landmark. The Seagate Castle does have a couple keeps protecting it. A couple uh, garrison spearmen and what appears to be Palace Guard. Did he roll a load those? Maybe. But yeah, honestly, Ezra might be able to get the kill here. We'll see. He's, he's breaking these walls, and the big army is going to be moving in. And uh, yeah, the, they actually get back there in time, though. But does he have villagers nearby to repair this? Uh, we see the, the turbo trade going. I don't know how much trade's going. It looks like some villagers are being pulled for repairs on the Seagate Castle. And Blue is also nearby. Dandy Dragon just kind of stealing resources where he can. Yeah, he's trying his best here. So here comes the charge. A lot of French knights just going to be eating that burning oil. Those uh, medieval tanks, very, very jacked. Now going to be peeling over to try and fight the elite knights here of the Ottomans. But the Ottoman knights aren't slouches. They're fully upgraded from what I can tell. And it looks like they have biology. Not fully upgraded, but pretty close. And it would seem that Ezra is going to get pushed back once again. That's a lot of gold to invest um, in trying to kill Quill. But understandably, he's your biggest threat, right? Don Artie trying to hold here on the top. Um, China is here. They got some Ramstein going. If you're Don Artie, you basically just have to try and hold until China runs out of gold, I think. He's got his farms going and is setting up uh, more archer ranges. He has Imperial Age, so probably just going to be spamming crossbows against this army comp. And Berkshire Palace is, is holding well. It's a, it's a great landmark. If there's going to be a landmark that's your last landmark, then that's that's what you're going to want. So Ezra just raiding heavily here. So he's just taking his knights, running over whatever he can. 
while we do see Don Artie's uh, base being uh, pushed here by the Ramstein. So Springald's in the back, going to be shooting down Rams. So are they going to get it? Looks like some of the Springalds might die, but they're going to try and take some of the Nesta Bees with them. Yeah, nice dive right there. Very, very good dive by Jesus. He gets in there with those Elite Lancers, able to do some good work as the uh, Barkshire Palace holds and holds. Six HP on this Ram. Definitely want to finish that thing off if you can. Don Artie going to be pulling here, building crossbows out of the back of his base, but this is not going to be easy. There's a nice mass of Chinese artillery here. And China could build siege workshops here if they wanted to and probably make this even more expedient. Barkshire holding on, picking off these units where it can. Does he have any macro coming from the back of his base? Looking at the resource bank of Don Artie, he's very, very poor. Uh, he has 7,000 on pretty much all the resources. Having to repair Barkshire is, is pretty much his, his saving grace here as Barkshire is uh, you know, fending off quite a bit of these attacks. Looking at his bank, he does have 85 eco, but zero military at this point. So unless he's able to call some for some help, I think he's toast. And it looks like Ezra's raiding and harassing is being enough. Uh, is doing enough to, to really, really mess up the Ottomans. The Ottomans' base is like scattered all over the place, so it's really hard to mobilize the central defense here. And um, I would wager Ezra is just getting ready for a wonder. He's got 12,000 stone. Um, where's the wonder going to go? I don't know. Can you fit it in the corners here? It's going to be around here somewhere. But yeah, he is looking pretty, pretty villainous here for sure. So Spring Alt's on their way up. Clock Tower nests the bees. Counterweight trebuchets. Going to be going after the Berkshire Palace. Berkshire Palace is going to be getting nailed right here. And uh, you know, dropping some fat shots, but... Don Artie's just hemorrhaging units right now, and he's having to just pull villagers upon villagers to keep this thing alive. That's a lot of spring ults. Um, maybe just switch to horsemen. I don't even know, man. He knows better than me. Yeah, the Berkshire Palace at 2,700 HP. He's trying to torch down the rams where he can, but the spring ults, the bombard cannons, double trebuchet. Berkshire is a very Chad landmark, but it's not going to be able to hold for too much longer. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of the English and Don Artie. Nanny Yori got a nice little uh, wonder position up in the corner, potentially. As a decent standing army, but where is China going to go next? This is going to be the end of Don Artie. I don't think he was able to repair any of the other landmarks in a sneaky manner, so. GG, well played! Another one has fallen. Jesus, the dreaded Chinese, certainly showing no mercy. Now, looking here, we do see a big army. They're going to be trying to take down this keep and torch that, so that's a good target by Ezra. That's going to be uh, killing the refund, basically, if you try and refund that. Doing a little bit of scooting and shooting, very, very sweaty stuff, and he doesn't quite get the keep down. Takes a little bit of damage in the process, but now it's going to be jumping into trade while the Ottoman main base is being harried on every front. This is going to be a super hard fight for the Ottomans. Taking a look at the score here of Quill, let's take a look. Uh, looking like the Eco is kind of crushed. He only has five on food right now. He's got a lot of idling villagers. And Dandy Dragon is, is not attacking him per se, but is basically just trolling and taking his resources. Jesus here. What's he up to? Is he going to move north and try and finish off the uh, French in the corner? Could do it. I mean, he's got a good army. He could move north and definitely put some hurt on the French. Although Nanny Ori should be Imperial now. Although, no, still not Imperial Age. Let's see. Nanny Ori taking a look here. Let's look. Um, sitting at, yeah, a pretty good bank. Just gold starved a little bit. So not able to go up to Imperial Age quite yet. French Knights are going to be trading pretty, pretty favorably in a lot of these situations. Versus the Ottoman Knights with their uh, charge bonus and some of the other effects that they do have. They become quite impactful for sure. Over on the west side, we do see the gold veins being taken by Dandy Dragon. Dandy Dragon literally has not moved in ages. Just straight up, straight up Netflix and chilling here, guys. Just absolutely taking it easy. On the bottom side, we do see the Guild Hall. Guild Hall is here, and uh, he's got six thousand five hundred in the bank. Pretty respectable. And I think he's been collecting it though. I think he's been buying using the stone because I see plenty of keeps in his base, and he would have a horrible wonder spot because he's sandwiched between two very strong players. So I don't think Dandy Dragon has to just be super conservative and just basically wait till he, like he he just is gonna have to just play, I guess neutral would be the term I'm looking for, and just take it easy here. So in the meantime, Red is ramming down the Ottoman base. The Ottomans are desperately scrapping and trying to stay alive. But the thing is, Ezra's economy is completely unimpeded. He's got a fully functional economy, and the Ottomans are kind of on the back foot. And uh, I think it is gonna be the end of the Ottomans. So they're they're getting sandwiched by the Chinese now. So Jesus is coming for blood. And the Ottomans are defending valiantly, but Quill kind of had a spawn where he was, yeah, like more central, which again, he had the resources, but yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be in trouble. Quill probably, Quill did kill the Northern Chinese pretty quickly, but I think instead of going over here and attacking the Rus, maybe the Ottomans should have gone south after Ezra. It's hard to say. He had a lot of time to mack her up and Ezra is going to be setting up barracks and droves, attacking in, shutting down infrastructure. And now that the Chinese are coming, um, I don't see too much hope here for the Ottomans. I think they're just super, super hard on the back foot. They're going to have to play. They're going to have to play some sort of politics. Hey, Don. Well played, man. Really needed Blue to go for an attack. So here's the thing, Don. Um, Blue is known in our community for being 
the Netflix and chill player. He he usually just sits semi AFK with a 200 stack of French knights and builds a lot of uh, bank with the French guild hall, and then he just builds a wonder. That's like his. He usually I've never seen him be aggressive before. But yeah, Don, it was, it was unfortunate. And also the Chinese player that you were fighting had a shoreline fish right next to their um, TC, so they were able to get a really nice start. And uh, yeah, it was. he played very well, though. Jesus played like an absolute beast. Great game. Great game to both of you guys. You scrapped really hard, man. You scrapped super hard. That was really fun. Hope to see you back in future tournaments, man. Now, Elite Knights moving up to the north side. Going to be trying to fend off the raiding. Teal is, Teal is just getting dragged all over the place, just being raided and attacked by multiple players. And uh, what's going to be interesting is if Ezra goes for a wonder after Teal dies, which I think would be a great play, actually. Um, like, Purple would have to go through, like, Dandy Dragon a little bit to go over there. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a hard one. A lot of rams coming up from Ezra. He's going to be do-hosting all over the face of these bases, I would imagine. And uh, we see an update from in-game. I made three stables between Purple and Blue because I wanted a landmark snipe Purple, but Blue called them out, so I deleted them. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what would happen there. Cheers, man. You have a good night, too. Ottoman trade is the one thing keeping them going. It's like the one thing. They're getting 167 a pop, but China is is just going ham. They got four bombard cannons, and uh, yeah, Ezra is going to be very pleased with this, as we do see what appears to be 14 battering rams, most likely with Imperial upgrades heading up to the top side of the map. So going to be going after the Imperial Academy and or the Seagate Castle. We'll have to see how this all unfolds. I think Ezra is probably the favorite right now, looking at the state of the map. China will be very strong too, but Ezra has probably been planning for an entrenchment for a long time. For a wonder hold, I'm thinking. Looking on the south side, what do we have here? We do have the guild hall with a 15,000 stone. I don't see any like tell of a, of a wonder yet. Like there's no spot that looks like he's like clearing it out to build it. Um, maybe like up in the hills eventually. I don't know. It seems like in the hills it'd be hard to find these choke points for sure. It'd be hard to find that. In the meantime, Battering Ram's heading up to the new north, and we do have a, a lot of horsemen. Looks like 17. Ezra, Ezra is very, very, very good micro. He's got that Zoomer micro, you know, like that, that StarCraft micro for sure. He's very, very ferocious with moving all of his units and whatnot. Nanny, I'm sure, politics himself into having China leave him alone. Maybe. But leaving a French player alone is very dangerous. Because then they can just wonder. Like, Ezra is definitely going to be a tyrant. He is definitely going to be a tyrant. The Ottomans are for sure dead. Uh, there's no way they're going to come back. I mean, they're just getting raided. Their landmarks are getting sniped. Where did those 13 battering rams go? Did they get rode down? I could have sworn we saw them. I think they peeled back across this way. Okay, there's only eight left. And no, there's more here. Okay. So they're going to be heading up as the Sultani trade network is going to be going down. China just steamrolling through the base here. And uh, Ezra sees this now. So he's aware that somebody else is also piling into the middle, which is tough. I don't know why you would leave a wounded French. Yeah, you can't do it. No, French are just so scary in terms of what they can do in FFA. These Grenadiers. Oh, they're Palace Guard. For a second, I thought he was making the uh, the grenade guys. That would be kind of fun. Good scrap here by Quill. Quill, you know, might as well just rebuild up in the top corner. That's exactly what he's doing. Um, and just hope that the other two players will maybe start fighting. Dandy Dragon is just kind of throwing a wrench in a lot of people's strategy, right? He's like this... He's not attacking the Chinese or Ezra, so they're both able to kind of do as they please. Looking at his bank right now, let's see. So Dandy Dragon has a good bank, I mean, sort of. And it's only 6,000, so he's got enough to build a, um, a wonder. But, like, defending it, he's got 9,000 of the guild hall. Looks like he's setting up down here. Yeah, he's building cannon outposts. So he's going to be trying to build a wonder, most likely, down here eventually. It's going to be a ways off, though. So Ram's heading, Ram's heading up to the top. Quill going to be setting up multiple TCs. Looks like uh, several town centers are coming out, which is a very good play. Kind of similar to what we saw Donner already doing. And... Uh, Yep, trying to survive. Trying to survive. As China clears out the Ottoman base. And uh, I wonder if Ezra is going to go for the kill and like actually try and finish off the forces of Quill. We'll have to see. We will have to see. So, up on the top side of the map, Nanny Yori getting the old French war machine going. So building a lot of infrastructure. This is like the comm. We had the storm. There was some big fighting. Players were eliminated. But now we've kind of uh, relaxed into a very, very calm point in the game where I think there's going to be Maybe a little bit of aggression here, but the Ottomans might honestly be able to survive. If they can reestablish some trade somehow. Ram's going for the uh, Seagate Castle. It's so crazy how close Quill was to dying earlier. It's really, really close. Keeps her hanging out. Seagate Castle, pretty well defended, but all the other landmarks are basically on death's bed. He's sending a lot of horsemen through. Going to be trying to snipe the landmark again, but these horsemen are just going to go to their doom. So our country as Ezra's horsemen going to get harried and uh, rode down here by the more elite Ottoman army. And he's still just gathering up mass horsemen, going for that landmark snipe. But I don't think the landmark snipe is going to work anymore. I think the Ottomans, well, it will at some point, but 
right now in this moment. I think that the Ottomans are pretty, uh, pretty well aware of what's going down. Now, where's China going to go? Is China going to take out the French nearby? Or are they going to like loop up and around and go down towards Ezra? They don't have supply lines, so their army would get folded most likely by a mass horseman army. You can see the Chinese army is a couple palace guard and mostly range units. So any sort of a mass horse army that, that what the French are doing would be able to kind of hunt those bad boys down. Up on the top, what do we got? Yep, all is calm. Teal, Teal able to kind of restructure themselves in this game. Ottomans have an okay army. Uh, the food eco for them, probably not amazing. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's okay. They, they still have some farms. And look at this. We got some walls being built. So Nani Yori building a great wall of, uh, of France here on the north side of the map, northeast. Going to be uh, providing a little bit of cover, actually, for the forces of Quill. Protects them uh, from being flanked by the Chinese in that direction. Ezra, in the meantime, going to be taking down military schools. They cost stone, so they're not like super easy to rebuild. So, yeah, Quill's got some walls, but it looks like there's a breach in the walls. Are those, are those walls of the Fallen player? No, those are the walls of the Fallen player. Yeah. So he's got all the keeps. His army's going to be pulling back here. Probably going to be trying to hunt down Ezra's forces here as Ezra takes down one of his TCs. The Ottoman army is nearby, but the horsemen are just going to run away. Horsemen are just like super, super troll. Okay, China kind of looks as if they want to attack Ezra's base. I don't know what they're actually going to have a successful time there. Um, China does take over the middle of the map, which is quite big means they're able to get several of these gold nodes that were kind of lingering. Looking at Jesus's bank, it's okay. He doesn't have much stone. He does have, oh wow, okay. Is that Penta relics for the Chinese? So China takes all the relics from the Ottomans and gets five relics with tithe barns. Okay, that's a huge play. That's a huge play, ladies and gentlemen. Over here, we do see the horsemen running about, looking for uh, sniping opportunities, looking for goodies that they can farm. Ottoman base, looks like they're going with the dreaded Penta TC. Don't hate it. Don't hate it. That's one way to get your eco back, right? So Quill is here, and we do see the, uh, the current eco is at 88. So it's not like he's that behind on villagers. I don't know if he needed to build that many TCs, but nah, it doesn't hurt, right? So China is still trying to clear out the Ottomans, and it looks like that's going to be their focus. Maybe not wanting to pick a battle with Ezra quite yet. Dandy Dragon just Netflixing and chilling, dude. His army, look, it just he doesn't even move his army. It's just the most ridiculous shit ever. And somehow, he keeps returning like Palpatine. It's pretty great. So Ezra's going to see these relics probably. He's going to see them in these buildings and most likely we'll have a power fantasy to try and get those. Still just spamming out horsemen and uh, looks like the Ottomans... Are the Ottomans going to get aggressive against Ezra? Kind of looks like it. Let's see what Ezra's bank looks like. So Ezra has 8,000 gold. He still has a little bit of gold in the mountains here. Uh, has some in his main base as well that could be taken. So he's not, you know, in dire straits yet. He can still produce units and obviously a switch to mostly horsemen to save money. I think for a wonder defense. I feel like nobody's going to build a wonder yet. They'll probably wait for there to be one more, one more person going down, and then we could probably see a wonder, which most likely will happen soon. Um, Ottomans are holding on very valiantly. You got to give it up to Quill, man. He's he's been fighting two players, like two good players, and he's been just holding it down and just not going quietly. Ezra seems to have calmed down a little bit in terms of aggression, but now he's going to come out and battle these spearmen. But this is a lot of spearmen. Those horsemen will get wrecked, and the battering rams are going to go for the gatehouse. Not sure where these guys are going to go. Probably just pushing to here, but there are some knights. Knights can fight off the horsemen, and it looks like that town center is being rebuilt there. Which is kind of curious. I don't really know if that's going to do too much for you. Horsemen of Ezra moving into the base, and over on the west side of the map, we do see the old uh, the old Chinese lancers coming out in droves. Town center, or excuse me, uh, sacred site. I'm going to be getting taken by the monk here. So trying to get what little gold he can. Building's going to get torched. Ottomans do have a nice defensible position, though. Up in the corner here, it's not bad. Seagate Castle is well defended. They have a good standing army. I think if you're the Ottomans, you just say, screw the rest of the map. You just try and stabilize yourself in the top and then re-secure trade somehow. That's going to be the big thing. But the five relics going is really, really big for China. That is going to make Jesus into a huge threat. Without that, you know, he could have been a little bit resource starved, but five relics is quite a bit. It's 80 gold a pop, right? So that's going to be a substantial amount of gold in tandem with the uh, tithe barns. The Tithe Barn's going to be giving him stone, and uh, let's take a look. So he's probably going to be getting several hundred stone a minute. Yeah, 510 right now with three villagers mining. So that's, that's a really, really good deal. China chasing down the Ottomans. I can't help but think there's some weird alliance between the Chinese and, uh, and, and Dark Hunter Ezra. Like, they, what's probably happening is, I bet you there's some machinations about trade. It'll be like, oh yeah, you know, the Ottomans were trading so insane in the middle, we got to stop them. Like, I feel like there was some sort of machination. The, if, he, if the Chinese player can also get the relics back to their main base, that'd be way better. They're super exposed out here. It could easily be taken by a multitude of players. So I think you're going to want to pull back. Nani Yori moving up into the middle, trying to grab some resources. Nani Yori, how's the entrenchment looking? Um, this is, we've got a couple houses back here. We've got the Red Palace. Yeah, nobody looks like they want to pull the trigger on Wonders quite yet. Danny Dragon just chilling. I wonder, I wonder how long he would 
Like if this game went for like 10 hours, I wonder if he would be willing to sit there, you know, and just hang out. Like, would he just not move? What is, like, he must be doing something else. He's moving villagers around. Okay, so he's just focusing on villager micro, but he's gotta be doing something. Maybe he's like painting miniatures or watching Netflix. I, I'm actually curious. So Danny Dragon, if you are watching this, if you're watching this stream back, let us know in the comments below what you do when you're sitting there with your armies, like, and there's not much going on. I'd be really genuinely curious to hear. The elite horsemen get a little bit of a push by, might be able to take down some bills, but looks like they're going to be just trying to raid into the farms, which is very strong. But the Ottomans do have defense, they have a lot of knights, they have a big knight army, which will obviously crush the horsemen in a straight fight, but the horsemen aren't going to give you a fair fight. They're going to pile in on these villagers, we're going to see some bills go down here, but Quill has Penta TC. So rebuilding villagers won't be too much of an issue. Should be able to get those numbers up again pretty quickly. As the Ottomans just dealing with these perpetual horsemen raids from Dark Hunter Ezra. On the other side, Nani Yori pushing out to the, uh, the last emplacements of the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottomans were once a strong, powerful empire. Now they've been pushed back into the, the far reaches of the old world here. Turn more interested in the psychology of the player than his strat. No, for sure. The psychology of it is really interesting. Uh, or more, more so what he's doing, like watching a show or is that like, you know, any number of things, eating cookies. Could be, could be anything, right? Could be anything, really. He probably has 5 APM. Yeah, no, he probably takes five actions per minute, which is like moving his villagers like to and from different gold nodes. <laughs> I think that's it. And yet, he's, I've still seen him win games. Yeah, with, with uh, strong opponents as well. The Ottomans are hunting down the horsemen and they're getting picks. Definitely very annoying. I'm sure the Ottomans are going to want to get some stone walls. If you're the Ottoman player, you need to stonewall your empire. Because Ezra won't be able to harass you anymore like this if you just build some stone walls. Um, easier said than done, though. Stone. Well, I guess there's stone up here. You could probably take that. Only 135, so probably not going to happen. I was trying to looking. Jesus sitting on a really nice bank. Not a lot of stone, but, you know, pretty comfortable in terms of every other resource. China has really, really taken over the, uh, the middle of the map here. And down on the south side, Ezra's still just scouting out, looking for goodies. And China building just this wild-ass great wall here. What are they doing? Is China walling in the landmarks of the Ottomans so they can't repair it? Oh my god, what is this? Some wild shit, man. Is this really worth it? Okay, so we see Ezra riding by. Is Ezra going to let those walls finish? Maybe. No, he's going to go for the villagers right now. So, yeah, I, I thought there might be some weird alliance between them, but it would appear not. I think they just both want the same thing. But the Ottomans are, you know, a force still. They have a high score. They're in pretty good shape. They have a big elite army. Uh, going to be able to get farms back online, and if they can find a way to get some trade going again, I mean, the Ottomans could be back in this game pretty quickly. So China is going to be moving its army over. It's mostly artillery, though, so you got to be careful attacking a horseman corps. Up on the top side, Nani Yori sieging, so the dreaded French up on the top going to be trying to push the Chinese out of the middle, and uh, the, uh, the players in the corners, to no surprise, are some of the last ones to, uh, to really have their solid main bases left. And then there's Dandy Dragon with his five actions per minute. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, is he even moving anything? There's been many games of his I've casted where I, I thought, I thought that he, um, was AFK. And then he gets attacked by someone and then suddenly everything moves. You're like, oh, he actually is paying attention. The Chinese army steamrolling Ezra's forces here, but again, it was just a couple of horsemen, so not really going to be a big deal. And look at this, the Ottomans are, the Ottomans are trying to wall Ezra in. Oh my God, are you seeing this shit? Look, the Ottomans come down and they're walling Ezra across the river. Holy shit, that's funny. Oh my god. He's like, I'm sick of your raids. I'm sick of them. But yeah, the Chinese actually then wall in a bunch of the Ottoman landmarks, so they're not going to be able to re-repair those, which is pretty hilarious. And Ezra is getting walled into the corner, and he probably will not have gold for too much longer. Um, we have 2,000 on this gold vein, and he could start to, you know, run out there. But I love that the Ottomans walled him in. They're just creating this, like, nest. Oh, it's because they're trying to get trade down here. Yeah, so the Ottomans are trying to get that sweet, sweet trade from north to south. Okay, I see what's going on here, guys. We see the old stone walls going up, and Ezra has a lot of mangonels, which aren't going to be very good against cavalry. Ezra trying to do some raiding, but oh no, he's trying to get gold on the map. Okay, so he's trying to get some gold, but the Ottomans have some military there. Should be able to stop this. Uh, these are elite spearmen, so yeah, the villager is going to take some casualties here, and he has been walled in officially. So when he moves out, you know, he's going to he's going to discover this, and it's going to be a pretty funny moment for sure. Uh, Danny Dragon is. They they have these like weird synergy, these two. They're like symbiotic, their relationship. Very strange. The hidden dragon is here. He is the hidden dragon. Yeah, you can see he's just straight up entrenching these outposts. It's so funny. I like how we have these like characters in our community, each of whom have like different personalities and play styles. It's it's pretty fun how that you can see these like recurring pattern. 
most likely going to be reestablishing trade, but we do see the army of the uh, of the French in the south moving out and knocking down some of the walls here. So now the Ottomans are going to have to pull a big army and actually try and fight them. So we'll see, but he is caged in for now. Mangoes are okay at killing walls, and it takes a while, but they can still get there if you have enough of them. And you can see here that he is able to take those walls down. China securing the landmarks here. So there's not going to be any landmark fun for the Ottomans. They're going to be stuck on their one Seagate castle, which is very, very shady. And now we see a lot of military. Oh my God. Quill, Quill wants blood. I think he wants vengeance. He's probably so annoyed with Ezra that he's just, oh my God, look at this. He's just going so hard in the paint, getting a ton of barracks here and is going to be preparing for Mortal Kombat. Will the walls be rebuilt? Will the trade be redone? Find out here on today's episode. Um, we do see traders being queued, but I think he's a little bit light in terms of, or a little bit over pop capped here. So that's going to be tricky. The Chinese are going for Ezra now. I think there's some politics. I think there's a mention of him being a French player in the corner who nobody is attacking, which is going to leave Nani Yori with a little bit of, uh, you know, something to work with. Nani Yori's just got to fly under the radar right now. That's what you totally got to do. But the Chinese decapping here and down to the bottom side. We do see the uh, we do see the hand cannoneers decapping this. Yes. Nice siege core. Three bombards, four bombards with two trebuchets, five springs. A horseman army would be very good against this. But Ezra's pulled back and Ezra looking at gold. He has a huge bank. Ezra might actually go wonder here. Honestly, a video of the personalities in your community would be appreciated. Speaking for myself, at least, it'd help to make the matches carry more weight if I knew who to root for. Eh, could be something to do. Could be something to do. Player profiles, yes. All that sort of good stuff. Now, over to the west side. We do have all the old uh, Bombardos. It looks like they were attacking Ezra, but then they just kind of changed their mind. They're just like, ah, I'm good. We're going to go attack Dandy Dragon. Maybe Dandy Dragon's going to get the Wrath of China, which wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, they're right next to each other. It'd be a very easy supply lines for China. All right, you ready to see Dandy Dragon move, guys? Let's see. Let's see how long it takes him to move after he gets attacked. So here he is. Sacred sites have been neutralized. Um, as far as fighting over here goes, yeah, all is calm right now. It looks like the Ottomans are preparing a war machine to go after Ezra. Yeah, he's going after it. So Dandy Dragon, awoken from his slumber, perhaps. So it's been about 10 seconds since the fighting started and he hasn't moved his army. His base is under siege. Okay, he moved his army. You see that, guys? You see the high APM movement right there? He turned his army just barely. Okay, so we know he's here. Is he going to move to fight and go run over this army? Okay, maybe he's waiting. Waiting for the pouncing dandy dragon. Nani Ori just cutting out a nice piece of the pie up in the north. But this is the most riveting gameplay we've had so far. Oh my god, he's moving his army. It's happening. It only took about 30 seconds for him to respond. He must have been semi-AFK. All right, here they come. The French Knights are going to absolutely destroy this force. They are fully upgraded, and this is a very small Chinese army, so they're going to get some work, and uh, he's probably just going to go back to being AFK again. I feel as if Dandy Dragon doesn't attack people because he doesn't want to, like, draw their ire, and it allows him to kind of display possum a little bit more as well. You have awoken the sleeping dragon, yes. So now the elite Royal Knights will... I would laugh so hard... If Dandy Dragon just pulls back, sits his army in the exact same spot, and just rebuilds the walls. That would just be the most ridiculous shit ever. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just such a meme. I love every second of it. Up on the north side of the map, guys, what do we got? What do we got here? What does the guild hall look like, more importantly? Because that is the most pertinent landmark to take a look at. Uh, I believe it's up here. 12,000 stone, man. Ezra currently sitting at uh, 3,100. So Ezra is entrenching now. Yeah, towers coming up. Um, towers up in the hills. Towers, oh my god, and they're all being upgraded to cannon towers. Where's this wonder going to go? Oh, oh dear god. Oh, this is such filth. And yeah, this this is too long to lumberjack through. I mean, you could see a Mission Impossible blue lumberjack, but I don't think Danny Dragon would do that. Ezra's going to go wonder soon. Yep. He cleared out the entire bottom, and he's just entrenching like hell now. Yep, entrenchments. He's preparing for a wonder, and you can see that Quill is preemptively going for him. Resumes trimming his bonsai tree. I know. Drazith in chat saying Dandy Dragon is my spirit animal. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's, 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 he's quite characteristic. It's pretty hilarious. I love it, man. It's funny. Ezra's still doing a little bit of raiding. He managed to get some horsemen into the Ottoman base, which has got to be pretty annoying. And the Ottomans are going to definitely pull the trigger. But Ezra's wonder spot, guys, is going to be such filth. That is going to be such filth. Like, I don't know, man. All these towers and, like, he's... Lumberjacking here might be a mistake because it's, like, allowing maybe a backdoor to your wonder. We'll have to see. A little bit of raiding going down. Ezra does have some horsemen. Horsemen don't do that much damage, but 
enough to pick off villagers. We do have Janissaries being made. Janissaries do have the trench guns, so they do plus 20 versus cavalry. They really thump them down pretty hard. So the Janissaries still gonna run. Janissaries still die pretty quick to horsemen, though. Horsemen do have the bonus versus, uh, I think, ranged infantry. Yeah, light gunpowder. Oh, they don't have the ranged bonus, so it says versus ranged. Yeah, it should count as that. It says gunpowder, so maybe that's why... Okay, so that horseman hit him for 13 damage. His base damage is 16. Yeah, so they don't get the bonus for his Janissaries because they're elite, they're gunpowder infantry, which is like a different categorization. Wow. Today I learned. Today I learned. Turn check on cheeses. I feel is ready for the Chinese to counter wonder. We'll take a look. Uh, we do see the pagodas. So he got the pagodas going. China and wonders. Cheeses is sitting on a fair amount of stone, but he's not ready for the counter wonder yet. He's not ready for it. Ezra would definitely be the one probably to pull the trigger first once he's able to get all his towers up. And he's got cannon emplacements like everywhere. Like everywhere. Taking a little bit of gold from the middle. Maybe Ezra is going to be waiting for one more person to go down. The Chinese and the uh, French of the north are fighting as well. So China's got a trade route, which is uh, pretty lucrative at 154 a pop. But it looks like Nani Yori is going to be coming down from the north and is going to be trying to uh, shut down some of this hot action. In the meantime, we do see the... Uh, the French armies of Ezra just kind of having a bit of a standoff here with the Ottomans. Ottomans, how much trade are we getting here? And they're getting 127 with a 40% speed trade. Okay, that's very strong. What's that, guys? Gonna put my hoodie back on. Got a little bit cold here in the old lair. A little bit chilly, but we'll, uh, we'll be okay. Playing with Dandy, he will always preach about the French turtle. It's hilarious. Yeah, he actually talks about it. That's like his, it's his power fantasy. The French turtle does seem very, very strong. It seems very, very strong. They removed the range tag from Janissary shortly after Ottomans came out. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit of a boomer. I haven't been playing too much, so a little bit behind the times. All right, guys, just putting on a hoodie. It's a little bit cold here. Got kind of nippy as we get into the later stages of the game. All right, we're back in business. Feeling warm, feeling good. So, yeah, England making some progress against China, but it's all, like, topical progress, you know? Just killing a couple random buildings and whatnot, and uh, at the end of the day... Yeah, these uh, they are not even upgraded. The Arbalists are still Castle Age. Nan Yori, you really gotta upgrade your units. Well, I guess he's kinda tight on resources. Maybe he's trying to build entrenchments of his own, I'm not sure. But Nan Yori's army is pretty pretty weak quality. I mean, yeah, uh, I think the Knights are fully upgraded, but a lot of the Arbalists and other range units are uh, potato tech, so. But even still, it does push back China's foothold. China's gonna fight tooth and nail for this position, though, because of the trade post, so you don't wanna be losing that. Now, have the Ottomans gotten aggressive yet? It doesn't look like it. Now their knights are coming southward. Maybe you're going to be torching down this Chinese keep. We'll have to see. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be trying to take down the keep. Uh, most likely to rebuild their landmarks. That's what they would want. And five relics here. China's actually got eight relics, guys. Wow. They got triple pagoda relic. And then they have five relics in the middle as well with tithe barns. Dude, that is brutal. Now, is there any sort of trade going on? 69 trade upriver. That's what she said. The blessed number. Holy shit, he actually has a trade ship. That's hilarious. There's a dead dock here. 69.69 is, is actually a, a fairly, it's a decent amount of resources. It's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it, I would say. Over on the other side, kind of where Trebuchet is continuing to roll out, but it looks like China was able to kind of secure itself here. I think, yeah. So China's looking pretty comfy. They get their trade and somebody's going to pull the trigger on the wonder at some point. There was 29 villagers down here. Um, Ezra, will Ezra do it soon is the question. Or is he going to build a massive bank first? I think he wants to build a big bank before he goes in. Um, what is he building at the guild hall? Uh, guild hall is currently banking gold, which is smart. He has enough stone. He, he has 10,000 stone. He's not going to need more than that. Even after the wonder. Yeah, the relics being in the middle is very scary. Those things can be taken super quickly. And five relics is pretty game changing. For someone in the late game when gold is mined out of the map and you know trade is tough. Five relics is game changing type of money. It's, it's really, really big. Definitely would want to make sure you can kind of keep that. Ottomans take down that keep, if I'm not mistaken. They did. They have their knights. And the Ottoman Empire is back in business, man. I mean, they're looking pretty strong, actually. Looking at his eco, Quill, sitting at 120 eco. So he's he's doing great. He's got that north to south trade. What tenacity from Quill. You know, earlier in the cast, I was saying I was saying that the Ottomans were dead. I legitimately thought they were. I was like, oh, he's toast. He's, he's just going to get karate chopped, right? But he, he somehow has found a way here. And uh, it's just causing just tons of havoc. Yeah, Wonder, Wonder in the corner right now could win the game. But Dandy Dragon has a big army too. And um, you'd also be getting the full wrath of the Ottomans. Although, yeah, I think for Ezra, a Wonder could just straight up win the game right now. And the reason why I think that is because it's going to be really hard for Nanny Yori to get down there and help with China obstructing the way. And Dandy Dragon is also blocking a direct route from China. So China would have to do a big circle route to get to you. So I do think a wonder for Ezra, if he plays well, which he usually does, 
is going to be uh, is going to be very very viable for sure. So yeah, and you know, again, in the grand finals of a tournament, I would probably take that chance, um, considering you have strong opponents and. He obviously doesn't know the state of the map and what's going on and what everyone else is doing, but I think I think a wonder at this point would be uh, a very smart idea because the Ottomans are only going to go stronger. Um, they're trading like the heathen kings of old. Quill is going to start getting a huge bank again, and uh, yeah, then he'll be even more of a threat as the game does keep going. Yeah, so the Ottoman Empire claiming a lot of the map up here. We do see some of the tree lines being mined out here by Nani Yori. To the west, Jesus just chilling in the base. And he's got his supervisors. Looks like he deleted some villagers off food, maybe. He might have. Looking at Jesus, yeah. Pulled down to 27. Makes sense. You don't need that many more villagers. And uh, yeah, he's got a nice trade network. China. Wow, China's trade is money, dude. He's getting money. Look at that. Two, 200 plus a route. I think the Ottoman trade is still better simply because they move 40% faster, even at 127. But yeah, that's a really, really good trade for China. And they're pretty well defended too. China's like building walls and layers and making sure nobody's going to be getting into their uh, sweet, sweet empire. So... Good stuff there. Wall's being blasted down a little bit as they're pulling back. And is he going to be pulling villagers? No, we don't see villager pulls yet. So no one wants to take the risk at this moment. Eventually what happens is the iron bladder happens where somebody gets tired, wants to go to sleep. So they just like try and build a wonder and see if they can win. I think that could happen. Hey, Cole, get some rest. Thank you for joining. Hmm. The video will be here for you tomorrow. Don't you worry, my friend. So the English still pushing, or the French still pushing from the north. Um, still cast lead units. Definitely got to upgrade those guys. Why was the Razor Guard sleeping? Because he was bored? Oh, uh, that's pretty good. I like that Hammond. You got to come up with more Warhammer puns. Always a fun time. French are trying to trade, but the traders are going to just get mowed down by the Chinese. So they get thrown to the wolves, and the French army is going to be pulling back. Naniori also could go under. Um, Naniori does have... Oh, the Guild Hall has been collected. Okay, wow. Let's see here. So Nani Yori sitting on 11,000 stone, but no gold basically. So yeah, gonna probably just entrench here, I would imagine. As the Chinese player moves to the north, we do see the hand cannoneers. Huge damage, huge, huge damage. Gonna be thumping through a lot of this army. Arbalists are no joke though. They do have really good melee armor, and of course can set up their pavises to get the ranged armor and become basically tanks. So pretty good for these like sustained trades like this. And the fight continues, and it looks like the French will be able to just barely win this one against the hand cannoneer legion. Depends on how hard China wants to commit to the fight here. That is going to be the big thing. Finally arrived in time for live. Yes, this is live. This is the grand finals. Ottoman army moving north? I'm really surprised that the Ottomans aren't trying to kill Ezra. Ezra has been tormenting the Ottomans the entire game. You know, backstabbing them and going after him. Maybe the Ottomans going to go try and get their landmarks back. He rebuilt his walls in the bottom trying to keep Ezra trapped. Despite all his rage, like the rat in the cage in the bottom. We'll see. And look at this. It's actually being mined through a little bit. Yeah, Blue is like making his way through here, but it looks like there's going to be cannon placements. Maybe expecting a mine through. It's, uh, it's, it's an obvious vulnerability, so he made sure that that was going to be secure. I think uh, I think Wonder on the bottom would be a win. I honestly think Ezra would win it. I do. Especially if the other armies are out of position and or fighting each other and they can't rally super quickly. Yeah, Sleeping Dragon's army, he returns. No, he's in a different spot now. So he, he had enough APM to move his army somewhere else. Wouldn't it be hilarious if he just went in and started just raiding the Chinese base? Just like all out of character, he just rolls up with like 100 French knights. <laughs> I have to pretend I'm working, but see you later. Take care, man. Ottomans are hanging in there. Qu clearly Quill is a very good player. I don't know about his 1v1, but I would say based on what I've seen, he's definitely like probably like Conqueror level. High Diamond or, you know, somewhere in Conqueror. Yeah, very, very strong play. Nani Yori heading down with the uh, Elite Archers who have been fully upgraded. So now they're going to be able to hang a little bit better. Trying to push the Chinese out and secure some trade. But uh, good luck with that. That's going to be a very tall order. You've got a lot of units queued up, man. Got more keeps coming. There's going to be just a calm, and then there's going to be a bunch of wonders. But here we see the monastery getting taken down. The Ottomans, if they can get these relics, man, they will be just full chub. Oh, and he builds a couple of mosques here as well. Oh, my God. Oh, the Ottomans are going to get these relics. We do see some attackers coming over from somewhere. No, we don't. Great bombards are thumping here. Did I see a wonder being constructed there, or am I crazy? I don't think we saw the wonder being constructed, right? So let's go to the wonder tracker. Oh wait, Jesus went wonder! Where's his wonder? The dreaded Jesus wonder, where is it? Holy shit, it's over here! Jesus with the wonder! Wow, that's risky! So all those relics are gonna go to the Ottomans, who are gonna be super stoked on that. And now they're rebuilding the Istanbul Imperial Palace. And uh, just gonna grab all these relics. And wow, the Chinese wonder. I think China was just like iron bladdered. That's a hard spot to defend, man. And look at this, Dandy Dragon's already up in a shit. 
Yeah, Dun Dandy Dragon's had enough. There's probably going to be some counter wonders now. Is China going to be able to hold this? Oh, they have hand cannoneers. Dandy Dragon, he didn't have walls here. He didn't have walls ready for the for the Dandy Dragon. Dandy Dragon probably has a fat bank too. Oh, not much gold, honestly. Dandy Dragon does not have much gold. He probably has it at the Guild Hall. He's probably doing something there. So now the armies are going to be moving up. You see Dandy Dragon's forces clashing with the Chinese army. It's a lot of knights. Looks like they're going to be riding into the base to do a little bit of raiding. The Ottomans just happily taking advantage of the chaos to resecure all these relics. And they got tithe barns. They've got to be feeling really, really good. Like the Ottomans are back in this game 100%. Dandy Dragon doing a little bit of raiding. So apparently he does have more than 5 APM. So he's able to move into the back of the base. As we see the Red Army coming over as well. So this is going to be Ezra's forces. Him and Blue working in tandem with one another. And uh, I don't think China's going to be able to hold this. It does not look that entrenched. It looks very vulnerable as a matter of fact. Chinese army trying to chase down the French who are uh, going landmark hunting now. If, if he can survive this, if somehow if somehow Jesus can survive this fight and fend off Ezra as well as the attack from Danny Dragon, he might have a chance of winning. Although he is being attacked by an English army with trebuchets here. This is going to be a super tough call. He's at, yeah, 12 minutes and a half. Like, it's going to be really, really tough. Yeah, Ottomans are going to get jacked. They could even do a wonder in their corner, corner if they wanted to as well. It doesn't look like he's super entrenched, though. Ottoman's probably just going to play mostly domination style. Just, you know, trying to take their opponents out with brute force here. And, you know, falling back to the, the keep and trying to defend, like, at this point is tough. Dandy Dragon's Knight's doing a ton of work. And is he replenishing Knight's? Um, he's got Rams coming across. He also has some AFK Manganels who are just kind of sitting here, not doing anything. And, uh, yeah, dude, it's going to be so hard. The Ottomans, if you're the Ottomans, you probably just don't help at all. Danny Dragon over and over. <laughs> yeah, he's the dragon. He's the slumbering dragon. Will China be able to salvage his backfield? It looks like they're still sending some units down there, some spearmen and some uh, palace guard. But dealing with Ezra's army here is definitely the priority. It's very close to the wonder. So a couple of knights get right on top of the artillery court. Ezra going to be setting up a keep. He doesn't have supply lines, though. So as Ezra's army does uh, get beaten down here, it's going to uh, be harder to get a new army here. Jesus has a beautiful bank of food and gold. He, he's going to be able to produce units pretty consistently here. Although he is being pushed off most of the map. So China's kind of sacrificing most of its uh, real estate on the map to uh, get the good times going. We got the Enclave of the Emperor. More cannon towers being set up. That'll prevent, you know, basic attacks here. Ezra's army is our pushback. So will Ezra be able to muster another force here? If China wins on this wonder, that would be so incredibly impressive. That would be so impressive. And we see, we saw earlier, Jesus is a really good player. He went fisticuffs with Don Artie and had a lot of success. Obviously, Don's a very strong player, so that was very, very impressive indeed. And Danny Dragon, though, putting a lot of pressure on him, man. Hammond, roses are red, violets are blue, wool a love. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I really appreciate the donation, Hammond. As always, brother. As always. Enclave of the Emperor is here. More towers coming up. China just helms deeping now. Um, as far as the timer, is it sub 10 minutes? No, it's 11 minutes, man. Time passes really, really slow when that wonder is there, man. It's really, really slow. Mass pressure from Dandy Dragon, just getting his elite horsemen and torching the Chinese base. China is probably going to fall back already and set up infrastructure by its wonder. That is not an easy hold. And on the top, we got horsemen looking for a way in. That, that landmark, you could legit just bring Trebs here and nail this thing. And there's probably not much you're going to be able to do. So the French army's on its way over. I bet you we see a counter wonder. As soon as this goes south, I, I feel as if Ezra's just going to slam a wonder down. Although it looks like he's still coming up here. Does he have villagers? Yeah. Yeah, 73 villagers. Prophetic, man. I'm telling you. It's coming. That wonder is going to be getting down there. And uh, as soon as this goes south, and that will probably be enough. I don't see the them doing quick enough work to get there. And China is going to be just, you know, absolutely steamrolled here, I think. So the horsemen are there. He's got to keep getting set up here. It looks like China going to be going up to the north side. setting up a gatehouse so they can sally out troops to try and fight. French have a good army here. A lot of archers, a lot of men at arms. Not a good army, but enough to fight back. That is a hell of a lot of nest of bees, though, man. But Ezra is back with a vengeance. He's got a lot of horsemen. And if these gates go down, the horsemen able to jump on top of the enclave of the emperor, that's going to be really rough. So he will get karate chopped pretty hard. Jesus holding on. He does dive out here and counters the French army. And some of the cannon towers are picking off some of the, the scouting horsemen here. But yeah, his base is getting absolutely lit up here. Um, as far as landmarks go, does he have any landmarks hidden up here? Uh, China might just get landmark sniped, guys. Yeah, we got a Barbican, Town Center, Imperial Academy, all of which are pretty vulnerable. China's still mustering a good defense in the base. Hand Cannoneers, Palace Guard on their way out, and uh, 
Yeah, they're, they're trying to grind. They're definitely trying their best. More Palace Guard coming in. Ezra's secondary wave is pushed back. The Ottomans are now here, though. And they have their Grand Bombards. They have their Grand Bombards. They are ready to go. So one, two, and three. This guy's going to be able to turn and shoot. Up on the top side, we do see the Counterweight Trebuchet shooting across. And China is definitely dead. There's no way. Too many angry players. And we're in the Grand Finals now. People... When you get to the higher level games, they react very quickly to wonders. It's, it's not like something where you see a really relaxed, lazy defense. It's more of a sweaty, you know, ferocious attack like we're seeing right now. So Dandy Dragon, the dreaded French Netflix and chill enjoyer. He uh, probably he doesn't have enough for the wonder. Let's go ahead and check here. See, he does. He can certainly slap one down. I mean, maybe Dandy Dragon's going to do a wonder. He doesn't really seem to have a dedicated spot for it, though. Like where he would go. I guess you could like delete some houses and buildings back here, maybe. Dandy Dragon is lumberjacking through, though. He's approaching the backside of the base. Jesus losing landmarks left and right. Dandy Dragon going for the landmark snipe. We do have a lot of landmarks with China, so that gives him a little bit of time to work with. But up here, we do see a very desperate hold from China. Um, battling French army. Also to the east, we do see the Ottoman Empire. And looking at the Wonder Tracker, right eight minutes left. So eight minutes is going to be super, super tough to hold. Super tough. Impossible, I think. Unless the play other players blunder really hard. You get ramps coming up, more horsemen. The ram signs here will open the floodgates. Once you ram down the stone gatehouse, you can probably get 75 horsemen just rushing that thing and really dragging it down. Uh, Danny Dragon, in the middle, in the meantime, is just uh, taking down all these houses here. So yeah, just torching down whatever infrastructure you can. And uh, the battle for the old world does rage on. But yes, I don't think China's going to make it. Jesus, you know, might have been getting late from. You never know. It's the nature of these FFA tournaments. That is a thick, thick Ottoman army. Oh my god. And as soon as this happens... You're going to see the villagers probably for Ezra get pulled and build the wonder. That would be the smart play, I think. Because then everybody's armies are over here out of position and you just have like a fat wonder and you're just laughing and uh, yeah, life's good. Life is good. More attacks coming in. Danny Yori contributing to the cause here. Perpetually putting pressure on. Ezra from the south. Going to be Ramstein in the gatehouse. Chinese have a light army trying to defend. A couple defenders, but probably going to be overwhelmed even by these crappy units, I would imagine. Rams from the south. Easily going to knock down that gatehouse. Gatehouse is... Uh, yeah, looks like it's uh, it's unlocked. Yeah, so it, it, you got to build them in the right direction. It's a mistake I always make. Enemies just run into my base, and it's a good time for all. Danny Dragon role playing Mongols, kinda, kind of a little bit. Yeah, torching down buildings, but there's not too many landmarks left. I think he's got this and this. No, that's that's just a regular TC. Uh, China have a landmark here. They do have the Spirit Way hidden on the bottom. Okay, so I don't know if they're aware of the Spirit Way. This is a really valiant hold by Jesus, but I think his his time has come to an end. It seems most of his army, he sacrificed it to fight off the Ottomans. And it looks like he did kill the Ottoman bombards. But now there's going to be a whole other wave of attacks coming in. As he gets all of his horsemen, moves down there, and he gets landmark sniped. So it looks like, yep, his last landmark got popped. And that is the end of China. Dark Hunter Ezra with the wonder. We knew it was coming. That is an unholy position. Unholy. Well played, Jesus. Well played. It was fun watching you, my friend. You played like an absolute chat. This is Jesus. I got to go to bed. Oh, I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you got to hit the hay. Hey, you played well. You totally could have won this game if you didn't have to build that early wonder and go to bed. So well played to you, brother. You're a champ as always. Now, the battle continues. Ezra sitting here. Ezra trying to get me that sweet dinner I've been waiting for. Um, constructing. It's finished. And the wonder tracker should be live in a second. And it is. So yeah, now Danny Dragon most likely going to try and Lumberjack through. That would be the best bet, I'd say. That's the like, quickest route to this thing, is Lumberjacking. Dude, he's really close. Like, Danny Dragon could actually move up here and just do this. And now we see Red's army starting to immediately turn on their former allies. That's my favorite part about this. It's like, you know, you'll have alliances, and then like two seconds later, it's just like it's backstabbing and treachery and uh, hatred and, uh, you know, all that sort of great stuff. Yeah, the Ottomans are probably going to attack from the north, so they're gathering an army here. And clearly, all these players react well. They could still get this. They have time. They have plenty of time. Nani Yori probably going to have trouble helping, um, especially with some of the obstruction here. Looks like some of these walls were deleted to allow Nani Yori to come through. So now they're going to be going after Ezra here. And is Danny Dragon going to go for this choke point? Yeah. Looks like more villagers are being pulled to try and lumberjack through. He's just doing a straight up normal lumberjacking though. 100%. Panic check. I believe in you, Quill. Stop the tyrant in the corner. We will see. Quill has played like an absolute monster this game. On the brink of death several occasions but just scrapping back and becoming a power over and over again. This has been a great, great tournament we've had today. So thank you all for joining. It's been a really fun one hanging out with all you guys. 
A lot of villagers down here for Ezra, setting up their stone walls. And uh, I don't know if Dandy Dragon is intentionally, like, if he, or if he's just mining this. Let me see what his, oh, he's got 57 on wood. It's got to be intentional, right? Ezra is still raiding. He's actually attacking here. He's uh, attacking Dandy Dragon's base. Dandy Dragon was once a mighty uh, French lord with many, many cavalry, but right now we're not seeing too much from him. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. The dreaded Dandy Dragon with 10 counterweight trebuchets. And they, he knows exactly what's going on. He is going to be lumberjacking through this and doing work. Oh, those cannon towers are just popping villagers. He better pull them back until he gets his trebuchets there. In the meantime, the Ottomans gathering a Doom Legion on the north. Um, doesn't seem to have too much artillery, though. A lot of trade for the Autos. Autos are going to probably have to delete units to get a bigger army here. Looks like Ezra is still attacking a little bit here. Danny Dragon doesn't really care about that. It looks like he's more focused on this engagement. As we see the trebuchets moving down, and yeah, just going for this position is going to be the way. Cannon Towers are nailing these villagers. Oh, God, they're going down in droves. Only got 62 vills right now. He's got to be more careful with that. So, oh, wow, look at this. He's got spring alts on the high ground. Holy shit, look at that. Can they even reach? I don't know if they can. Ezra really planning ahead here. Looks like he's got his trebuchet of his own up here as well. Ottomans are coming. They got the great bombards. They're going to be nuking down these walls. And yeah, Ezra's base is going to be compromised very quickly. Like the front here is probably going to fall to the Ottomans. It depends on how well Danny Dragon, Danny Dragon does here. Looks like uh, we do have Nanny Yori helping out. Nanny Yori trying to clear out whatever they can. Up on the top side, Nanny Yori, if this, yeah. See, if this fails, then Nanny Yori's going to go for a wonder. And maybe Nanny would be able to pull the W. <sighs> Ezra, uh, he, not Ezra, but Danny Dragon needs to be more careful with these vills. He's losing so many. He's going to rapidly discover it once his eco is down to, you know, 10. But these villagers are just getting annihilated. And he needs them to clear these last couple trees here. So he pulls back. He's waiting. The trebuchet should 100% move in. Look at this, as they're parking these uh, these springs here. Probably deleting these markets so you can squeeze by the edge of the map. I don't think the spring alts would be able to reach you. So you delete these, you squeeze by, and the Ottoman siege has begun. So the Ottomans are in the base. The great bombards are coming. And if you're the Ottomans here, you start killing the base. You have time to work with. You don't want to dive yet. Um, you just start killing infrastructure and keeps to make it so Ezra can't reproduce his armies. That's uh, that's a really, really big variable for sure. So. Yep, took down a lot of the stuff up in the high ground, a couple of the towers, but there's four spring alts sitting here on the edge. This is the way you go, though. If you're a dandy dragon, you don't mess with anything else. That's that's 100% the way that you want to party. So. Nanny Yori streaming down men at arms from the top side. We're going to be attacking Ezra from the central, uh, central point here. Can move up over the hills and move in this way and attack the base here. In the meantime, we see the war machine moving as the Great Bombard cannons are thumping through, starting to take down some of the towers. And the Ottomans are just going to probably have a steady stream of units. I'm um, looking at the bank, though, for Quill. 133 on Eco. A little bit too much. Probably going to have to cut Eco down because that's, like, lose some of the wood. The armies are going to be too small. You need, like, a big, thick army to push through this. But, yeah, Ezra's all in. He, I'm pretty sure he deleted all his bills to go 200-200. Um, no, he didn't, actually. He's at 120, which is a very respectable military. But Nanny Yori, in the meantime... He's doing it. And the trebuchets still blasting up, trading with the enemy artillery up on the high ground. Danny Dragon needs to really push the envelope here. Like, really, really push the envelope. Because this is going to take some time to get through, but this is so, like, light defense here. Yeah, you could treb through all this in, like, a minute if um, if you do it correctly. Ezra running with his villagers. Interesting. wonder where he's going to go with those. Uh, obviously, they could be used to repair the wonder, but they're, they have other things to do, other things on their mind. And the Ottomans are getting in there, guys. Yeah, they're getting in there pretty hard. We see a lot of damage going down. Ezra, his standing military has got to be kind of small. Yeah, he does have his knights here that are going to continue fighting. Is he trying to decap a sacred site? Oh, wait a second. Is there a sacred threat? So there, is there, where is he going with these villagers? No, because Ezra has the other sacred site. So Ezra's going to the top with all these villagers? Is, what, is he, what is his game plan? He's like heading up here. Maybe he's going to go try and get some wood there or something. Oh, Ezra doesn't have any wood, guys. He can only really make knights. He can't make too much artillery. So right now he's trying to snipe the Great Bombards. He does get one, but now the Janissaries are just going to absolutely destroy these cavalry. Uh, they will thump those guys down and should be able to mitigate that. Ezra might not be able to hold this. He might be dead. I really thought he would have a guaranteed victory here, but this is looking a little bit interesting. And then do we see Nanny Yori plop down a one draft for this? Nanny Yori sitting at 9,000, but not enough gold. Although his guild hall probably has gold in it. Let's see. Not much. Not much, guys. Yeah, so Nanny Yori doesn't have enough to plop down a wonder. So if Ezra can't hold this, it is going to be uh, it is going to be an annihilation battle. It's just going to be people fighting, basically. So Treb's in there, blasting away. 
And they're getting spring ults from the high ground. Look at that. Oh my god, that's so good. Look at the springs up there. They certainly have the high ground. That is so troll. So the, the Treb's trying to fight back here a little bit. He's going to see the tree line and realize that he probably should have kept those villagers. These Trebs need to be hugging the wall. If they hug the wall here, there's no chance of, uh, of that being an issue. So he's got the villagers trying to chop down the trees from the distance. Oh, that's so haggard. Oh my god. So how are the Ottomans doing? Making good progress. Uh, we still have adequate entrenchments. Ezra does have a lot of cavalry. So maybe he's going to be able to slam jam space jam over there. Blue is moving in. He's doing, he's attacking from his angle, which is good. Wow, the springs can reach that far? They can reach the edge of the map? That's brutal! Oh my god, I did not expect that. So we can't quite in, get in there, man. Horsemen just can't do anything. The villagers are lumberjacking through. You can see they're making a little bit of progress, but if only they went there. This trebuchet is here, and the high ground spring alts from Ezra are just so strong. Yeah, it looks like he found a wood node, so he took all his villagers and uh, was able to get some good wood. That's what she said. So he's going strong. Now back here, elite royal knights valiantly defending in the base. The Ottomans, though, making progress. A lot of Ezra's base has been flattened. Looking at the wonder tracker, we're sitting at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. But man, oh man. Yeah, the spring alts are making a huge difference up on the high ground, guys. Huge difference. And he sees it. Dandy Dragon can taste how close he is. He can taste it. The long distance villager mining is so haggard. But I mean, they are making progress. So he's basically sacrificing horsemen to allow the villagers to uh, lumberjack through here. So yeah, maybe Dandy Dragon needs to pull more. We'll have to see. So big bombards on their way down. We see the great bombardos continuing to cleave through Dark Hunter Ezra's base. Hey, King Adizal, how you been, man? Haven't seen you in a while. How's it going in this one? Oh, tons of crazy plays. You, I highly recommend watching this back. All the games have been really good. And down on the south side, we do see the bombard cannons uh, doing some work as the villagers desperately try and lumberjack through. And Ezra's towers, though, packing a serious punch. We got 12 more villagers, more trebuchets coming out. Ezra's spring alts just sitting on the edge of the mountain pass and popping things as they ride by. And nobody's found Ezra's wood villagers. See, the fact that Ezra got his wood back online is really not good uh, for everyone else, because that means he's able to start making horsemen again. Yeah, and also siege equipment. Great Bombard's being swarmed by the French Knights, but the Janissaries continue trading very well into this cab-based army. And honestly, this is not super hard defended here. Like, this is just like one... Well, how do you even get to this mountain? Is this an impassable terrain? So you've got to go all the way past the Red Palace here? Oh, shit. I thought he could just go right here. But no, you have to go to the Chad Palace, which is going to be a machine gun if you're not careful. Look at that. Oh, the Chad Palace immediately kills a Great Bombard. But they should be able to outrange it and kill it. Yeah, they, they should be able to here. Looks like the Spring Alds might need to pull back to deal with the Great Bombard cannons. Man, this is such a precarious defense. Looking at Dandy Dragon. You can see his resources. He does have enough for a wonder. And the Red Palace is doing great. It's killing a lot of the Great Bombards, but it does end up going down here, guys. And Dark Hunter Ezra really, really on the back foot here. Really, really on the back foot. But if he can somehow snipe these Great Bombards and focus his efforts on the other side with the Spring Alds and defending here, he might have a chance. This is a really, really tight game. So French coming in here, getting a nice flank. We do see Mended Arms. Mended Arms will be much better against the Janissaries. So that, I think, was a nice tech switch. Uh, it does not look like they have elite army tactics, so they're not going to be super jacked Mended Arms, but even so, maybe they do, I think. It's, it's, I can't quite remember the HP. I think they have just over 200 if they have army tactics. But Yeah, guys, he snipes the Bombards, which is huge. The Ottomans don't really have a ton of siege equipment. If he could get villagers to repair the Red Palace too, that'd be strong as hell. But I don't think... He sent all his villagers to get wood. So I don't think he has any extra villagers laying around. Now, going for the last of the Bombard Cannons, the pathing on this is tough. It's absolutely tough. Adjazal, you've been watching all the replays. I'm glad to hear it, man. It's always a fun time. So Springhold's in position, Mangadel's at the ready, and Dandy Dragon has been forced back once again by the high ground Springhold's. Wow, who would have thought those springs on the high ground would really, really help? Now, Naniori's, Naniori's helping. If you guys have been wondering where Red's army has been, it's been fighting Naniori over here. Naniori's doing a great job helping. Yeah, trying, trying their best. Moving in. Now, looking at the timer, guys, we're sitting at 4 minutes and 25 seconds until I can potentially go get dinner, which would be cool. Granted, I wouldn't hate seeing the game continue because it's a very epic game, and I think it's quite a bit of fun. But Naniori set up supply lines and is getting troopers in there to help. Every little bit matters. Every little bit counts. As the Ottoman army is going to have to start going through, and is he repairing it? He is. We have only three villagers here. But God, man, this, this wonder is such an unholy position. It's such an unholy position. Ezra gets this because Dandy doesn't want to spend his resources? I think so! Dandy, I think, is just being stingy and trying to hold enough. No, Dandy is spending the resources now. 
So we see the Mangonels getting some good damage, but now the path is clear. And it looks like there's going to be a town center getting set up back here. There really is no more defense. Like, this is it. This is Ezra's last line here. We see attackers coming in from this direction. But the problem is only one attacker can move through this weird choke. What Ezra should be doing is building like five layers of walls here. So delete this. Walls, 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 walls. You just imagine little John. You see like walls, walls, walls. <laughs> Basically, he's got a lot of cannon towers though. And it looks like he does hold. And the Red Palace is not repaired. As the attacks continue to pour in from the north. Three minutes and 15 seconds. Dandy Dragon is moving into grooving. Very close to getting in there, but... Yeah, it's, I don't know, man. Those high ground springalds have just been so MLG. So MLG. Hey, Kyler. Getting up and finding turns still up all day, man. Well, for me, it's not that late. It's only 9.30, so. It's not too bad at all, ladies and gentlemen. Not too bad. Great Bombard Cannons spinning to win, having a good old jolly time. And down here, we do see the Elite Horsemen getting popped in the face as the Trebuchets are trying to snipe the springalds on the high ground. I think they're attack grounding. Oh, one of the spring goals goes down. I don't think there's going to be enough time, though, guys. Two minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, man, it's going to be tight. These, like, entrenched cannon towers are doing everything. They're doing everything. So the landmark snipe is not possible because the guild, guild hall is going to be the last landmark. So they would have to get all the way past the main defenses. The Ottomans are coming back with a second wave. They have their great bombard cannons, but that guild, guild hall in the back is super clutch. Sorry, guys, I have the dreaded hiccups. I'm trying my best to... Have, to, to fight them off, but they have come. Villagers lumberjacking through. Oh, they're getting so close. The villagers are really closing the distance. He's sending up his cavalry as his hero villager lumberjacks her way through. Oh my god. Dandy is getting kind of close, but that's a lot of towers. And the trebuchets, I think, got sniped again. I think, oh my god, they did. The trebs got sniped. There's no way. That's probably GG. Ottomans are close, but it looks like Ezra is going to be able to hold. This is such a filthy corner position. This is just pure filth. I love it. Bombards are knocking down the gatehouse, but I don't think they can get through there. Apparently, in the Middle Ages or, you know, early the early days, they didn't, medieval times, they didn't know how to climb rock faces. Couldn't make a ladder. So, yeah, the Bombards can't get there. And it looks like there's going to be more walls. This is the correct play. This is the correct play for sure. You build these walls here. And it's just going to take like extra 15, 20, 30 seconds to get through each layer of those, right? Looks like Nani Yori is pulling villagers with torches. Just pure desperation right now. As the Ottomans going to be moving in. we got one minute and five seconds here. And the horsemen, at this point, I think you just pull the horsemen over here to help. I don't know. Dandy Dragon just perpetually getting taken out by these uh, these hill springalds is so... <laughs> I did not think they'd be able to reach the edge of the map, guys. That's so gross. Great Bombard's moving in, but that's going to be GG. There's no way. He's got 45 seconds left. The Red Palace is down once again. So down it goes. And yeah, if there was another two minutes, I think the attackers would be able to get it. But this this is the way. Like, desperation plays like this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Great Bombard's on the high ground. If they snipe the guild hall, it's over too. Oh, he doesn't know about it, though. He doesn't know it's there. Guys, these things could have moved up to the high ground and killed the guild hall, and that would have ended the game. Quill would have killed him. 20 seconds left. He's going. It's not going to be enough time. He would rip maybe one shot. But he's moving up the hill. Cannon towers are also able to clean him up. Yeah, in reality, all you need to do is get artillery up in this position here. Oh, my God. And look at this. He's Oh, this is so haggard. Oh, the suffering. GG. Dark Hunter Ezra with the steel chair, the solid defense, with the dirty wonder position in the corner. Classic, classic stuff. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed this, I would really appreciate you dropping a like on the stream. It helps get more people into the old age of empires. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for today. Congratulations to Dark Hunter Ezra. Some very, very scrappy games from him today. He was on the brink of losing his first game, but came back and won. Great stuff on both sides. So for now, that will be all. Congratulations to Ezra. I'll be back streaming tomorrow. I don't know what. Maybe a company of hero stream or something. Maybe quite a bit of fun. But... That is it. Take care of yourselves. Congrats to all these players. They all put up a great fight. Thank you guys for your donations tonight. It really means a lot. It means the world. And uh, we'll see you guys on the other side, all right? Take care of yourselves. Congrats once more to Ezra. I'm going to go feast with my smoking hot wife. Take care.